Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. But this. Ah! Dios mío de mi vida! I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before. Red Bull gives you wings. Done. Done. There we go. Break. Break. <laughs> Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one. Let's go. Come on. Oh.
call the game. I'm gonna show you screenshots from broadcast. I need to know the event, the year it was played in, the teams and the player names. Player names, like 10 player names? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, I can know, I can know that for sure. <laughs> and then if you don't know, I can show you more pictures and sometimes the pictures say... Okay, okay. Uh, okay show nice. more. First one. MF Sport. Um, okay, first game, I have no idea. But this has to be like LEC Finals. I mean, it's weird because it's MF Support. But I know, I, I, I know someone played MF Support, but I don't know like when, where, who. I don't know anything. And it's Worlds. The year could be 2015. I think 2016. For sure one of the teams is SKT. The other one... Okay, it's T1 against, I don't know, EDG. Samsung. Is Genji or? It's like a tiger team or something like this. Mm -hmm. The cool tigers. Lux Tigers mm -hmm. against SKT. T1 is Wolf, Peng, Faker. And jungle was two jungle. Pengi and Blank. Mm. Is Khan the top laner? Marin. Puni. Aiko. Ah. Duke. Oh yeah, Duke, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Duke was teleporting here. Oh my God. Yeah, it's the, it's the arrow. Look at the arrow. This, like... Bro, if I miss this, I'm gonna get flamed for my entire life. I'm trying to, to at least name the misfortune. A gorilla? But I'm between, like, two AD carries. It's it's ruler? No. Like, there, there's something on my tongue. Like, people used to always... Was it, like, something with P, I think? A gorilla and... It's deft. Oh, prey? It's Smep, Pinut, Kurel, Prey, Gorilla. Smep, oh my god. I love Smep. I can't believe I forgot him. And welcome to the LEC live from Berlin, Germany. Embrace yourself for a banger day as we have the French and Spanish showdown in our match of the week between KC and MDK. And at the end of the day, El Clasico between Fnatic and G2. And they will face up against each other. I am Laure and I will be joined by Aragon and Broxa for the day as we see BDS celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Of course, they came in ready off the rift. I hope they come ready on the rift. How are you doing, guys? Hopefully they're going to be as clean on the Rift as they are doing these intros. Yeah, so yeah, and no, no St. Patrick's vibes on the Rift uh, today. That's not what we want. How are you doing, Aragon? I'm doing really well. Yeah? And after yesterday's games, casting yesterday's games, I hope we're in, some ba in for some bangers again as well. Bangers is what we're here for, I feel. Yeah. Uh, hopefully teams get stronger here in the LEC as we're halfway through the splits already, almost. Let's take a look at the schedule we have. As we said, banger day to wrap up the day and also MTK versus K Corp as our match of the week. Any specific match that you have your eyes on? I mean, it, it's hard not to look at the, the third and the fifth, yeah. but it, outside of that, I have to say I always love looking at Vitality's games. I feel like you never know really what you're going to get. There's always some kind of crazy shenanigans going on, so that one. I, I think they don't know what they're going to get yeah. as well, usually. That's the, that's the gist of it. I don't think we know what we can expect from MDK versus K Corp as well, Roxa. Well, I think it's crazy we live in a world where that is Smash of the Week and I know. the season finale, like what a timeline, but... I also think that goes to show how much hype there is around these two teams, yeah. obviously with Ipa and Kamiso behind them. And honestly, they haven't looked particularly impressive so far, the split. No. But at the same time, they've had some moments of, of brilliance. And I think, you know, there's a good chance it's going to be a fantastic game. We want more moments from these two teams. We saw some from KC yesterday, actually bringing some new picks onto the Rift Aragon. We saw Kabosha bringing back Urgot. Yeah. It has been ages. 2021 was the last time it was played in the LEC. What did we think of this pick? Yeah, 2021 and a long time ago. And yeah. this pick, it means a lot to me because <laughs> this was actually the first champion that I played in a professional setting. 
I played against XL Academy back in 2019 and I locked in Ergo and it was a different kind of Ergo, but I'm really passionate about this. So I actually wanted to talk about why Cabochard picked it here, All right. as well as generally why it actually is possible to be picked, especially in this kind of meta. So here, what you could see is a, it was locked in B4 and what Ergo saw, what Cabochard saw rather, before blinding it was Nautilus, Viego and Ari. Now these are champions that like to go into Ergo. What you need to know is that Ergo, in terms of the archetype of champion, is a lot like an AD Gwen. She want, he wants champions to come into him. Um, so with these champions, what he can do as well is buffer the CC of them, whether it's the charm, the hook, or the Viego W, and that way he's incredibly unkillable. Now there are caveats to this, right? Uh -huh. It is not a good blind in general, and this is why you don't see it. So. The problem is he struggles against Senna, right? He could see that Senna was locked in and Senna typically outranges him quite hard. It also has a bunch of move speed to kite the Urgot and that is really problematic to deal with. Um, outside of that as well is the R5. I mean, that's the really big factor. You have so many potential counter picks. The biggest one is Olaf, which maybe Casey had some great scouting, you know, knowing that Finn didn't really play it. Um, another one is Poppy, but yeah, there's a plethora of picks that are really good into Urgot, generally outranges really great as well. So what I hear is that there's potential within the champion, but it needs to be really situational. Did it pay off? Yeah, here, I'd say Casey? it did pay off, but it was hard to gauge. Okay. Because whilst they did lose, there were moments of brilliance, especially in a flank uh, down bot side, I believe, with teleport and fights in the river. In this in this clip here, you can see where they just managed to one shot. You can see the amount of damage that Ur can pump through. But the problem was he got put so far behind out, um, because of m macro from KC, where mm -hmm. he was getting dived over and over again. And to see this E flash, it looks incredibly broken, right? You get an initial pick, it turns into an AoE fear, and you can win entire fights off of that. In this kind of reset meta, it can be incredibly powerful. What do you think it went wrong, though? Uh, because, I mean, Casey ended up losing yeah. anyway, but was it Urgot's fault? Uh, was the champion not impactful enough? How do you rate this impact? I wouldn't say it was necessarily purely Urgot's fault, okay. especially since, you know, the whole map was kind of struggling. You had plays down bot side focusing and they just really struggled to dive Zoellis whilst Urgot kept getting cross mapped on and dove and I think at one point it was 0-2-0 in laning phase getting so far put behind so at, at, at that point it could be any champion um, mm -hmm. that struggles to look good in that situation. All right, let's say I'm main top lane, that's okay. a lie, people know this, but I want to play Urgot. Uh, what do I need to do to play Urgot? Right, let's so see. what you need to know is that Urgot is often a product of the stuff around them, the environment. So stuff like the runes, the items, if they're in a good state, he's in a good state. And the first thing that's very important is he has a lot of synergy with Fleet Footwork, okay? It, the obvious thing with Fleet Footwork is that it synergizes with him because it helps him secure his scaling. But something that people might not know is that Fleet Footwork works a lot like Static Shiv in that auto attacks charge Fleet Footwork. Mm -hmm. And Urgot has this really niche interaction with Fleet Footwork where the minigun actually charges the Fleet Footwork. So it charges really quickly, which means if you do something like walk on over to Gromp, you can uh, get multiple Fleet Footwork procs, continuously procking it with the minigun and heal up 300 to 400 with a cull if you have one um, extremely quickly and it can act as like your very own Pokemon Center if you just run on down there. In what kind of situations do you think we could see Urgot? Do you think we can see it in the LEC again? Uh, or is yeah. it like, uh, for me, it looks so much like a niche pick that some players are going to pull. Yeah, definitely as a counter pick, yeah. um, especially in potential games where you can play side lane um, because there are situations where you can just sit side lane, you can abuse items like Hole Breaker, which is incredibly good in the meta right now. You have um, this really interesting tech where you can let the minigun run four times and auto on the fifth to get the full Hole Breaker proc because mm -hmm. um, it does get mitigated unless you cancel it. So that, it's a really interesting champion for sure. So we might see it again, maybe not in the right situation as we saw yeah. here with Kabushak. And we know that we both love the champion. He's yeah. been playing it on stream. So I found this clip, right? And this is exactly what I was talking about. What you do is you let the minigun run for four autos, cancel it and auto regularly for the fifth because the minigun typically reduces on hit damage because hole breakers is a on fifth hit on hit effect and that way you don't actually mitigate it and you stack it up really quick so he's a real big abuser of this item so what i hear is that kebosha was onto something maybe not for this draft and yes. we might see ergots maybe later today we'll see about this but we're officially halfway through the regular season we have four teams tied for last for now i want to see hope i want to hear hope Roxa. um which of this team as a first glance, do you see maybe making its way to the top? Who showed the most potential? And then we're going to dive into some specific players. I think it's it's hard to, to pinpoint right. like the exact positives of each team. I think a lot of them just mostly need to, to take a look at 
how they're playing the game, restructure and find their identity. But with that being said, I think all of them have key players that could make a difference. Like uh -huh. if we start with Rogue, for example, yeah. Larsen in the past has been a really strong player of them. He's been really consistent, especially in lane. The mid lane playstyle, however, has changed a bit over the years. And especially now we're seeing a lot of roaming and playmakers. That's something he did well yesterday on the Ari. And if he can continue that kind of play and that kind of form, he could change Rogue's entire uh, spring split for them. So that's for Rogue, who in MDK would be the light of hope. I think it say? has to be Alvaro, yeah? doesn't it? I mean, all of winter, he was a lot of people's all pro support and who a lot of people thought was the best one in the league. I think he's been so consistently good, playing with Elioia, linking up, finding plays, finding picks all across the map. And yesterday, he found some insane engages on that row. Mm -hmm. Maybe more method on the side of MDK and going back to going back to the basics, going back to what made them good in winter. What was it, Roxa? Well, I think the synergy between Alioya and Alvaro was pretty on point back then. I also think Alvaro was good at finding openings, but also some of the things that we, we don't talk about so much, like the map control, how he sets up vision, how he sets up the way they want to play objectives. And one mistake that they made in a few of their games is that they would be in a situation to take control, but like we see here, they just instantly force a fight mm -hmm. instead of trying to push out the side lanes, then set up vision around Baron, then rotate to mid, uh, to make the play, they just skip steps really and just immediately go for kills. And I think if they go back to just setting up the control, letting Alvaro do his thing as a support, they will immediately look like a much better team in the middle late game. And they had an amazing approach uh, in, in winter. I, I wish they could continue on to this kind of success. Switching to KC, I have to talk about Bo. People have been sending me Bo for two years. Play around Bo when he was in Vitality. I know he did not find the success that he expected with them. Casey again. Fans are asking Casey to play around Bo. We demand to play around the carry. Is it going to be enough? Is it not done enough? How do you rate the impact that Bo could have with Casey? So I think Casey generally has two players that are, are really strong that could yeah. make a really big difference. One is upset, but he's an AD carry, so he doesn't have much agency over the game. But Bo, we've already been seeing him be on a complete rampage in the jungle, brute forcing plays, being decisive, being aggressive. More than anything for them, it comes down to finding the balance, finding a stop button and making sure that Bo, while getting a lot of kills, mm -hmm. stops dying so much in every game as well. Put on a leash on the jungler. Maybe don't put a leash so much on the last jungler we want to talk about here. Peach, sell me Peach. Why is he the light of hope for GX here? So he absolutely needs to perform. He's, right. I think he's been struggling a little bit, especially in some games last week where he was just getting picked off constantly. But in the winter, he was performing extremely well, especially with Jackies. They would draft these kind of prio lanes or set up lanes with Jackies, and then they would manage to find 2v2 kills. You could see them finding 2v2 kills onto G2, right? Yike and Caps. And I wish they would go back to this formula because right now it feels like what they're doing is they're playing entirely through bot lane. They've kind of changed everything up with uh, playing through Patrick and Ignar. And I think this worked out better for them. We have four teams that we talked about that need to wake up today, as we said, halfway through the season. Which team showed the most synergy, identity out of these four? We know what we want to see from them, but which one do you have the most hopes on? I think it's hard to say because right. I think for most of them, they're just kind of holding themselves back. They, they are often in winnable positions, but then they get over eager and too excited. Yeah. One team that I think has been very much on the same page has been KC, because while they've been dying a lot and making a lot of mistakes, at least when they go for fights, they're all in it together. Like, they're really decisive. And I think that's generally a positive, because as long as you're on the same page, you have a pretty, uh, you know, good, uh, ground mm -hmm. that you can you can work uh, work from. We'll see what they can showcase on match of the week later today, of course. But will Giant X be able to find success in playing through Jackie's speech and Jackie's? This is what we want to see here. And let's send it over to Ginny, who's backstage with the mid laner. Thank you so much, Lore. Welcome everyone to the interview pre ahead of the match. And we have Jackie's this time around from Giant X. Thank you for taking the time to join me for this one. Uh, let's start off with the performance so far in spring from the side of Giant X, from yourself individually as well. Looking at how has it been coming back after the break, getting into the server, and potentially not getting the results that you were looking for? Uh, I think, to say about my performance, I think I'm trying to be way more consistent. And actually, I think no matter the losses, I think I'm doing that from my, from my side at least. And uh, of course, the, the loss is that we are 1-3, I think, right now. It like sucks a bit, of course. But I also think we can bring it back because I think in the MDK game, at least we showed what we can actually do. 
And I think in the Fnatic game, if we don't mess up the mid game a bit, I, I think we could have taken that game as well. So I think today is an important game for us and I think we, we can win easily. Yeah, especially because it's going up against BDS, an important game for sure. But also when we're looking at BDS's performance over the last two weeks, it also hasn't quite been hitting the mark or the expectations that we're looking from them. So in terms of coming into that game, what is your approach up against BDS? Mm, I think BDS right now, I mean, yeah, they are a bit struggling, right, from winter for sure. And I think you can even see on their gameplay that they have a lot of issues. And we kind of spotted them, I think, so we're going to abuse it today, hopefully. Okay. Hopefully. hopefully. Is there any chance that we can see a bit more synergy coming out from you and Peach? Because that's what we've seen a lot during winter, and it was the pillar of the success when it came to getting some of those wins on the board. What's going on there? Is there trouble in paradise? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's trouble in paradise between us. It's uh... Oh, that's a that's kind of hard question, but I think we can bring it back easily. I think uh, if we get a good mid-jungle duo, we can play together and just win the game solo a bit. Or like duo, I guess. Yeah, duo, yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we will bring it back for sure. Yeah, okay, and anything you want to say to the fans watching this game coming up against BDS? Uh, yeah, just watch us stomp BDS, I guess. Uh, okay. I think it's going to be a stomp, hopefully. I respect it. Okay, let's see. Well, hopefully it is then for your case. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank I you appreciate well. it. And Casters, Jamal and Hysterics, back to you to break this one down. Optimism, optimism, optimism to run forward for Giant X here today. Going up against BDS as we welcome you to the second day of the second week. I am Asterix. I'm joined by Jamata. It is Jamsterix. It is his Mata, depending on what angle you want to go for there. It is a nice way, regardless, to open you up for what should be a good game. Because remember that, again, BDS haven't been as clinical as we saw, at least in winter, I would say, in comparison. For Giant X, big chance to play spoilers here as we open up your draft for you in 14-5. Yep, 14-5. But do you know what will remain the same, Jake? What, our matter? Smolder. Ah, right. <laughs> banned a lot on the time if you're on red. I think teams have finally just kind of come to the conclusion that it's not worth giving up. If you're I, I would hope so. I mean, uh, it, throughout the world, this pick has just been a pain to deal with. That late game insurance that hyperscales out of everyone's mind. So it is nice to see alongside that Ash that as a support pick still priority is but Jackie's going for the Orianna. Might be a takeaway from Nuke. I think in the ad breaks we've been advertising to let people know how to play Orianna through that said mid laner, as now they're looking for their own priority with this Ari that has risen in priority itself since we've come into this new patch. Zeri as well, Zeri I should well. add, yeah. into that mix. Nuke, definitely, you know, Orianna, very classic uh, him pick. Surprisingly, hasn't played it this split so far, which is kind of a shock, but I feel like BDS as a whole have kind of changed up their identity compar compared to Winter as well. Yeah. We're seeing Ice a lot more on hyper carries like the Zeri and the Aphelios is the only other two champions uh, together that he has played. So uh, BDS continue to evolve from Winter as Giant X, something like the, the Norlus, even though it's been for me, easy to punish has become basically the go-to reliable engage support. It really has as well. And again, remember things like the center is still up and available. So we can see that partnership yeah. work is one of the most popular partnerships, I think, again, globally out of any of the bot lanes right now. But another one that is popular is Odo running back onto the Rumble, something that he has historically been good on, something in winter that we saw him pop off on and going up against Adam. I think you need a flare up in that top side. And I wonder if this is actually a callback to, to Vitality BDS, where Adam really struggled, of course, against Photon's yes. Rumble. And if this is kind of just a all-around answer kill. from Odo Amne, where he just goes, all right, I think all of Adam's champions suck into Rumble, so we can just blind it. <laughs> You'd be right. And <laughs> be pretty okay. I mean, he plays predominantly Juggernauts, right? That's kind of the whole thing with Adam. Yep. Uh, and whilst he can play some of the more meta champions, Rumble on paper does do well against just about most of what Adam tends to show. So it's good prep uh, coming out from Giants. And Great. this also is very reminiscent of their win uh, against MAD, where they just had a bunch of engaged tools, right? They've got Nautilus, they've got Rumble. If they find one more form of lockdown, Rumble feels really great. Then they've got more engaged to follow up with Nautilus. And I think pro proactivity tools like that are the kind of way that Giants can try and find an additional win on top of their 1-3 score. And I think in those in that win as well, like I, I remember watching Igna on one of those tools as well, especially this support coming over from NRG. That's the person I want to see. And when he has Nautilus, that's the person I'm going to be looking at. On the other side, note that we are looking at a potential LeBrov for the Rel here uh, for Shao. That could pop into the jungle, but has been fewer and less between so far in this split as the ports have started looking at it. Yeah, just holding the flex realistically, right? This should be Rumble top. I don't think anyone's playing Rumble jungle ever. So for BDS, this is about going Adam's pick on four yep. and then revealing the Rel flex on five. So the game plan is pretty standard. And because there's no AD locked in by Giants, they can just go 
Varus probably center, feel pretty happy about it, and then Giants uh, can remove away one more form of engage if they feel like it's necessary out of Adam's pool. But I like the Orn call out just as a, you know, look, we might end up having two immobile carries here. We don't want to have to deal with the, the big ram coming through the rest of our team. Also might pincer him into something again you talk about, you know, some of those top laners like the Olaf, uh, things like the Aatrox or Renekton, we've already seen out of Adam this split, so. Again, it might put him towards more of the direction Giant X want to see. Now, on the side, you mentioned it. Really good call out there, Jamada, with the virus with the center already taken away. Big priority ADs that were left on the board. That for Team BDS, now that they've got the Zeri, we can find out what they're going to do with that R4 as Jax is also taken away. Does that not just tell you we're going to get a Xin Zhao now or what? Because a Xin Zhao seems to be the, the top tier jungler left on the board. Jax feels like the biggest counter at the moment to him in, yeah. in multiple patches. Definitely does. We'll see exactly where... Uh... Giants decide to go with their jungler. Xin Zhao feels like the only strong available jungler still up. You could, of course, go Sejuani, mm -hmm. I suppose, if you're Peach, but uh, I feel like Xin kind of enables a little bit more of yep. a skirmish style, and I feel like BDS agree they don't want to have to deal with it. They take it up themselves, they put the rail in the bottom side of the map, and I feel like generally this does kind of round out BDS as having a little bit more damage all around as well, and kind of in the terms of the early stages, not having to solely rely on the CC of the rail, and then of course the follow up from this Nico now. Giants, X and Patrick hovering over the Zion. I mean, it's kind of a strong go to for me. I feel like you're seeing a yep. lot of these abilities which should be telegraphed enough that you should be able to feather storm them and then make BDS's life hell if they continue to try and approach through I, all of that damage. I just want to see what gets partnered with it. The least in, I guess I was going to say, is going to be okay. something like the Sedge. You know, Maokai and Vi were already taken away, so we get Peach on something a little bit more proactive, and when the desk were talking so much about him, this is going to be a sink or swim approach here yeah. from Giant X in the early game. And I like this, because it can go toe to toe with Xin Zhao, and I feel like Lee Sin in a game like this might have to. There's a lot of setup across the board, as yep. is. You've got two mobile carries mid and bot, right? Very volatile bottom lane potentially as well, as can be. So Lee Sin has to be there and match uh, the Zin at every single opportunity. Adam as we get to R5, simply has to default to the Scion. Yeah. It does start with S, so it does yeah. fit into the gods does category, into gods. technically, if you don't want to put Zed in there. But for BDS, I mean, look at this. I mean, set up the ice here. We've seen this area really be proactive in the past couple of patches throughout the world. And as you already said, there's good setup between jungle and mid. I feel like there's, you know, we're setting ourselves up for some kind of front to back here for Team BDS as the game goes along and try to utilize some of those big engage tools to give ice freedom of space. Yeah, that's how it feels for BDS, really. It's, it's going to be a lot about, you know, front to backs. Can Nuke find an engage angle to really, you know, tear apart a fight? Yep. And on the opposite side, it's, again, very reminiscent of, I beg your pardon, uh, BDS's only victory. Reminiscent uh, of, of begging your pardon? <laughs> I mean, wow. uh, uh, Giant's only victory against MAD, where it was a lot of engage tools. And again, you know, Lee Sin, Orianna Shockwave, there's a lot of setup uh, between the mid-jungle as well as, of course, the Nautilus to try and additionally get Oduamne involved in these teamfights. Well, it's been a rough start on that point as well. The only win against Mad, you pulled up, but Fnatic, SK, KC have already come through Giant X. They need some wins on the board. It's such a short split. And when it's already a one and three start, you cannot fall here. But BDS, are they going to be hill too high to climb? On the other side of the rift, Team BDS yesterday, I mean, I was coming into this one, Jamada, and I'm like, look, I might say some words about BDS, because yes, they opened up with G2, but then it started with Vitality. Then against Rogue, you're like, okay, well, look, BDS should find an expected win. It was against SK yesterday, especially that there were some issues. Yes. There were some massive issues yesterday, almost getting taken out by SK. Um, luckily, we are able to pull up a win with a bit of a late game turnaround, but still, again, it wasn't that clean. I think that's what we're taking away from BDS so far is that this team has not been cleanly. It's not like, yeah, they find one team fight and turn it around. It's not that great validity that we saw in winter at the very least. And last year, where this team was so well known for their 5v5s and so well for their comebacks, I'm not getting that same vibe again. Yeah, no, they have been very inconsistent. And again, I, I kind of point towards the identity shift that they've moved from winter to even the back end of, of winter, actually, if you really uh, peek into it, where ice predominantly, and it was somewhat the meta as well. I think that's a very important point to point out. Yeah. Uh, where Ice was on these utility picks, Sheo was more strictly on skirmishers like Vi and Xin Zhao. Mm -hmm. Since then, however, we've moved towards Sheo being more on engage tools and then Ice being on hyper carries. Now, Ice is still on the Zeri. It's kind of been this rise in priority recently, kind of flavor of the month. Sheo now, on an on, not an engaged champion, but a skirmishing champion with a lot of setup around him, should have a lot more freedom to attack lanes, 
with a lot more ease and BDS should feel a lot more comfortable to take skirmishes in the early game. Yeah, let's see how they work out because again, I feel like for this game as well, if you are on an even state or even not too far behind for BDS, still having that presence with things like the Nico, the Scion as well, adding a bit of flair for the engage in these, some of these fights and giving Ice that room to breathe as we're talking about in draft. Junglers for now, we'll just start you off because it is a blue side start for both teams if you go vertically, horizontally, diagonally. Let's try that. Direction's not my strong suit today, but Peach and Shadow, my point being, both on the same side of the map, both shifting their weight all the way to the bottom of the map towards Ice and Patrick, where we know Bot these days is still so important, but maybe it's not the most important lane to talk about because Odoarm, they picked this rumble up. Adam was forced into the, the R5 Scion Javada, and it's already starting how we kind of expected it to. Yeah, I mean, naturally, rumble gains priority into almost every melee in the game, right? So yeah. Scion isn't really going to be an exception. It's going to take a while for him to get online, you know, sit on a Bammies, get some MR, and then just start to wave clear. Uh, but before then, Odoamne is going to be uh, in a world of freedom to do whatever he wants with that wave. And to return back to your jungle point, I feel like that also means we're not going to see junglers up there very often, unless Odoamne takes a very favorable trade to the point where it's worth getting him ahead. I expect both Peach and Shea will be doing their best to uh, shore up their bottom lane, respectively, trying pressure leads uh, when and where they can. I will say, you know what is crazy about topside? Odoamne went TP instead of Ignite. I mean, in most cases, like the Ignite Rumble in lane, because it is, again, all about the uh, all about the lane, uh, feels like a more passive approach, more to match what BDS can do around this map with, again, a lot of driving forces. Yep, true. I mean, also, you have to remember, I feel like in a lane like this, you can make a lead for yourself so heavily, even if it's not just through, you know, 1v1 kills and what have you, uh, that right. having teleport is probably just going to allow you to have more freedom in the mid game, which is where I feel like, to me, if you remember, BDS are, you know, one of the sort of trailblazer teams that, of course, with Adam playing all of these juggernauts that require Ghost Flash to function a lot of the time, mm. they're the ones that will, you know, really muck around with side lanes not having teleport. So right. uh, I feel like for Odo, having teleport, or not ra rather, not having Ignite, uh, kind of just says to me that Giants more willing to opt into team fights, basically, when and where they will uh, in the mid stages of this game. Okay, so I get that point. We'll see what happens. Ooh. Flash for Flash, by the way. Nuke pulls the trigger, Tangle Barbs come out, and Jackie's pace respect. Now, Peach is hovering around mid to see if anything else can brew. But there is a health disadvantage here for Jackie. So you can see playing back towards the turret, also seeing Shao with the Scryers bloom up towards his top side means that he's not going to over push. Yeah, definitely not. Jackie's looking for a reset pretty soon. One would have to imagine. Grubs are up in 35 seconds as well, so you want to be healthy once those objectives come up. And I do anticipate, with all of the priority that Odoarm they uh, should be winning consistently up in the top side that uh, Janice will look to prioritize that. And the question really then becomes, do BDS feel like they have a window to actually uh, disrupt the Grub takedown or will they instead opt for a bit of a cross map play, go towards the Dragon, if a bot lane dive is even in the uh, cards as well, as speaking of. Red line is good, but LeBrov out with a shattering strike, ice over the wall as well. Hard to lock down this duo as Giant X to try and fight back off the back of their turret. On the note of grubbies, let's be real. I think a lot of people realize that that trade sometimes can really bite them in the backside. With all the focus on bot, it's been just over and over again. Seeing dragon sacks come through, seeing that being the cause for the game ending as well. Yes, camera is always going to look topside. So for Giant X, while I go through that expl explanation, grubs for top, but normally it's a trade. Normally it's always like on spawn, dragon being taken as well. But Peach just gets two. In order to maybe move to the bottom side a little bit quicker yeah. here and see if he can catch Shao off guard trying to contest that dragon. Yeah, this is exactly what that's, that's thought for. He knows that his bot lane has the first rotation out uh, because they had the first reset. They got that wave crashed in. So he can now, if he really wants to, cross over. I think he's going to do Raptors just to get level 5. Uh, and then look towards mid, make sure mid's got security and then pick up this dragon. I like the move. You don't necessarily have to commit to all three grubs. Uh, just because you can, and they know that BDS were likely going to try and cross map this, and we're a little bit late. Now they're the ones on priority in the river. Charge in, audacious. And it's going to get the knockout. Peach flashes away. Ignite oh. doesn't get the dredge line in, and for Nuke now just turns to the root. Pop Blossom, only a one man, but that's all you need. First blood over where it belongs, over to Iceri. Yeah, small gap uh, in information there. Wasn't quite ready for Lebrov to leap on top of his face, Jackies, and pays for it with his life and now the dragon's being styled up by BDS but this is a bit problematic the fact that Ignar and Patrick can move up into the river might make this takedown a bit null so they might just have to take the kill for now Gen X with all this priority down here a lot to work with as a counter punch to ensure that objective can't go down Lebrov he's gonna walk into this but can they find the kill they need to root up crash down again hard to find anything in the 2v2 without getting those cooldowns off as Patrick just walks back to lane 
You know, for BDS, what a great start. First kill, first blood over to the Zeri. For Ice, you know, we talked about his development in winter. This guy really became a driving force of BDS. It really became a reliable source for BDS. And I feel like for Ice, you know, coming into the LEC, we had some questions. You know, there's a big voice in Crowny being lost from this team. Uh, I feel like for now, for BDS, even though we've been critical of them, at least the skill level is there. Now, have I jinxed it? No. No, no I've not. Great timing. For the first time, a caster has not just put his foot in his mouth. Cast the curse. Doesn't first, work out. Yeah. First time rarely, I should say. Not the first time ever. There's definitely great moments from all of us. Just myself, I, you know, few and far between. <laughs> to be quite honest. <laughs> to be honest. not talking myself down as just being realistic. Yeah. But uh, I'm kind of curious, though, returning back to that dragon point. Whether or not Please. BDS are going to try and force the issue down there. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, you know, now that Ice does have that kill, I wonder if... A reset can come in soon, and maybe they'll have some kind of window to work with. But as, as now stands, Ignor and Patrick just have so much priority. It feels like Ice and LeBrov are going to be kind of trapped underneath their tower. Or at the very least, Ice will always be second to the move. LeBrov can always kind of drop waves, right? That's how this portal works. Now, yep. I did mention earlier, top would probably be isolated unless a dive opportunity arises. Adam is completely out of mana, no biscuits, and Odo is finding another nice trade. I oh, think yeah. Adam is... Probably dead. Yeah, there's a big wave crashing in as well. Yep. I mean, the setup for the dive seems so easy in that equalizer. The overheat as well. Either way, he's just dead. Nicely done, Odo just presses E. Adam gonna try and thin out the wave, but a kill over to this top rumble, and he's a rolling. Yep, kill. The uh, undead passive will prevent Odo from getting a plate. Silver linings. But still, the dive is good, and this is kind of what we mentioned, right? The lane will be isolated unless Adam takes a bad trade. Adam overstays his welcome in the top side of the map. It will be cross-mapped, however, uh, with this dragon. But I feel like overall, Giant X are probably happy with that trade. Almost a 1,000 individual gold lead between Odo Omni and Adam. Cool, so this rumble is going to be really, really accelerated. And uh, look at his eye as well. <laughs> he had not base. He's been on the map for almost eight and a half minutes. Holy. So uh, he is going to have a whole bunch of cash in his wallet to spend. And that lane is going to go from bad to worse for Adam, it's probably going to feel... Oh my god, oh, he just bought he just a Leandre oh, outright. Yeah, okay. That's like, guy gets his payday and he's like, I'm going to the Gucci store. He just pulls this one out of the hat and... For Odo, now it gets a little bit more serious. Versus Spectre's Cal, I don't think you're really going to have that much MR to deal with this Rumble. Who's going to have an experience lead? Going to have an item lead? Like, that is some serious stuff in the top lot, top side. For Giant X, big win condition now brewing up here in this opening game. Yeah, if you want to play through top, you can. Oh, picked out. Observers are just saying peekaboo. Ignar is dead. Another kill for Ice. In the bottom side, meanwhile, yep. that is also a win condition for BDM. <laughs> it's brewing into one, isn't it? Ice gets another relatively free kill yep. in the grand scheme of things. Ignar, just a greedy base. Nothing more to say about it, and BDS have vision. I'm not sure how, in the grand scope of things, it's going to change how the priority has been lying out for our two bottom lanes, respectively. I feel like Patrick and Ignar will still be able to force it, but for now, uh, Lebrov and Ice can enjoy a brief window of freedom. Lebrov will get some vision down, maybe even a little visit to the mid lane, though Nuke is on reset and Shadow's on the top side of the map, so could be a little while till BDS are able to find a, another point of attack on the map. So we chill for now. That dragon long timer away. Uh, Grub's up in the top side for Peach. Feels Still like the first opportunity one. to take, yeah. Because they, because uh, no one ever went and finished off that first grub respawn, Ooh. so uh, maybe preordained plan from a uh, from Giant X, but that grub point. is no, not three. It's one. It's lying to you. It's not three. It's one. It's like telling someone with no context to be like, "What is going on?" Someone who's seen League of Legends five years ago have absolutely no clue. I'm sure that there's there's got to be some kind of there was on Reddit there was a league time capsule from like ten years ago. Oh really? Yeah, and they had a bunch of different things that they they had like laid out all of like the most recent skin. You can probably go on Reddit and find it. I'm not. Yeah. I, I'm not crazy. But I know ten years there. ago with like Riggle's Lantern era or what? What yes. are we talking? Season four. Season four. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like Riggle's Lantern era. Yeah. Uh, oh man, the, it feels ages ago. The Soul Stone. Can't remember what it's called. The Jungle. I am stone. Anyway, there's Dredge a fight. Line. Yeah, no, there is a fight. Depth Charge goes in. It's on to LeBrov, though, using all the engage tools on the support I needed the kick. Is there from Peach, but sends it into Ignar again. A lot's used, but a lot's gained. BS with another kill, and they just keep going bot, and it just keeps working. Yeah, Ignar is the victim of a grander play. Now, I will say the immediate cross map effect will be that Odo is going to get at least two plates off of this push, so his lead is going to continue to extend, and that's going to feel great for Giants. 
again, BDS kind of get a pick, and that's it for now. So, you know, it's good that Ice keeps on picking up all these resources, and now Nuke's also on the board. They're going to have to try and show off all of this gold that they are picking up from these skirmishes and exchanges at this next dragon fight. They got the first one. If they can stack up the second one, it does start to put a little bit of eerie pressure onto Giant X to try and make sure that they're on their correct timings to be in the river first, or at the very least set up vision in situations so that they can get the kind of engages that they want to force. Because if not, I mean, Nuke, Shao, Angle has to be picked. And I mean, especially for someone like Nuke, as Patrick walks up, gets a plate. So at least for Giant X, while we're talking about these engages and or maybe the, the setup that's going to come through from the next Dragon and how BDS can find success. In the individual lanes, we are seeing that being halted. We're seeing the gold lead from stopping to be run away. Let's try English again. Giant <laughs> X are just taking all the place in these lanes. Through mid, through bot. Yes, one only for Jackies, but I think in the bot side, two were just picked up by Patrick overall through these first 12 minutes. So it's still a decent news story. It's still a gold lead here in the early game, despite the kills going over. And for Giant X, more importantly, they've got this rumble that now BDS have to start checking because coming into the next dragon, remember, we highlighted in the early game, Odo has taken TP on this rumble, and I'm pretty sure in a minute, it's going to be back up and available. Yeah, Adam's going to have to drop a wave or try and ult down there or do something to be first. Odoane should have teleport by the time that dragon comes up, so it will definitely be a big window for Giant X to try and abuse. A 4v5, yep. stop that dragon stack, and then kind of try to maintain, you know, sort of macro superiority uh, and slowly take over the map. Whereas for BDS, again, they've got the correct kind of tools where if they can set up, you know, triangles of Fog of War, things like the Rail and the Nico become very threatening when it comes to face checks for Giant X as they try to approach that. But the thing that is in front of us right now will be this Dragon in 20 seconds. And BDS, they're the ones with a little bit of deeper vision in comparison to Giant X. And we'll see exactly how they get things to work out for them as now that teleport timer is up for Odo. We'll see exactly how the two top laners try and manage uh, their tempo and ability to make it down to this dragon fight. A little bit of suspect from Odoamne. Level 11, by the way. So going to have the second level of equalizer. You're mentioning some of the tools from BDS. Uh, Labrov, big one for me. I mean, already seen from the crash downs, already seen from the 100% kill participation. He's a part of it. Both world support now head to head. We've seen them before. But Ignar, he's come back to Europe. He's realized this is the better region. This dragon starts off. Yeah, starts off. Teleport behind for Odo. BDS, they're trying to look for an angle. You can see Adam's here. I mean, he's Giants. charging in. Oh! It's a four, man. It's a crash down. It's a pop up. It's a pop down. Blink and you'll miss it because the fight is over and it feels like the game goes with it. Oh, my goodness. I mean, we spent the last couple of minutes kind of building up that. Hey, you know, BDS, they have all these tools. Giants just disrespect Adam as he ults down from the top side of the map and Lebrov knows how to pick his target. That was a complete mint for just, Giants. Is it just, is the game now just over? Is the game from that one play just over? Because from one simple engage, from the setup, from the pylon, from BDS's comp, playing it perfectly, it's a 3k gold lead. Mid turret goes with that second dragon, by the way. Bot goes with it. They're going to TP onto Nuke. That's Jackie's. But can he actually find the kill? Well, with the teleport oh. and response from BDS, Jackie's now with nowhere to go. No summoners, Tangle Barbs as well. Shockwave buys him time, but he will die. And just like that, it just feels so distraught for Giant X. I need to see the post-game breakdown to see the gold graph. <laughs> I think they just got a 4,000 gold lead mm. off the back of that dragon. Dragon two towers kill. That's rough. Giant X at the very least, as they come back out from their doom. They're going to pick up the Herald, as BDS, of course, did invest in making sure there was no issues for Nuke taking that tower. But let's just take a look at it, because Giant X, they're so invested in trying to find the fight after the dragon goes down that they just don't notice that Adam is there. There's not actually a war for Giant X. So perhaps they simply, from their point of view, didn't know where he was going from. Right. So LeBron, easy as you like, finds the, the follow-up. And the chase down for the rest is just so easy. That is one of the roughest team fights to watch <laughs> if you're a giant giant fan X, they're ahead of their hands bds they're laughing the coaches off because they know uh, how big a moment that is for their team thank it. you <laughs> production do, do you know when <laughs> i don't know if you've been to like any of the disneylands recently like there's a lot more roller coasters that you're in the dark like going to space mountain for example yeah there's some twists and turns but you can't see a damn thing and then suddenly boom <laughs> that's the roller coaster that's the point of the drop where everyone's screaming 
Except for BDS, they're having a great time. Yeah. They, just, they don't care about the surprises, but Giant X, that they're the ones who want off that ride. And as we saw now, the gold is out of control. It's almost a 4K gold lead in. Yes, it's not insurmountable, but for BDS, the core carries that need to be fed are fed. And I'm talking about Ice here with a Phantom Dancer and a two item over a one item uh, Zaya on the other side. And Patrick, suddenly that rumble doesn't feel as threatening as it did a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Definitely not. And, I mean, you have to recall there's a couple of, you know, uh, silver linings to it. Ice, his items are very cheap comparably to Patrick. So the spike is a lot earlier, but even Oops. then the lead still present, right? And now for BDS, even though they are losing this tower, and this is going to be one of my later points, but I'll bring it up now. Objective bounties are up. Giant X did pick up the Herald, right? There is that tower on the top side as well, which is particularly low. So Giant X do have options in finding gold on the map, uh, but it's about trying to avoid <laughs> BDS in the skirmishes as they attempt to do that. And as for BDS, really the goal right now is to continue to try and suffocate Giant X out of the map so they can try and again set up these Fog of War triangles that Giant X have no idea where anyone is and find another engage like that second dragon. Running into a sign, I mean that Fog of War is so important, it's so easy to abuse as well. Nico can go on that list, anyone who really has reliable CC, which for BDS they built a comp around. Kick away, Peach just needs to defuse the situation but in a turret in the bottom side goes down even without a Baron buff and teleport to defend this top from Oduwamne, then follows suit. Patrick unable to get the objective bounty mid, but you can see before, Giant X were running away from that objective bounty in the outer bottom side. That pulled some gold back into this game. So I have to see if they can get any more of those. As for now, BDS still just keep clawing ahead and gearing up for this next dragon in one minute's time. Yeah, exactly. Giant X have done a pretty decent job here at trying to claw that gold back. We're now kind of more closely seeing at around a two and a half thousand gold lead. So Giants, really what we need to track moving towards this dragon is whether or not anyone's going to base right now and find a full complete completed item. If they don't, they're going to walk into this dragon completely behind. And to me, one singular Cloud Dragon and hell, even a Cloud Soul, it's not the worst in the world to give up. I always hate having to bring up this argument when it's Cloud, you know, because I am I'm a Cloud Shiller. I do like the Cloud Dragon, but I, I love Cloud. I do love Cloud Dragon, but uh, Adam could be. They, well, need, they need Odo. They need the damage from yeah. this Rumble. He's on the hot fire. Adam surviving for now, but as Odo just starts auto attacking him, and there you go. That's how they finish the job. Adam buying time, but as Odo picks up the kill. Adam has shifted gears up to this top side, okay. meaning that it is going to be the turret. Try and get the push here. But he's going to get mid. They're also going to get this dragon. But it just depends how far Giant X can go with this. I mean, to be fair, no one's up here right now defending this push. We're seeing a reset now coming out from Nuke and the Brawl. They could reasonably... Oh, they can't kill the tower in time. They could have okay. maybe hopped in the Herald, made the charge happen again. And onto that inhibitor tower in the Better top lane, than watching this dragon, though. Yeah, exactly. And I'll be honest, I'm just happy that Giant X aren't window shopping at the yeah, yeah, dragon, yeah. plain and simple. They're clawing gold back pretty efficiently. And like we just said, they're not really, they weren't in a position to be equal in items. Why even risk the flip? Go make that cross map happen. And Adam is the unfortunate victim of it. And I think that inner turret, I mean, you already get bonus gold for the inner turret. It's also but just worth more gold than the mid tower that they traded. That, as that's well. right. But objective bounty on top, I think I saw 453 per person gain from that turret that was just the localized gold as well yep so for whatever that breakdown is all of a sudden as rogue vitality next there you go we'll, looking we'll forward get to that, that. yeah, yeah I, I bet you are that, that'll be back <laughs> but it's less than 2k gold lead so it felt like an absolute disaster but it's not no. right my imitation poor there even though it was an australian didn't need the accent it's very poor but we are on salt point for bds so there has to be a fight around this next dragon and I know you talked about Cloud Soul, talking it down, but with a Zeri? I don't like that. As no, Giant X or... don't either, Shao flashes away. That's a good summoner to get. But yep. what else comes with it? Yeah, exactly. It's about Giant X trying to find the small wins when uh, BDS do actually offer up the opportunity to take it. BDS trying to find this top oh tier one, God. but uh, just maybe a second inside of the Flame Spear and Overheat uh, makes Nuke think twice. BDS, they're trying to uh, set up as much vision as they can. Another dredge line, but it's not really going to result in a fight. <laughs> you can tell Giant X are Pop. really poking a prodding. Pop Blossom flashed away from. They continue to do so, and they're getting summoners like that. Now, in the long term, it is a, is a summoner trade. Shao burned his flash a little bit earlier, but Odo yep. on the rumble. Remember, he ain't running phase rush or anything. That guy is going to be exposed. 
if he gets caught out with the numerous CC that BDS are running. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anyone will, right? On Giant X's side, I think we've even seen Ignar just get 100 zeroed inside of him. He's yep. got Aftershock, so you can imagine how some of these squishier members will feel. BDS still have all the pressure to work with, and I like what they're doing overall to try and keep Giant X at arm's length uh, now that they have kind of in their own answered a couple of towers. And that dragon, you know, it sits three minutes away. And like you said, for, for Giant X, it's not, you know, a, a massive combat soul to get over, but you are still right, you know, trying to lock down members like uh, Ice on the Zeri, trying to avoid things like the ultimate from LeBrov and Nuke just become that bit more difficult. And that's always the thing about movement speed. It's very hard to quantify it. Unless you see a Hecarim running at you at like 800 movement speed. Yep. So uh, we'll see how BDS do make use of it if they do end up picking up the soul. Whether or not Giant X can try to make some kind of trade. Maybe they go Baron for soul and True. just kind of take up the immediate gold injection. Plus, of course, the pressure of having Baron uh, to try and put BDS in a disadvantageous position. The Brom is going to spoil Patrick on this red buff. Not too much he can do by himself, but he's with the threat that there could be more where that came from. Exactly. A Sheo. He's now going to make it a reality. Ice also making the movement as well. But towards that dragon, regardless of whoever picks up Soul, or the dragon itself, I should say, if it is Giant X's. In two minutes' time, we're going to find out if there's a th three items there. You know, Ice is someone I we're going to have so. to watch in the next fight. It, it feels like it could be on the horizon. We've also got a Majize for Nuke, who has a rabbit on death cap. So there's a lot of big power items that have come through from BDS or will be coming through as we count down that clock, 1 minute 30, top right. Yeah, what I'd really love to see BDS do, and they're doing the first step of it, is uh, get rid of this vision, and again, not to sound like a broken record, see if they can find someone rotating in a position they shouldn't be, blow a summoner spell, or find Odo, he's the only one right now without Flash. But, Giant X, they're paying their due diligence. They're I'm making just... sure they're not overextending, you know, in isolation at the very least. Ooh, okay, as I so say, Jackies yeah. might be caught out. Hang on, he's got the Flash over the wall, Pop Blossom! You know what? There's the pick. You want to see Giant X find one? They've got it. They've got the mid laner. And now they've got direction to go Baron. You know earlier how you made Ice dodge out on that cast of curse? Yeah. Yeah, I think I just cursed the Jackies. Nice. They should at the very least be an attempt at Baron. Uh, Odo, Odo does have Ulmer, and there are still a couple of threatening ults, but realistically, Shockwave is the big one you'd be looking out for if you're BDS. So now this going down, Giant X have to make a decision. What can they actually do to try and dissuade this Baron from being taken? Nuke's taking a lot of damage in the build up to it, though. And again, that Baron, how fast is it going down is the biggest question. Like. As the engage comes through, it's a five versus four regardless, but the equalizer doing a bit of work. Nuke has to get out on the backside. Baron has stopped for the meantime as the kick disengages. Depth charge also re-engages, but there's no follow-up from Giant X. BDS move away. Now searching for Peach in the fog of war that he moves into. Wind becomes lightning, does so, but a blast cone builds space. Smite for smite and trying to get the movement speed advantage. It's no bueno. BDS can't get him, and Lee Sin's just having the time of his life. And for a blind guy, he oh. sure knows his way around the rift. That was a bit greedy to burn the flash. An unfortunate end for Peach, but at least he's got his life. Yeah, okay, but what tools got blown here, right? If you look at the scoreboard, it's three more flashes uh, on the side of Giant X. So now yep. once BDS has almost come back up, it's a huge threat. Are Giant X going to try and flip this on tempo? Are they going to try and assume BDS have gone reset or looking for the dragon? They are, but they should know that people are around. They can see Adam. They should it's see more people coming through. Nuke is... A a rap Raptors are oh, very, oh, very boy. suspicious. Pop Blossom time. Yes, it is. It's only two as he gets nuked down, though. Hold on. And now with Jackie's getting launched on as well, you can see LeBrov has gotten that backside engaged, but watch eyes. Watch eyes. Watch eyes. Triple already gained, and Odo is just the creme de la creme, the quadra on top, and it's Ice Ice Baby. It all comes together again for BDS. It's the fight that they were looking for. A giant X, they try to pick on a window they believe is theirs, and frankly, BDS just punished them for it. Nuke finds a massive ultimate, and the Brov's follow-up to that was even better. And now BDS will walk away of this Baron, <laughs> and they'll be able to probably open up the base here of Giant X. There's a Valiant attempt to just throw everything against the wall and see what sticks in front of the Baron. But as you said, so many summoners down, so many tools that were falling down. And Adam again sets up the engage. Yeah, the lead up to the play really is what makes BDS so confident in going forward. And even though Nuke gets nuked, uh, Lebrov, again, this four man back in its storm on the back end, just allows everyone else to move forward. Odo's trying his best to lock down ice, at least get the kill credit back over, but he can't too much peel, too much frontline. And even though this Scion was a pick that Giants, you know, on paper forced Adam onto. He's become a menace. He's relatively unkillable now as one of these yep. big, beefy frontliners for Ice to work around last. Nuke just dives with the rest of them.
we talked about Odo's landing phase and, and we thought, oh yeah, it might be a problem. Like, what's the sign going to do in response? But it was both engaged now as Odo flashes again off the cooldown, it feels like. Adam's just TP'd in. He does not care about a turret. He doesn't care about really anyone, even Odo at this point. This remaining smash is going to be avoided, but BDS now with Baron. The rampage continues topside, mid. Bot looks like it needs a little bit of attention, but who cares because BDS feel like they're going to crack the base with this upcoming push. Yeah, they definitely should be able to. Need the waves to sync up, though. Mid lane waves on its way. Shockwave. Shockwave. They're the tanks, though. Yeah. Mm, double engage. Here's Nuke, and that was a mistake. A valiant attempt, but a mistake all the same. As the Shockwave does nothing, and now it might just be the end if they can run this through with long dead timers. Can't blame Giant X for trying, but at the end of the day, it just feels like the front line of BDS is way too tanky for them to deal with. And even though Patrick was in a position where he was feeling kind of powerful, falling further and further behind has made this BDS frontline unkillable, and now they're on the Nexus turrets. Beach with a kick back to just try and delay the inevitable, but it feels like BDS have everything in their back pocket as one Nexus turret goes down the next wave, channeling in Adam. He's gone down to half HP. There is still good damage now coming out of Patrick as well with his armor shred. BDS aren't going to get in the game here, but still 7k gold lead, a big Baron power play of about 3,000. It still feels like we're just going to wait to see if Giant X can do what is the unthinkable. Okay. We all know how BDS closes this game out. But, but how's BDS been this split? Uh, exactly, <laughs> my dear friend. Now, there is one spanner that can be thrown in the works if BDS do not end in four and a half minutes and they don't have the pressure on the map. What? The Elder Dragon will spawn up. Oh, yeah. Everyone can see the timer at the, the top the right. The game flipper. The game flipper. Exactly. Now, at this point, this is probably what Giant X are hoping for. Oops. BDS, however, will do their best to take whatever they can. Whilst this Baron remains up, they'll get this tier two on the top side as Nuke runs around the lane as a little baby wrapped up. They'll see if they can crack open the base on the top side as well before the Baron just about wears off. He just likes the form. Yeah. A lot of movement speed, to be fair. Yeah, that's very true. Don't forget, you get some of those stats off the, the things that you take away. I actually do wonder what the chicken... I wonder if it's like the fastest jungle camp out of all the camps you can steal. You'd it probably, think it'd be a it wolf, probably is. You? No, I think, th no, I think no, that little think, chicken probably is, you'd you know. you think, like, biologically, the wolf would be the oh, fastest yeah. camp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But raptors are real quick, especially when resetting. Yeah. So, again, doesn't make too much sense. But, like, yeah, I think raptor camps, you're right, they are the fastest. They might be the fastest. Be it should be wolves. You know, I'm with you. I'm with you on the wolf gang. Like, cool. like the wolves wolf should be... Love Wolfgang. They, they should be the fastest. True. But he... No, it's <laughs> got it's got to be the chicken. It's, it's got to be. <laughs> Nuke knows what he's oh, doing. Don't forget, he's also got, like, the Cloud Dragons and the Cloud Souls, so he's True. artificially a little bit faster than we'd probably be used to seeing him, but it's so funny. Just, just seeing see this, like, like watching the second chicken run. <laughs> BDS are just going to traverse through, knowing that their friend and colleague is walking through the sidelines now out of form, and I think for a while there was a white square on the minimap when Nico was a chicken. So, that's now, gonna change around. Nico minion is time. a minion. Okay, very good. What do we got on the minimap? Actually, a minion logo. Yeah, it, yeah. it is actually a minion logo, but Nico is a minion. Very question, good. The question is, do they know? Well, they certainly they, they know certainly now. They certainly know. What is that? Minion's up to no good. Minion's finally gained uh, sentience. Finally leveled up its brain power. Like how, you know, we've turned from apes to humans. Minions one day will turn into champions. We just mm. don't know when or how it's going to happen. Maybe a couple of million years. Yeah, BDS are really struggling, though, to, to find an opportunity and an opening. So credit for Giant X for, you know, keeping the windows closed. Great wave clear. Yeah, there is a lot of very strong wave clear available. And even though BDS's engage is good, it does rely a lot on, you know, overextensions and things of the like, which is what Giant X have been doing in your yep. base. You're basically backs against the wall, right? So it's very hard to find those windows. Uh, so this has been effectively a full mid in hip defense where Giant X, oh no. Okay, no, no one's around, yeah, to be yeah. fair. But you always see the Scion Q, you focus on it, you don't know who's yeah. around. Peach. Kick back. Okay. This is onto Adam. They've got Odo nearby. He does flash to the credit of Giant X. That is one summoner down from BDS. And remember, we've got Elder. As Jamada said, this is what Giant X are putting in their back pocket to hopefully win out, to hopefully bring them back into this game, at least get something. Yeah, the thing that sucks as Patrick. Okay. Yeah, should be fine. Is that Baron spawns in 30 and Elder spawns 45 seconds or so nah. after the fact. So, BDS, if they're quick to the draw, 
they can already have the Baron in their back pocket, or Giant X maybe contest it and they lose the game of the Baron instead. We lose to no until it happens. Ignar, oh no. Run forward and now you're gonna be knocked up and look, Ice just behind. I mean, Ignar at half HP already, but Lefrog meanwhile is behind uh -oh. himself. Odo doing the damage, but the pop blossom again. It's as easy as that, isn't it? Patrick will cleanse out to survive as his route back is good, but still Ice survives. He'll run forward, he'll auto this to death. And the Zeri with 10 kills looks for Peach to finish off the job. This Lee Sin has no choice but to go back in. But Ice, even though being kicked away, Peach has to watch from afar as he dies. Gets flashed on, gives the 11th kill over. And for BDS, we said these guys are split. It has been a little bit of a much of a muchness, but now finally we see a great game, great coordination here in the second week of spring. We see the BDS that we've been promised time and time again. Such a good defining game for them, Jamada, as they just want more kills to oh, open this the one up. They've got an inhibitor to open this one up. Hold on a second. Is it going to keep going? They... No. No, it should end. But... Jackie's is up. No, yeah, it's, the... it's done. Hit the Nexus. Hit the Nexus. BDS. Don't, think... don't threat. It's fine. It's, you it's think good. You think they're all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ice oh. is dead. And eventually the Nexus <laughs> is dead. It is done. BDS, it is a significant win. One desperately needed. Yep. Almost. Almost. Maybe. In yep. some universes, maybe someone doesn't want to attack the Nexus, but okay. good looks from BDS overall. I feel like they were able to punish some of Giant X's plays, and specifically in the early game, it was Ignar a couple of times that they were able to pick off. And even though I, I will give credit where it's due, Giant X's draft prep coming into this, relatively solid in my opinion. Yep. I just feel like the fact of the matter is not only were BDS sharper on the plays and a lot quicker to find those engages. As soon as that first one came through, it just felt like there was no opportunity for Giants to actually find an opportunity to fight. It was an issue, wasn't it? But you can vote for your key or play the game. Have your say at LEC on X. Is it Shao, Nuke, or Lebrov? Who won it for you here? As we go to a short break, but when we return, Rogan Vitality take to the rip. Red Bull gives you wings.
Hello team. Who's saying ah ah? Peach. Peach. Oh. The Koreans are always saying. Hey, can you hear me? Ah 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 ah. Can I get top down? Yeah, can I get top down? Five percent. Oh, I was screaming. Just Drake, Drake, Drake. 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 Drake, Drake.
and they didn't perform last week. They performed enough yesterday. Yep. And I was very, very happy to see that Rogue were relatively quick at adapting to what KC were throwing at them. Yeah. And at the very least saying, okay, we can give up the bot side because we have the center lane mm -hmm. and we can go and accelerate the game on the top side. Rogue have been given Smolder. So good start. All right, great good start. After the three zero away. And you know what? Before we fully kick off into draft, I want to say I went downstairs yep. uh, between the break and I saw Pat, their strategic coach, team, team Vitality strategic coach. Yep, yep, yep. And he said, We are cooking. We are cooking something nice. Ooh, okay. You might not like it. We'll see, though. The immediate response to Smolder is two point and click lockdowns. That works. So seemingly, I imagine Vitality had the plan to let this one go through. Now it's about how Rogue actually build around this smolder. Are they going to have a good and strong and consistent front line? The answer is yes. They're going to have Tom Kench to at the very least protect him from things like the Violts and the gold cards. Rogue will likely also need a secondary form of damage to work off of though until they get to a point where Smolder can carry them through. So I imagine something like the Xin Zhao for uh, Marcoon, even a Lee Sin, something that will play a bit of a bridge unless they want to find it in one of the solo lane answers. But now you got my head scrambling because I'm like, if Team Vitality are cooking up against this comp, I can see a lot of different options. I'm just going to throw one out there. I'd love a Dragon V Dragon Bot. I've seen a lot of Aurelian Soul Bottom happening these yeah. days. And boy, oh boy, is that fun to watch. But at the very least, what is not is another Cassante. Finn going to bring that out. And for Rogue, at the very least, some big power picks. Smod already mentioned the Cassante still there in 14-5. And it's just about now Vitality finding options themselves. Now, Jamada, if we're going down this rabbit hole of what Gordon Ramsay would do in this situation, okay. I feel like maybe a support here, or do you get some nope, Yo, All right. Talia. Okay, hmm. so... Ah... I think I might have cracked the code. I guess technically Correct. Twisted Fate can still be, is predominantly played top. Played top. But what was he tearing up in solo queue? AD. It was AD. C. So oh, I'm wondering if this is actually going to be Kazi's right, Spanish. pickup. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, for now though, it's Talia Vi, very strong lockdown, very potent at attacking side lane, especially with the Twisted Fate on top. So Vitaly have options to engage, options for pick. Uh, they're pretty open on what they can do with the remainder uh, of their picks. For now, Vitaly looking to remove away things that last in a comfortable one and also can kind of act as this middle ground again. That's what Rogue should be looking for. They've got Cassante realistically probably in Finn's hands. They've got the Smolder scaling up. So they need a little bit more of a consistent way to actually find fights or at the very least punish Vitaly because I agree with what Roxa said on the desk actually word for word, bar for bar. Vitaly are the team that are going to aggress very, yep. very quickly, and they've been prone to making mistakes. Rogue, the much slower team, should be in a position then to react accordingly and actually punish. And it's funny that the draft so far really set us up for those points, right? Like, Vitality's can't want to go in. You already talked about it. Point and click CC. There's a lot of map-making plays that are going to be coming through from this team. Rogue can just chill out and keep stacking up. And so far, not going to be letting that go through with things like the Zins out of facilitate. I wonder if this away. is a bait. I'm, you, you think it's you, so double lady carry ban? You think it might actually Pat, be a bait? Pat, Pat's gotten into my head because we we were coaches together years ago. Oh, <laughs> so wow, whenever okay. he says whenever he says stuff like this, I tend to believe it. Maybe it could be a bait where they're actually not cooking at all. It's just a TF ah, top, and maybe it's just TF top. And to be fair, into Cassante, it's fine. Yeah. Right. Like it's just a very much a nullifying. Okay, so they're gonna throw it to the bait bot. Okay, there you go. Never When's mind. When's going us. into the top lane? And this is a horrible lane matchup for Cassante to play out. Now, there's definitely yep. ways you can outplay it. And over the years, now that this has been a, well, a year and a half since Cassante has been in the game, it's gone both ways, but it's definitely very Gwen favored. And again, this sets up for Vitaly to have a very, very strong side lane presence, not just with the two globals, but now a very powerful oh. side laner in Gwen. As a, what's it going to be for Rogue now? We spoke about needling okay. bridge. Vitaly removed away one skirmishing jungler, one, you know, bridge type mid laner that Ari can be with set up. Now it's the Nico, and now Marcoon didn't really have too many jungle options pinched away, so there's still options like this Viego uh, that Rogue can lean on. And now it also becomes a bit of a game of, hey, first kill, relatively important. A couple of powerful base kits to steal away from on Vitaly as well. So mm. Vitaly have to be careful. Viego is one of the best punishing proactive plays champions that there is because of that soul cycle. Letting them run fights as well as this game goes on is going to be tough. I mean, for Rogue, I love the tools here. We can talk about it in a second. I just want to see how this rounds up. We've already seen this TF is going towards the bottom side. And now for Healy, another follow-up engage tool, another supplementary engage. I want to add in as well, thank you to our production. First TF bot lane in the LEC ever. Ever. Huh. Ever. We ain't talking yesterday since since last patch. We're talking ever. That's a long time, Jamada. 
and the fact that it is going to be brought out here by Vitality, already a 3-in-1 start, and by Kazi, no less, as well, who can really take over games if he's allowed to succeed outside that laning phase, is going to be huge, because TS loves playing outside the laning phase. The dude's got an ult dedicated towards it as well. Exactly. I am... Um... So eager to see what Vitaly are going to do with this Kooky Draft, right? Double globals, two forms of hard engage through Vi yeah. and through Rakan. An opportunity to side lane because you've got Gwen to lean on. The world is their race star. If you don't take Cleanse, which by the way, Comp is not, he's taken TP. Mm. It is going to be a very difficult game. To be fair, game. hold on. Tell me why. Spectate can be very weird, so Ooh. we should wait until we get in game. Okay. Years of experience have taught me this. I you can't always trust the summoner spells that we see on our screen that you guys at home can't see as yeah. we go into loading screen. So we will wait. If he doesn't have cleanse, he's got a lot of bloody faith in he does. <laughs> to always and gobble if it him is up. Quadruple TP from Rogue. Then maybe they too are cooking. I mean, technically for Vitality, it's triple TP because for Twisted Fate, but you know what? Uh, well, could you blame them? They might need it. Double globals, teleports as well out of the yeah. solar lanes. They, they gotta be there. Teleports. They've got to be there. <laughs> He's, okay, so Wellis has gone towards heal. There's our answer. No, and, triple uh, TP. Comp does have TP, so it's still triple TP for Rogue. And uh, as I mentioned, Comp then a lot of faith in Zoellis yep. to be there, and he is going to have to be there like clockwork. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is going to be such a fun game to watch play out with the globals we're talking about. Now, there is a small delay getting into game. We'll give you more information when we know, but we're just dealing with a pause for the time being. First one of today, guys, it means we can sit here and chat to you and ooh, yippee. Talk to the intricacies of League of Legends. Ain't uh, that now, just rivet. Let uh, peripherals I've been told are just being mm. adjusted, so we are actually okay. gonna get in shortly. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's just quickly thank Riot Games. Noah's here! Noah's ah. here! Sorry, <laughs> had to come out. I'll okay. clap for that one. That's that's years of no. LPL for you <laughs> just Now, now if we can just get Cassante to be bugged. Then everyone will be happy. No, hold on. Do you know how you get this crowd cheering, really? What? It's if Smolder gets the Sable. Oh, that's, yeah. That's oh, there, there we go. There that we it's, go. it's if Smolder gets the Sable. Vandral, get on it. Find but something. The, the, you know what the problem is? Zeri's now come back into the meta anyway. Mm. And people, people have the same feeling for Zeri as well. We could keep complaining, or we could get into the game of Vitality versus Rogue. There we go. That's how you get them cheering. <laughs> Show them what they want. Show them Vitality, who right now have started off the split with a bit of a bang. And for me, have already shown some upsets. I'd call one against Mad, considering how Mad finished at the regular season. One against Team Heretics, one against BDS. So far, Vitality have only lost to SK. But I think we are seeing the development of this squad come together. As now against Rogue, we have to again. See that same aggression that we highlight. Yeah, and comically, Vitality gave themselves a draft so unplayable that game that <laughs> you might still want to consider them, like, you Undefeated. know. <laughs> yeah. um, so, as we kick into game, we didn't use much of the pause to talk much about setup for Rogue. Uh, and there's a very simple reason for that. Because we don't do that in we LPL. We don't, <laughs> don't, <we> don't <laughs> tend to. Talk about but draft? It's normally because Rogue tend to sit for a while. Sure. The classic term, Rogue time. Uh -huh. uh, this game, though, Larson and Marcoon should have at least, you know, some opportunity to pair up as a duo, try and attack a side lane or point of pressure, potentially yep. even Daglas. Uh, one thing I definitely noticed around Vitality, even though they've obviously shown a very strong tendency around, you know, forcing fights. Uh, one thing super early on is that Daglas' pathing has been kind of questionable. Now, I think that's because a lot of the time, Vitality end up working with not a lot of level one information. Right now, they at the very least actually do see Marcoon uh, I think he's pulled over to the chickens. Yeah. Yeah. So they know where Marcoon's starting. So I expect Daglas's pathing to be a little more efficient than what we saw maybe our week one. Uh, and he's going to be doing a little less cardio, and perhaps that meet, makes Vitality's early game, which has probably been arguably the most inconsistent thing about Vitality, uh, a little bit more consistent. One thing I expect to also be consistent is that Finn is going to probably have a miserable time in this one v one for yeah. a little while. I mean, against Photon as well, who in winter was in my top three quite easily. On this Gwen, set up for the side lane. There's something we didn't get to talk about. There's all this global pressure. But Photon, really, if he's not in a team fight, he's going to be in a side lane winning out consistently as the game goes on. And we know that Gwen can really take over the game and set up such a painful side lane that needs multiple members. But Vitality can always be there further to the point with the TPs with the Destiny available. So I feel like playing around Photon is somewhat manageable and somewhat um, great for Vitality in this game. Yeah. Depends what your thoughts are about, about bridging the gap. 
I mean, oh, to to me, again, I feel like the world is the race, right? They don't even really need to lean on Photon. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the only thing that Vitality should be worried about uh, on a team comp level really is Smolder getting to a point where he can really take over fights. That hurts, yeah. And th which, you know, naturally, it's always going to kind of hurt, right? Smolder, we all know how we feel about the, uh, the little fledgling. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, Larson, the Olmus, right? We saw how impactful Nico ults could be just 20 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, Larson will be a very big difference maker here for Rogue if he can find just one angle at a time into Vitality as, again, they tend to be pretty over aggressive. And what does Nico do? Really well. Punish teams that are diving just oh, yeah. a bit too far forward. As we kind of watch this one play out, I'm already seeing the trades up on the top side. Photon smacking down Finn quite a bit. As you said, going to be a miserable laning phase as Photon has a way right where he wants it. With Finn having to walk in to get any part of it. Daklas now looking for a little bit more information. Going to drop a ward here at the start of the clear. And now puts his base timing in order as well. Marcoon's going to walk over this to be fair. So really well timed by Daglas, who we talked about his pathing being a bit of an issue in previous games. As Marcoon stands here, Vitality fully aware. Yeah, and this is the power of one singular ward, right? I'm not sure who actually managed to drop their ward onto that first Raptor camp, but now it's going to turn into a chain of information, right? They know that Marcoon is on the Raptor camp now. If they see him walk off and not reset, then they know he's also going to Krugs. So this allows Daglas to walk up towards the top side, maybe find an angle onto Finn who has stayed up here for a while, even with this ward, maybe you blow Ghost. It's a small little wins, right? That's what you're really looking for. And more clears as well. Daglas has the options because he's got the information as a fit looking for an out trade here. You gotta hate Cassante, don't you? Mm. Well, Photon is just getting the fair end of it. The flip back would have been a kill too. And remember, these are ghost laners as well. So no split reactions from something like a flash. As Daglas now trying to get up here, but he is spotted by a ward. So Finn has to pay respect. Yeah, Finn will pay that respect. Uh, Photon felt some of the pressure that Cassante can still bring in lane as Com. Ghost. Remember, no cleanse. And there's good damage coming out as well for Kazi. This could just be a kill. Com flashes away, he's healed up, but he's dead. Kazi with first blood and the cooking from Vitality is searing up a beauty. It's been a couple of years since Tom Kent just had the Valor attached to his W his element now. So until that level six comes through, can be picked on like that as Marcoon is just about going to dash away from the Vault Breaker of Daglas and the 2v2 comes to fruition for Vitality and they still have their flashes. They blew the other summoner spells. Botlane can be abused again as Daglas. He's going to find out Marcoon. Here first, I mean, this is a little bit greedy from Marcoon, considering yeah. that for Finn, even though oh, he walks Finn. down in this 3v3, you've got the health bar advantage, but video flashing away. That's a small win. Ghost already popped oh. here. He's over the wall. Pop Blossom, he comes in early! Splits the two and sends down one from Vitality. You're going to make that another for the trade coming through. Is huge. Is now for Daglas running away. He's going to get him out of there, which means Finn is left standing. You've got to remember that Photon here getting that true damage on the Snip. Snip is just as easy as that. Okay. A lot of dopamine for Larson to find that ultimate. Sure. Photon, though, one of our highlighted win conditions in this game, just picked up two kills. So that's not necessarily ideal, even though the skirmish looks pretty good in the initial. I'm not sure if Kazi and Hillisang ever managed to find a base after that 2v2. Remember, Comp has teleport, right? So he can really cheat a lot of tempo yep. if he dies early like that. So this might be a situation. I mean, guys, just take the L. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, it's fine. They should be able to clear the wave and now reset anyway. So still feels good. Get some of this in. Marcoon, he's going to return to the top side. Start up these grubs. Daklas is on the side of the map, but VTO, he's hovering bot. He's setting up vision potentially for a dragon takedown uh, in the offing in a few minutes. Let's see exactly how this starts off, because it's Marcoon getting in the face of Daglas, right? And he's maybe expecting Finn to be here a little bit sooner. Yeah. It's not really the case. VTO is forced to flash so he doesn't get Pathmaker backwards into Larson. That's good. And then Larson just sees the angle over the wall, right? He's expecting uh, the retreat path, and they do go that way. Vitaly, it starts to look pretty bad, but then Photon's damage ramps up. Daglas is able to, as well, get away on one HP. And all of a sudden, a play that looks super hopeful for uh, the side of Rogue looks really damn good for Vitaly as the kills go into the right places. Yeah, that two kill Gwen. Okay, brilliant start here from Photon. And it's always watching the flashy play. I think everyone at home will be convicted of the same as now the knock up is coming through onto Kazi. Flashes away, Zoelis. Great little starter here, getting the summoner out of Kazi and giving Comp this push and right of way in the bottom side again. Yep, Kazi is punished there. Will lose his flash, but Vitality overall, looking at where laners uh, are assigned at the minute, should still be able to pick up this dragon. Marcoon doesn't seem to have much interest. Uh, and like we kind of mentioned, whilst that play uh, for Grubs is going on, a little bit of, you know, 
not necessarily deep vision, but enough information available to Vitaly to know that this is a pretty free pickup on the trade. And while we look at that dragon on top of the early game, I mean, it's a success all around. I mean, we have seen the road trade up on the top side, give one over to Finn, but who cares when even despite that flash being burned, Vitality are winning out through this bottom side. Vitality are winning out through the top side. Mid is looking good as well with a small gold lead. Jungle the only disadvantage, but it's nothing to speak of. Vitality up 1,500 gold at the 8-minute mark. I and mean, when we talk about the early games not being as clean as anything, I think we can say here in this game, we are seeing a much better opening, considering that now they can just chill out. They've opened yep. up Dragon on a twisted fate side of the rift. And this dude has level six now. He can go anywhere. Yeah, and this is where the game starts to get a little bit scary for Rurik, right? I mean, sure, Comp is going to have as well as his ultimate at his disposal, but at the end of the day, Vi, Talia, Kazi, need to work. They can all pop up anywhere. Finn, not going to die, but just gets hit in the face. And again, who knew sewing could hurt that much? Yeah, Markun will be here to uh, back up Finn if there was an opportunity for Vitaly to go for a dive. They're not really looking for it for now, just poking and prodding getting more information out from Vitaly, and this is a much more meticulous approach yeah. from Vitaly, it has to be said. Rogue, not far enough out of the game by any means, 10 minutes in, that this is going to be a problem, and again, I don't know how to put this any other way than as blunt as they have small dots, so as long as the Nexus <laughs> is alive. Uh, exactly. The game is still playable. Uh, we'll eventually get to a point once those stacks come online, which my eyes are bad, I think that says 74, so still it does. a little while away from Hang getting on. to that next upgrade. How close were you to the screen? No one can see it at home, but you put your face <laughs> right up against that. Hey, look, man. You, you <laughs> don't, got don't see me. Eat more carrots, honestly. <laughs> Finn might have an engage here. Photon flip back, actually, with the all out. Yeah. He definitely does. Under turret, though, Heartbreaker, and Photon locked up. It's a shutdown, and it goes over to Marcoon's Viego. Yeah, it feels really good for Rogue, right? Off the back of the bounce back, where uh, it could have been Finn getting dove. Yep. Marcoon finds that lane gank, and... Vitality don't really have an immediate answer for now. You can see Zoellas and Comp are just sitting in this middle brush. They're very safe, so a free pick. Uh, as Again, speaking of... As he goes out this time. Every time, it's used to summoner here. Yep. Zoellas just takes a small trade back, and for Hillisang, he was off moving somewhere else, so couldn't be part of the play. Exactly. And it seems like Rogue just finding the small little bits and bobs where they can. Get this ghost. Feels nice. Now Kazi temporarily summoners. Summonerless. There you go. Got there. So if Rogue are able to try and pump a couple of numbers down towards the bottom lane, then uh, Kazi will certainly die. And if there is one thing that Twisted Fate has working at his disadvantage is that he is an incredibly squishy champion, even by some AD carry standards. True. At least he does some damage. You can see some popping through on Zoilis as Comp continues to get more stacks. And servers keep looking at this bottom side because as you see, as Kazi gets a bit of lockdown, Comp takes the rare end of it and it's pretty rough right now considering that Vitality, not the only ult available is Kazi's. VTO's up too, the semi-global is. He keeps hovering down towards Fog of War and Rogue have to mm. pay attention. Quickness comes through as well. Zoelli's going to pop that grey health, but again, the damage has been done. Zoelli's is low and mid has just been pushed out massively, yeah. so Larson has to react to that. Yeah, exactly. Larson, he's got to catch this wave, and now there's Fog of War for VTO. The pressure's really oh, on. Oh, no. And they can see Zoella's a split. Here he comes the in. boys. Well, where are you going to go? Mum does nothing. Quite rare to say. Daglo's going to get pop blossomed on. There's a trade, but Tangle Bar's flashed away from very intelligently by Hillisang. As Vitality are running for the hills. Markoon going to get gold carded as well. Good stopgap there. As Vitality are the winners. Getting more kills in the process. Yeah, they walk away. Only losing one member. And they're able to get both the bottom laners, so Comp's going to miss out on a little bit of gold here. I was very close to saying, if Vitaly aren't going to pull the trigger and throw numbers down towards the bottom side, I would love to just see them overload top and get Photon further ahead. Sure. Uh, but they finally do make the call, and uh, now Kazi is going to return back with the stack shift. And even though it's matched by the Essence Reaver of Comp, the fact of the matter is, if they're matching each other in a lane, the wave clear is going to be on the side of Twisted Fate as we look back at this replay. And Again, you know, Hillisang as well, great presence of mind, tries to knock up Zoella so he just can't get in range uh, to try and devour Comp. Didn't matter in the end and almost put him in a position where he's going to die, but cute flash out underneath the tower. Could have probably gone a little bit closer towards Kazi, but either way, still manages to make it out and very happy with the exchange overall. But I mean, for Vitality, even happier the fact that the flash was burnt by Larson so close yes. to the dragon. Exactly. We know, and it's been said by many casters, that 
Nico with Flash Pop Blossom available is the bane of the enemy team's existence, wondering where that engage is going to come from. As for Photon, he knows this time the engage is coming from the bottom side of his screen and he just walks it out, no problem. Are we looking at bot again? No, we just had a small replay of, uh, of the Nico Flash being burned again, just in case anyone missed it at home. While Rogue try and make plays up towards his top side and stop this game from speeding up like Vitality are so good at doing right now. Yeah, Rogue are happy to actually take the grubs. And you know what? If I recall correctly, Finn on PGL mentioned something about how they were happy to you know, try and play side lane if they had grubs, if they had five, six grubs, let Larson push out sides. But I don't know if sides are going to necessarily be an option. And, you know, in a game like this as well, where Cloud and Malin are the first two dragons, if Vitality don't roll Chemtech Dragon, which I'm, I'm waiting for Daglas to slay the dragon. There it is, they rolled it. Okay, well, now Vitality feel a little bit sore up about the uh, early dragon contest and Rogue. Really, sorry, Chemtech Dragon, you just suck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, true. Gonna feel really happy about this. Five grubs means that once they do eventually come online, right, things like making it towards those structures immediately after a play goes in your favor, yeah. and just those seconds that it buys you of tempo, it's things you can't really quantify by eye, but over time, it really can start to stack up and uh, become a major advantage. So Vitaly have to try and make the most out of uh, their dragon stacking situation and see if they can force Rogue uh, into negative positions. Again, side lane options, globals. They've got things to work around. And it's all about how Rogue are going to retaliate and also find some windows of their own to try and aggress onto Vitality. And I think as well, those windows being used to slow the game down a bit. Let's be real, like right now, Vitality looking for picks here and those globals that we're talking about being set up again. Fog of War used and you can see that Kazi's moving up and acting a little bit like a mid laner as he sits mid for the time being as well. Is the same option that Video has is once he disappears, he gets attention paid uh -oh. towards him. Now Larson's changing it up. <laughs> You can't always be a Raptor. Instead, you want to be a little rock. He's got 385 movement speed. Right Not now. bad for a rock with like four legs that look like little stumps. Oh, he can't take blue as the as the little rock. Can you take, you can take he Blastone can't. as a rock though, can't you? Uh, no, get yeah, out of it. Can... Your blue's <laughs> worthwhile losing the transformation, no? <laughs> Apparently not. Nah, he's four mana. He doesn't need it. But uh, Rogue don't feel like they need to contest this out. So... He's still go. going. Still going. <laughs> He's the little rock that could make a Disney movie about this. <laughs> Honestly. Oh. Actually, Disney, if you use that, please sub me in. <laughs> All right. Well, there was no fight over the Herald as Larson is finally going to allow the ruse to end. I mean, seriously, that would make about $500 million at the box office. <laughs> you imagine. Nice. Cute little rock. He's, you know, 12 year old. He leaves home from Krugs. Mm -hmm. Maybe League of Legends going in this as well. Yeah. I'll take 250. Yep, yep, and yep. a big adventurous story about how he made his life out in the open. As for now, let's pause on that because with Destiny uh -huh. being used, it stops the rock in motion. Heartbreak grab with the gold card, reaches at max range. And just like that, Photon snips him down. His life gone. Third kill for the top laner. And again, those globals coming in mighty handy. Oh, this just feels so bad. Finn's going to try and find an answer here. Can W through that. Ooh. Meteor might just be dead. Yeah, Off rip. I, I think so. kasante -ing. Don't flash. Finn's got it. Just accept it. Just die. Sorry. You know, you know what I mean. But yep. shut down. In game. Finn is big. I mean, again, the replacement top laner for Rogue, once again, showing his worth. Yep. And uh, BTO, again, you know, his team's making a play on the top side of the map. Can he realistically maybe get this tower on this window? Yes, but he has to not get jumped on by Finn to make that happen. And unfortunately, Finn feels like BTO's overstepped, and he has. Gets that kill. And at the very least, Rogue do find a little bit of reprieve somewhere. And that individual gold lead kind of claws back a bit. Maybe Finn, uh, sooner rather than later, can try and answer out Photon for a small window of time before Photon continues to scale into a very obnoxious side laner to deal with. Happy to see Vitelli using their tools. Yep. Happy to see that Rogue are trying to punish, even if it's individually on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, at least Rogue not just sitting down and, you know, accepting their fate. I think it was talked about on the AD. It's been a lot of a frustration, both as cast, as analysts, and everyone in between. Watching Rogue sometimes has not been the most exciting thing, not been the most proactive thing. But as you said, it is nice that here in this game, like, Markoon is still trying to, to match Daglas pound for pound. I think more so match these map movements by this global comp from Vitality. They've got their head screwed on quite well. As for Vitality, you can say the same thing there. They're ward tracking this game. has been really good in the early jungle. Yeah, and it really did set up Daglas to have a 
pretty positive jungle situation yeah. where he was mostly in the right place at the right time. Now, I think for Rogue, as I might have to take a brief pause because Larson. Oh, he's just going to die. He's going to need to work. Daglas gets Ooh. the kill, but they got Herald. Topside's just going to open right up. Yeah, so I feel like Vitaly could just be trading out. Nope. Scared. Got no. wards in. It's not that they're scared. They're respecting their tempo. They want to make it down towards the bottom side of the map. Mm. Photon didn't use his ultimate. Okay. Daglas did. So there's no engage tool. I know I have to go. I, look. No, no, but no, I think it does, Photon did. Be fair, didn't Photon, it? Why is it so Photon, dark? Does Photon's icon look really weird to yeah, anyone I think, else? No, I think Photon did. Uh, do I just have short term memory as well? Did, uh, anyway, I don't Daglas uses that. the ult 100%. So we know that that engage tool is not there. So dark. It is so dark. Look, it is It is coming off cooldown. Okay. Sorry, guys. I've got short term memory. Used, yeah, yeah. Anywho. Yeah. I was going to say, man, that's got to be a <laughs> cooldown. Otherwise, like. Vitality. What? Wanted to try and be... Oh, no, they stayed. And these, whilst we were trying to figure out what was going on yeah. with the icons, they That stayed. was more important so, than this. I wonder why, though. Because it does feel like maybe their thought process is once this dragon spawns up, Rogue will actually be in the mid lane on the bottom side oh, trying yeah. to answer. This way, they can maybe get two towers. Oh, Let's give it up, Berlin. Hey. Two charges. Sorry, Jamal was joining in. It's okay. I don't blame you. So Vitaly make a conscious decision to... Well, I would say give up Dragon, but the issue is... Mm. As we pan towards the bottom side of the map, yeah. that rogue have not done the dragon. Ah, so Vitality now have the opportunity to contest it and get third and maybe get a pick and a oh. kill because Zoel is almost dies. He has to flash for that. Heal was also burnt. Hmm. And look at Bot. Photon just snips it once. Down it goes. Okay. I mean, Vitality's map movements. You have to give them credit for how they're pushing and pulling these lanes. But also not to be too critical of the thing we've already been very critical about oh, with not Rogue. Not again. What, what is was, it? What was the cross map situation That's here? That's also true, That yeah. led to them not getting Dragon, you know? I know he was panned up towards the top side, so we didn't get a, you know, a first eyes look at it. It's, but it's a really big brain play mm -hmm. to bring on an earlier Elder Dragon. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kentex Soul we all said was useless. I'm huffing, no. I'm huffing what you're putting down and the yeah. Copium feels pretty good. We'll see. I mean, at the end of the day, again, as we kind of highlighted as we came into this game, as long as Smolder is alive and the Nexus of Rogue is not dead, there is Always an opportunity for them to simply win. So Vitaly do have to kind of put, you know, pedal to the metal, as it were. Comp is at 184 stats. So okay. he is not, bad. not very far away from the, um, 225. I think it was, it might have been Jackie Love over in Top Esports. 19 minutes mm. is when he reached 225. Like was that just constant fighting? Go uh, I mean, of course Jackie Love Top Esports. Top e <laughs> yeah. Of course there was. But right now, I think the benchmark is like 10 stacks per minute, right? Yeah. So 200 by 20 minutes. I've done math, right? Haven't I? Yes. Yes. Good. So around then, like, you know, we're getting to 20, we're at 200. People in the crowd love that. That's mm. crazy. Just cheering at comp getting closer and closer. Two items as well. So this is when the Smolder starts doing a bit more damage too. Just remember, when that rapid fire comes through, those Qs, of course, apply. And your ability to just spit from afar feels so nice here as the Smolder. So we'll keep an eye on those stacks for you. On the other side, we're just looking at items as well. Two items for the TF, two for the Talia. Two for the Gwen, who is just built for this side lane. Yep. Riftmaker, Nashes, or just built for auto-attacking as Gwen does. Look at that. Mummy! Dead. <laughs> Never mind. She can't save you from that. Wow. The burn was just huge. Thought Markun was out. Yeah, and I mean, Baron is really your next worry, right? Finn's ghosted up here. And I think Vitaly have complete control. I don't see a single ward on Rogue towards this Baron side of the map. And I think Vitaly know it as well. Finn, he's fine, of course. A path maker forward. Well, actually, Photon's got the damage here. Gold card's going to come through, but back in with the shield. That's nice. Comp runs as well. 215, by the way, 10 away. As Rogue, they lost that mid lane carry, or should I say Marcoon, but they didn't lose the mid lane carry. Very surprised with so many turn tools. Vitaly weren't willing to go towards the Baron there. Everyone's at two items. Very true. It wouldn't be the quickest, but at the end of the day, you've got a two item Gwen, and that kind of makes up for the fact that you have Twisted Fate without, you know, true damaging AD items. Uh, in the bottom side, but, you know, again, very meticulous compared to the Vitality that we've seen in the past. Yeah. I feel like the coaching staff, you know, they came into this one, they were like, all right, guys, look, we know you like to have fun <laughs> and run into the enemy team on repeat 24-7. Yeah. But this is like the, the, one, the one team, guys, just... Just this game. Just give it to us one game. It Don't do it. To, it has to with Rogue, especially. <laughs> yeah. So, 
credit to Vitelli for uh, shoring up that level of consistency. And, and credit to Hilly, still not dead. I mean, every game I see, like, 20 minutes when Hilly's not died a single time, people think it's a meme. But genuinely living through winter, it is a big reality, and Hilly has held off for the time being. So, again, props to this man. Yeah, now, once Comp does hit 225, which he has, actually, I misread that as 220. He has 230, so... Our eyesight today. It... <laughs> it's not very good. No, it's it's not. It's me. Uh, that aside, has hit that stack mark now. So is a big threat. Can't overstay anywhere. Comp. wall. Can they get anything from it? The Execute now showing up against Kazi. Great damage, actually, from Comp. Mid turret all for that Ooh. as the smite comes down. Markun ready to engage. Remember, a single reset puts him in billings. Ooh. As he takes up half his HP, trying to find something off the back end. Now for Larson, wants an angle too. But Vitality have taken up enough of a chunk. They've opened up mid in a comp that can move around the map. I mean, it's ever so important. Yeah, exactly. Now, Vitality, all of those comp options we were talking about. I mean, with the Dragon spawning in 60 seconds, you imagine they're just going to kind of put all their eggs into this soul basket. Or maybe they do the big brain thing. Recognize that Elder is the only thing that really loses this game for them yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And just leave the Dragon up. Maybe go towards Baron. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, Rogue, however are in a position, for Clary's sake, that they should be able to contest, right? They're mostly at item parry across the board, right? The only real major difference is comp right now, uh, sat on two items on a component, whilst Kazi has three full completed items. But of course, not only is it Twisted Fate's goal passive, his items are just naturally cheaper. So Kazi, I suppose, are officially in some way ahead of the curve, but the raw damage that comp will be able to put out is gonna be comparable. It's just about those gold cards from Kazi. I'll yeah. Be there to match. Because remember, we said at the start of the game that Comp does not have cleanse. Just burn the TP to get to mid as well, by the way. There's another teleport from Rogue. Uh, that's Finn coming in. Now, we talk about forcing this dragon or potentially the flipper Baron. Okay. I mean, Rogue really want to contest this. Yeah, Larson tried to find an angle. So Larson teleported from top to bot, and then Finn from bot to mid. He's a wolf. Finn should have been spotted by that blue wolf, right? Right. Oh, Larson in a good spot. Oh. Pop Blossom, is it coming in? It is! Down it comes, and now for the reset, looking in the back line, they found video for Rogue. The 5v5 is popping off as Photong about to get exploded, and it's the power again of the Smolder. He's been untouched, unhinged, and now as Vitality run for their lives, Comp is picking it all up. Somehow Rogue have just found a way. It's Rogue time, it's Smolder time. But more importantly, I cracked the code. Because Nico was in the wolf form, he didn't proc that blue ward in the bottom side of the map. I'm not oh, sure if wow. the replay goes far enough back. We can see like that blue ward there, it's not being triggered. So it's simply, they just don't get much information, I think, right? They're not necessarily paying attention to it. Otherwise, surely they wouldn't position like this. Either way, Larson finds the angle and Vitalia just on the back foot because Photon's the one that nearly gets immediately bursted out. They lose VTO way too early. There's no ability to find chase down or an immediate one kill for Vitalia and Rogue take over the fight off the back of that Larson flank. Is that a thing? I think, I'm not sure. I might, Because, like, I mean, when we toggled vision, we had we, vision there for was both vision, teams. But the thing is, the ward, the blue ward pings the, it does. the, the target it that does. it does, you know, actually and catch out. And it didn't out. ping. And it didn't ping. So naturally, you know, you've got so many things to be focusing on this dragon setup. Vitality simply might not have seen it. And that was a blue ward. That wasn't an art. That wasn't a, yeah. Um, yeah. a, a zombie ward. We'll talk about that in a second. For Rogue, as they run away, I mean, Vitality's still got the fight in them. Remember, Comp needs to be the target here as he flat flaps away. Mom in the choke. A little bit of damage, but Photon does find some aliens. And remember, after that last fight, Rogue looks so damn good, but Vitality have been ahead yep. of the curve for a while now, as that pick leads them to Baron. And not only that, they had to blow so many summoner spells Brilliant. throughout that fight that now the next couple of minutes would have been rough. It's going to get even rougher if oh. Vitality off the back of this pick are able to finish up the Baron. Larson. Flash, get him. <laughs> get that crud. Cars, he's sick of it. He's like, no more. Pop Blossom with no one All around. The Baron. Doesn't do anything. The Baron is still triggered, though, for Rogue. They move on, but at 4K, they don't have the damage to stick around and find out as... Vitality now, are they up a creek without a paddle? Markoon for the steal, oh. needs to get in, but it's secured. If only just the ulti out as Comp is now once again breathing fire, and Kazi with a gold card only buys a little bit of time. As Hillisang runs for the hills, but Markoon has his name as well. And that kills upcoming, upstanding. Hilly can only do what he can. Oh man. But a couple oh, of Barons taken more. away. No, it's not gonna be only some, it's all of them. All the Baron denied.
This is excellent for Rogue. I mean, sure, they might have lost the Baron, but getting so much gold in return is fantastic. Comp at one point was almost 2,000 gold, I think, behind Kazi or something yeah. really ridiculous. Okay. Now, just about ahead, so he's probably got a massive stack of gold to spend as he returns back to base as the replay comes in. And, you know, Kazi just has enough. Hillisang has enough. But they get caught in the ultimate, and BTO is just a little bit slow to the call to kind of retreat away. Gets caught out by Finn ghosting in. And now at this point, it's a four versus three. Smolder eventually does find the angle. It gets flipped down. The smite is pixel perfect. Yeah. But then at this point, again, you know, comp's not being focused down by a Hillisang ultimate, by a Daglas ultimate. There's no Kazi gold card. And even though there's no Tom Kench to protect comp, Frankly, if his front line is there and Vitality don't have the tools to actually lock him down, that is just about enough. When Vitality are playing side of the map and trying to overwhelm with numbers or use that pick potential, I think we're getting a really good insight into how easy it can be for Rogue to play a front to back, right? Cassante is becoming unkillable. The Ooh. Smolder is becoming so uh, kill worthy. Wh as now we're fighting again, Vitality, you're separated. Larson just helps pick up that kill immediately. Pop Blossom mainly be on Hilly, but for Vitality, they now rely on Photon. But again, this Gwen, even with a double kill, has a big task because Cop is going to press Q one more time. Sneeze again, Whoa. very yuckily with a triple kill. And the fight is done again. Giving away Smolder is again a mistake. Yes, it is. And this was almost worst case for Rogue, by the way, because Zoe is engaged. He wasn't even sound top of comp. He got gold carded. And still, Comp was able to survive throughout the burst because Vitality was so split apart. And Rogue take advantage of that fact again. Jamada, this is a strange game. I'm not sure what's going on because every time we get into a fight, different conditions arise. I'm sure we're going to get a replay once again as the gold is 2,000 ahead by Vitality. But everything that stays true in these fights, well, I should say the only thing that stays true is Comp on Smolder. Let's watch again because as you said, a lot of separation here from both things. Yeah, I mean, so well as, you know, he even gets shoved back again, right? But at the end of the day, Comp is just able to survive throughout all of the bursts because not all of that targeted burst from Vitality was coming through onto him. And at a certain point, he's just able to reposition with that Tom Kench ult while Vitality are scrambling to find, you know, some of those initial kills to the point where it just ends up being a, a fact of the matter that Comp wasn't taken out throughout that entire skirmish. And yep. Marcoon on this Viego able to siphon out a couple of forms and stay alive throughout the fight. Look at the damage. Ooh, video actually hitting some high marks, and you can see some bursts from Photon as well. It's ulti going to be negated, or at least negating Daglas. Kazi goes in with a gold card, and his TP comes through. Finn, remember, this guy a bit unkillable, but the teleport burned, and nothing gained onto Vitality as the Dragon Soul is there. Finn's trying to run into this team, and could be the game-defining play here. To try and get Rogue a second win. Now you question as the execute on your screen on those health bars we play this fight out a little bit slower. Yeah, Vitality, they have to take their time until they see the angle, but so well, this isn't gonna leave it side Larson. Oh, the Pop Blossom in the back line again is huge, but I'm watching Photon who moves into the clump and is still nice and healthy. He's running into everyone, caring not, but again, the damage from Comp hurts oh. so much. Vitality had picked off a little bit of that front line though. Rogue drop three, Vitality with one. Soul gained now for Elder on the board if this game keeps going as wacky as it is. Yeah, exactly. Six minutes. We'll see what Vitality can gain out of picking up this Soul. It's tier two. It's probably going to be an inhibitor. I mean, death timers, are they long enough for them to try and flip an end? Jake, really? I think they are. Really? I think they I mean, are. They do have a TM. This, this is, this no is Vitality. If they're going to break composure, it's right now. Oh, They're yeah. going to try and end. They don't want to be in this game with Smolder anymore. I mean, would Cleanse help you, you save go. the game? Maybe not. Gold card out. Wait, bro. Do get the execute onto Kazi, but under Tarot. Marcoon's up. Time. Daglas is dead, though. Daglas is dead. And as you said, Marcoon's up. And it wouldn't be a Vitality game without seeing something as spectacular as that. Can't blame them. Cannot blame them. No. Correct call. If it all works Good out, identity. They, they, exactly. This is on brand, but also I think it was the correct call to try and go for the end. They just lose out one, two more many members than they could afford. And now it's just the inhibitor that's broken. And they can look to try and attack another lane, probably top through mid or mid into top, whilst but, the Baron spawns the six seconds they, time. I mean, are they winning oh. this game? Wait, quickness. Oh. Larson could dodge Hilly. Nope. He's not going to find the mark. Runs out of juice. But with that quickness is this down, a problem? Finn is chasing this. Yeah. Finn doesn't have a ghost, but I th yeah, just kind of accepts. Can, I, can I come back? Slippery. Who's winning this game? 
I mean, Vitality just got into I, the I base. Think, I think we're winning this game. We're winning <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, the ah. fans, the audience. It's a pretty fun game to watch. Errors, everyone, you're right. Yeah. Video out with the Weaver's Wall. Now, what's the time? A top left, 20 seconds. Weaver's Wall going to be down for video for maybe the duration of the Baron. Yeah, I also think the other important uh, cooldown to note is that Larson doesn't have Flash, and Baron could be a fight that is ready to be had. So True. without that ultimate, he's going to have to get real creative like he did at that third dragon. So let's take stock of items before we get towards this potential Baron, though, because the setup's being shown on our screen. Vitality do have the presence in River. We have a four-item Gwen now with the Zonyas. Well, Stopwatch, or yep. the equivalent, the armband of Zonyas Hourglass, which also turns you golden. Bit behind is VTO, even though he's 2.2k gold ahead. Three and a half items versus three. But I guess Photon is just so damn big that that's why this guy uh -oh. is fast approaching full build. Now, Seismic Shove does come out, and for Markoon, he takes a bit of a chunk of damage on this three item Viego. But remember, he went Force of Nature third. Yeah. So he survives a lot more from these AP solo lands. Yeah, he definitely does. Markoon is a very, very durable frontliner. Vitaly is a relatively quick Baron. Our Rogue here. Quick enough. We're going to be 4K Hilly. Yeah, Quickness uh, zones off. I mean, this has to be a big steal from Markoon. And it's not acquired. Now for Hilly, he tanks up the damage, but he's Fine. dead in an instant. For the cost of Baron, not bad as Destiny. Oh, oh it's back oh. door o'clock. With the Baron, you can do this with Vitality. And now going to shut me up about who's winning this game is T4 in response. But no, it's, it's cancelled. Photon, you can keep going, oh. brother. As a level 18 Gwen. I mean, we put stock in this guy early in the game, and now he's delivering. Now for a oh, Vitality, no. but he's taking it. Oh, no. He's taking the Durham. Ah. Golden Jamada! It's over! I lost this mine! <laughs> they can't end there and Rogan oh, chasing down the remnants! Down. No, no surely not. I mean, Finn's run out of the all-out form. He might... No, it's too tanky to die. Did he kill a video trying to stop it. I mean, video's, video's gonna die for this, isn't he? He Leaky might. Sun. Comp's going over the wall with flat, flat, flat. Oh, and Daklas walked back in. Daklas, no, get fine. out of there! Oh. What the heck is now happening? What, now, what can Rogue get in response Great to question. all this nonsense? Larson what? doesn't have a mid lane wave to work with. The answer is a big fat nothing. <laughs> All right, well, Baron was secured. It's not on the map for Rogue to take, I suppose, at the end of the day. But now, this game's actually going to Elder. It is, isn't it? Oh. Dude, so Photon has TP. Yep. Bottom waves be managing by Finn. Rogue mm -hmm. are going to be able to open up mid inner. Like, let's put gold out of the question because it is literally just. Will Comp survive and get the free hit in a fight? In a fight? Will Photon get to do the same and nuke with his ulti? Inhibitor might go down, but as you said, Dragon's up in one oh, minute. Deep teleport from Photon. This right could be them. the breaker, couldn't it? Zoellis is low. Daglas ulti's on the back end. Photon needs to win the game here, Larson. You're not fooling Markun's anyone. Gone. And Markoon has been caught out. But Photon is hitting nothing but Comp at the end. A little bit of damage to follow through is for Daglas. That ulti's burned, but his flash is almost up. And Rogue, this is how it could end. As Daglas is trying to stall right here. Yeah, Daglas is. There's not going to be a chase down. I was wondering if there was an angle for VTO to teleport onto that bot wave, but. Vitality just take a breath for a moment as yeah, Rogue I need to almost as well. Bloody hell. overstepped. <laughs> Jesus. They're going to clear out this wave. I mean, Elder's in 50 seconds. It's going to come down to a bloody Elder fight. I mean, there's summoner spells across the board for the important members of Rogue right there. They're going to have their flashes. Kazi won't have his. There's yeah. likely not going to be a Ghost Photon. That's just about it. Everyone's going to have close but to everything. We do have full items here on the Smolder. Yeah. Full item Smolder. Maybe boots get sold if there's enough gold gained before this Elder fight. But 30 seconds, like, you have to start channeling everything in. Full item Gwen in the top side for Photon. Also, four items on VTO. He just picked up the Rabbit on Death Cap. So, a small advantage and a lot more burst available. As for Vitality, we've seen these global tools, excuse me, in action. Maybe not as proactively as we wanted to see all game, but they are still there. They still have so much yeah, pick potential. This, this is so scary for Rogue. This is so scary. They've barely As got any said. vision. They've really got to try and work hard to find a safe space to walk into. Hilly, he's being Hilly. Don't worry about that. And actually, it's just Vitaly, side lanes. Yeah, Vitaly are hitting uh, side lanes. I oh. mean, Destiny uh, is available. Kazi's, mm. wait, 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 wait. Destiny bot. He wants to bring Larson over. He definitely does. I mean, you can see Markoon's not even at the... No, it's fake no, Markoon. this is not. The Markoon's there. We're looking at Dragon in the backside. Oh, Ulti burn. No. Elder goes down to Rogue. They got comp. They so got the Vitality <laughs> as they run in. I mean, the kills are going over. Vitality are finding the kills. Markoon's left alive. 
And with all the yakety sacks and craziness in the base, Vitality just win the team fight. Yeah, I mean, Vitality even lost the Elder Elves Rogue that got it. But in the midst of the chaos, Comp had no opportunity to flash, and he still died even though he got devoured. Larson picked off Kazi on the top side. Smart from Vitality in the end. We might have questioned it, but it pulled Larson up to have to it answer did. to not lose much on the top side. But now, Vitality are in the base. The wave's been cleared, they though. No they wave. don't have a wave. Tank Do it. they care? They're just tanking it. Just tank it. Yeah, just go. tank it, guys. This is your game. <laughs> we have been... Back and forth for a while now. The players scratching their head, but it is still a vitality win. But Rogue made them work for it every damn minute of that game. That, that was a bloody fun game. You know, look, we often dunk on Rogue games, and we have for a, a few weeks. But they did stuff. But they, they did, did stuff, stuff in this in game. game. They did stuff in this game and they were able to go blow for blow with Vitality for a long time. And whilst I'm sure they'll be disappointed, they would walk away with the result that they wanted. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> as a motive as ever. Uh, vote for your key player of the game at LEC on X. Now, this one I'm curious as to where you guys go. Mm. Is it Photon, Douglas, or Kazi? That's difficult. That's a hard one. I mean, Photon I, I don't did know. a lot of damage, but... Yep. I don't know. A little bit, a little bit difficult, but that's it for me and Javada. We're gonna have a break after that. And speaking of after the break, we'll hear from Comp and Photon before, or Comp or Photon, excuse me, before we take on Mad Lions Coin with KC in our match of the week, delivered by Uber Eats. I will take it like a personal uh, revenge, obviously, but the last time was in the first week, so it was kind of special that win. Super I think we improved a lot and as a team as well. I think it showed in some parts of the games, but I still think we are a way better team than Winter. There's the ball, no flash for Patrick. The job finished by Saken. Cabo gets it, and KC will grab the soul. For me, the most beautiful is when there are uh, both teams shouting, like the fans one into each other. You do one good play, they shout, the enemy the same. One match that players enjoy more than the rest. KC! We need to win for the French community, for sure. We did it in Valorant with Casey, so we have to do it in Liga as well. They got lucky in NMA Master. For me, it's already done, but we will prove it till we stop playing them. They won't beat us again. Intro ever. Yeah, not bad, hey, not bad. You know it as well. I also know you can dance. You should join me next time. And yes, I feel like you've also deserved a bit of a break. You've earned it. Thanks. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Good job. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome everyone to the Kia Tilt Proof Challenge. We're here to see if four gamers can stand up to the test. Well, this. Oh! <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> ah, gas. I think I lost. I'm so happy that I didn't eat before.
bomb. No, remember, no plans. And there's good damage coming out as well for Kazi. This could just be a kill. Complex the way he's healed up, but he's dead. Kazi with burst blood and the cooking from Vitality is searing up a beauty. My bad, guys. My bad. Welcome back to the LEC. I'm Jeannie, joined with the Photon for an interview. Congratulations on your win this time around. Um, talk us through what that game was because I have no idea what I just watched. No, yeah. 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 It was. It was, uh, it was an interesting game for sure. Yeah, it was like. I, I think we made uh, some mistake on four track. I think okay, small though. Have, yeah. Kind of have to play perfect, perfectly. Mm -hmm. So, and then we failed that. So it was kind of third game. But you still, you still did it. You still managed to close it out. So congrats on that. You're also the Kia player of the game. Uh, so congratulations. Yeah, you are. So you should be proud of yourself as well. But when we're looking at Smolder, you guys were very comfortable leaving that uh, pick open. Why was that the case? Uh, I think Smolder is not like I mean Smolder is good champion, but it's not unplayable against this gem. <laughs> yeah. If you go, if you play uh, kind of perfectly, like four drag and posting nature, mm -hmm. and then can play against. Yeah, you guys played against it indeed. So thank you very much for the interview. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be heading back over to the decks to you, Lore. So please break down the match of the week. MDK up against Carmine Core. Thank you so much, Ginny. And uh, in Tobias Samnida, Photon, amazing to hear from him, uh, of course, in English for once. But we have a match of the week on our hands France versus Espanita. KC versus Mad Lion Score. Guys, last time we had these two teams facing off against each other, it was not pretty. And I'm just wondering how, what it's going to be about today, because if I think of one word to define these two teams, it's the lack of discipline, sadly. Yeah, I think that's really what it comes down to, understanding when you have timings to play aggressive and making moves when you should, and not yeah. because you're getting getting bored, really, and just want something to happen. And I'm really curious to see how these teams have, you know, worked on their previous games and if they can come in with more controlled, smart gameplay today. Any mistakes that we want to point out specifically for stuff that we don't want to see today, especially in this matchup? Yeah, I think they had a lot of pressure on themselves yesterday. Their, their composition that they drafted was on quite a timer. Their damage profile, incredibly AD based versus a lot of armor. So they had to play it out extremely well, playing to bot side with bow end upset. So a lot of pressure. I hope they didn't put, them, put themselves in that kind of situation again. So I think this is a great example of you know, KC just being too over eager to make something happen here. We see Capuchard pushing out bot. He's soon going to have a timing where they can push out bot. Mm -hmm. They can even send somebody top to get another push. Essentially pushing both side lanes and then slowly rotate mid to take the mid turret for free when people are responding. But instead of doing that and really just waiting 30 seconds to have full control and get yeah. the mid tower with no risks, they walk mid in immediately, force Capuchar to TP in before he's even done pushing the wave to begin with. And all of a sudden, what could have been an amazing moment for them to grow their gold lead, everything falls apart. And I have a similar feeling with MDK, Aragorn, because yeah. we've talked about them in Reddit Check, this lack of discipline uh, that you can see with Alvaro and Elioya's relationship yeah. maybe not being as on point as it was in winter, forcing fights too much and yeah. not at the right moment. Absolutely. I think there's a plethora of mid-game options that you could look at in terms of places where they throw versus GX versus Vitality. Um, it's usually silly things like overreaches, trying to chase in topside, trying to... Um, rotate around but getting picked you know i remember mervyn and karma at one point in this gx game just getting picked inside and then eventually they throw away their lead and that's the thing they always have a lead el is always doing incredible right finding ganks uh, mid bot and top lane but it just mm -hmm. goes away what what is the expectation coming here today because we know what we want both teams to do we know that also both these teams are struggling right now in second week week of the of the regular season so things have to come together now proxa well, I'm curious to see how they come into the day because on the two replays we just saw, yeah. both teams made it clear that they forget side lanes exist. Like they basically just run mid yeah. and A ram it, forcing some random fight and hoping for the best. And if we're going to see the same from both of them today, 
We're gonna have a banger game with a lot of fights, that's for sure. We yeah, we are gonna have a lot of kills, we're gonna have a lot of action for sure, but maybe maybe not the results both these teams would expect as we are ready to get into the draft here. Bands of the first rotation on each side are drawn. No surprises here, I feel. Power pick still available. I think Ari is incredible at the moment. Yeah. Lots of Ari uh, attention at the moment, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it taken away. Zeri, really high priority AD, AD carry as well to take away. That can be paired off with front to back, dive, uh, whatever you want, you name it. Yeah, and I think for KC here, they can really determine what do you want to pick with the Siri. Are you going to take uh, a prior pick like the Ari for mid lane, or do you want to respond to the rail right away? Ari makes a lot of sense. Siri generally very scaling oriented, and with Ari and perhaps a strong early game jungler, you buy time for Siri to scale. Yeah, and I think you do have a bunch of options into the Ari global. We've seen Annie rise in priority. You can play Nico, but that usually forces the rail to go bot side. Um, it's really what you have into the Ari prep for for Scowie right now. I think Nico would be a classic. That is a very him pick. You could also do Talia flex. I think that sets uh, Rel and Talia up pretty well. I'm curious to see here if Matt Lyons decides to log in the AD carry because as we can see, four ADs are already yeah. gone, Siri being picked, meaning if they don't log in the AD choice right now, mm -hmm. Super is going to have to go very Ooh. far down the pool. Actually surprised they decided to go with the Siver because I'm pretty sure they could have gotten that on the 4-5 if they wanted to, but yeah. I guess more than anything, they didn't have any priors uh, that they wanted to log in in other roles. They want to keep the role flex as well, so just taking the Sivir just to have something to log in, really. I was actually anticipating the Kaiser or something along these lines to match the dive of the Rel Nico, um, but they take away the Sivir and that leans itself more to front to back. But on both sides, we have a lot of dive in, right? You have the kill first combo with the Ari Viego as well as the dive from the Rel Nico. And it's always kind of something that you can expect on the side of both teams. They love these dive heavy compositions usually. What do you want to see on the last bands? We have Renata, Twisted fade what do you don't want to play against here well i think for kc taking something like uh, a nautilus perhaps that can start fights and make it easy for the likes of Viego and Ari mm -hmm. to jump in and kill a target, create a lot of space for Siri, could make a lot of sense. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to seeing them pick it on four if it's still open at that point. Uh, for, co for MDK, I like the rel a lot. It gives them a lot of flexibility because it makes a lot of sense for both jungle yeah. and support. And they just need to Ooh. determine, do you want to go for a really stable team comp with rel being the jungler and another support we can peel for Sivir? Oh, do you want to mash the Viego with some aggression? Worth noting that Lee is one of the junglers that are the strongest into Viego, and that can beat them early game, so it's a really smart ban from KC. So KC sniff out that with that Jax pre-ban earlier, they were fishing for the TF blind. Now, other blinds that Mervyn have gone for in the past include the Jace. I think nowadays this has more answers and stuff like the Wukong we saw yesterday, but that is something he's gone for before. You could also go Renekton. That works really well with the dive that you have, or Aatrox. Mm -hmm. I think... If you want a, a safer comp here as MDK, you legit just slam a freaking Orn. Like just lock in <laughs> Orn, lock in an AD jungler that can match Viego and help you power through the early game. And then you have a monster team fighting comp later where nobody can ever reach the Sivir. Aatrox is also a strong blind, slightly different approach. But I also think if they go for the Aatrox, uh, who's a very strong bruiser, putting Rel in jungle, and just building a more supportive comp uh, around it could also be an approach. You're the jungler here. Right, so I was wondering, what do you think about a poppy angle here? There's a lot of... Well, there you oh, go. There you go. <laughs> I think that's a lot of dashes. Yeah. Right, so I'm looking at the Ari, the, the Rakan, the Zeri, the Viego even, and you just stop so much there. My only question to you would be, how is the poppy Nico doing? I think it's... It's pretty solid. Like, at, at, at all times of the game, you have a lot of pressure. It's pretty easy for you to uh, deny the likes of Ari and Viego. Uh, with the puppy pick, you have a lot of burst damage. Uh, I think it, it does make a lot of sense generally and, and really helps them bind the entire comp together. R5 Renekton into the Aatrox. Typically, eight Renekton gets uh, priority into this, and it synergizes really well with the single target pick potential that they have with the Viego, Ari, Rakan, and the Renekton. So, cohesive composition for Carmine Court coming out versus more of a front to back slash dive from Mad Lions. What I like from Casey here is that. We saw a, a somewhat similar comp yesterday that was very burst reliant, but where they didn't actually have enough DPS to kill anybody. Now they have Siri, meaning yeah. that they actually will have a lot of DPS coming out of upset. And even if the game doesn't go perfectly, or even if they have a hard time killing whoever's in front, they can still play slow, and upset is eventually going to kill whoever's in front of them. I'm not questioning the goal of both compositions here. I'm questioning the ability of both teams to execute on these compositions. 
they need to play side lane. They yeah. need to play good macro. They need to push out, then move to middle of the objectives instead of just running mid randomly and forcing fights for no reason. Wanna give us a prediction, Aragon? Ooh, I think that's difficult. I think Mad Lions, Koi. I like Casey's in theory. It's a lot easier to play, so I would vote for them. But in terms of gameplay, I've liked Mad Lions quite more recently. Okay, let's see how this one plays out on the Rift as we send it back to the caster for the Uber Eats match of the week. Thank you, Lore. And as a side note, I will never get used to seeing Steak and you just casually fist. <laughs> Legend of a different time across multiple regions. Let's see if those legendary skills transfer to drafting. You heard from Aragon. Uh, you know, maybe a bit of an easier time in the early to mid game, certainly in terms of execution for the side of KC. But the later we get, the more I like what MDK have put together here. And it's time now for the Uber Eats match of the week. Now, Dragos, both our teams find themselves at one and three. Not only is there a lot of pride on the line here, but a lot on the line when it comes to actually... Uh, <laughs> Not only is the pride on the line... <laughs> but there's just a lot there's on, the a win on the line. There's a line. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much. Wins. That they do. I think for KC, obviously, trying to recover from was... Hey, Draco's Betty. Um, trying to recover from a disastrous winter split. For MDK, trying to recover from a disastrous first two weeks. Oh, yeah. Looking all kinds of out of sorts. The Dest did an excellent job of highlighting. This is a team that, you know, looks like the second best team in our league, was the second best team in our league in winter, and has just been skipping a lot of steps, getting a bit sloppy, even after some incredibly dominant early games. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the word for me when it comes to this team is, well, both teams is discipline. It feels as though when they get ahead, sometimes they don't always think through everything that they need to do, and they can jump the gun a bit, and they can overforce. Sometimes they get too desperate, too greedy, and it ends up opening windows. Now, when I look at these compositions, I do like the scaling team fight that Mad Lions Koi have drafted for themselves. Like, look at that AOE. Civ and Nico with an Aatrox on top of it. Oh, yeah. A Rel engage in there as well. The front to back just looks so simple to play, but you can see how much individual agency is on the side of KC. A lot of playmaking already. Mad Lions Koi bot lane off to a good start, but Ari, Viego, Rakan, a lot of backline potential threat, a lot of mobility. But then this Poppy is going to play interrupt when it comes to these dashes. Now, already we're seeing an invade from El Yoya. Start from Bo on his blue buff. El Yoya, creative pathing here, not the bot side clear with Pryo bot into invade. He says, I'm killing my rafters and I'm going into his jungle. He's and now gonna force Bo I out mean, as well. Level two Poppy Burst is no joke, right? On top of that, she has the shield. It is really hard to out-trade her right now for Bo. Saken can't do anything. Like, there's, there's not much that his jungler can do to assist. Bo is feeling confident. I mean, why should I be surprised? It's Bo. Maybe he just wants to get in for a cheeky smite press guy. fighting for mid prio maybe to oh. support here. Look at what El Yoya does with the Wolves as well. Puts them behind the wall, makes it difficult for that cheeky smite you were just talking about to even be an option. Now, the good news for Bo is he can still have the option of invading El Yoya's top side. The yeah. problem is upset and Targamus yeah. are left isolated. I was going to say, because he's not the one who suffers in this context. Yes, he's a tiny bit behind on jungle pathing, but he knows it's going to take El Yoya a bit of time to clear the rest of the bottom side jungle. Uh, it's his bot lane who suffers. Under look a constant at threat of a die. Look at what he is up to. Still only level two. Trying to see if he can get some experience back so he can still offer support for his bot side. But honestly, a lot of time wasted. Level three now ticked over for El Yoya. And they've created an effective split map for Mad Lions. Koi Targamus and Upset left isolated from their team. El Yoya sitting on a ward so they know what is happening. And Upset doing as good as he can to clear out this wave to make this dive as hard as possible. Crucial bit of vision there. Mad Lions, Koi. They linger too long here. I mean, the opportunity to play is fizzled. Certainly, Alyoya could have gotten uh, further ahead in terms of early jungle clear if he had just immediately gone to the next camp, but wanted to at least threaten the potential of a dive. That ward does now fade away, but Alyoya already on the way out, picking up the Scuttle Crab. On the next crash, perhaps they can go for it, as Bo really just needs to spend all of his time on the top side to keep clearing camps. You can see a slight deficit for upset in the Eddie Carry matchup, but frankly, 4CS, not the end of the world. Bo is going to be able to get Wall. He lost on the top side. 
Algoia basically stuck around waiting for the Scuttle Crab to spawn. This, of yeah. course, is going to heavily delay the respawn of some of his camps. His second spawn of the Raptors has now come back up, which is good news for him. But it basically allows him full control over the bot side of the map and early contest over first straight spawn. We'll see if Bo decides to use that advantage to try and convert it into an early grubs. Maybe even just going for the level 5 spawn. You can see he's securing the Crab for himself. Now he still has his top camps to clear. But overall, Bo should be a little bit ahead of the clock of Alioya. You can see him now ticking over to level 4. As once again, Alvaro looks for another play. Alvaro fishing. Upset now going to punish at least a little bit. Raw much more favored in the early trades in terms of tanking. His excellent charm from Seiken, but Freskawi dominating in the trades thus far in the lane. Just shout not out. be able to force Seiken back. Shout out to him, because he has had a great laning phase this split. Last split, I was skeptical about his laning and level in the ALEC. In playoffs is really where we saw him shine. But so far this split, yesterday on the Orianna, he was absolutely dominating his opponent. Today again, he's getting the big better of Seiken already in the 1v1. So huge credit to him and his growth uh, in such a short time here in the LEC. And now we need to see what he does with his TP. He can just return to lane, invest that in himself, and he will do so, knowing he can just further press his advantage. Could have chosen to save it with this wave where it's at. Probably would have been okay. Now just pretending to be his AD carry. I think a ruse that won't work because his AD carry is visible bot lane. But obviously picks up an early Hextech alternator and already Saken forced to pick up the old magic mantle, putting him on the back foot in the matchup. Yeah, I mean, as an Ari, you, <laughs> that's a really not fun item to have. Well, yeah, sadly, this is a game where like, you look across and you're like, I would love to build items, but if I don't build Merc Treads very quickly, I will die over and over. Yeah, I mean, uh, you definitely don't love building Merc Treads on the Ari, that's for sure. But uh, the fact that you have that Hextech alternator already gives you so much power if you're Friskawi. So good stuff from him. Overall, though, we look at the state of the game, still dead even in terms of gold. Small advantages being accrued for MDK in both mid and bot. But conversely, on the top side of the map, advantages being gained for Bo and Cabochard, thanks to the additional farm and the fact that while that pressure is being put on up Centargmus, obviously Mirwin left to his own devices and doing what he can into what is a pretty tough matchup against Renekton early on. Certainly early on. Once you get a few items under your belt, we've seen how much more impactful Aatrox can be oh, yeah. in the mid to late game fights. Not that Renekton can't find those angles, but maybe as Cabochard gets a bit more gold into his back pocket with the focus on top side, he can start to pull ahead try to create a bigger advantage than he already has. It's that early dragon we talked about, but Casey wants to contest it. Stun going in. Nice spell shield coming in from Zuba. Upside on the backside, laying down a bit of fire as Saken. Now alting in, but an instant wall bang coming through. Frescaui now needs to get out in the 1v1. Honeyfruit might be enough. The ulti coming in for the root. Alvaro there to body block. Nobody going down on the side of Mad Lions. Koi clean thus far. Upset desperate to clean up. Oh, he just wants one kill, but he cannot finish the job. Targmas going around the corner. They have to be careful about over committing here. Pushing in the wave is important, but KC walking away empty-handed. Saken so close to getting a kill onto Friskawi with the reset on his ultimate. KC could have gone for more, but Friskawi with incredible patience holds onto his flash until the very end, knows that his ultimate is available to give him the shield and buy him time. Only at the very last minute is he forced to flash away. It is MDK though that will walk away with the kill. No dragon though, and Bo already back out on the map and he's looking to secure himself the grubs. And Grubs, when you already have kind of this uh, pressure state on top side where you expect Kabashar to continue to win out, could mean a lot more plates for the Renekton. We'll see if it is just a single Grub. No, Bo gonna come in for a little bit more here. Meanwhile, on the mid wave, Frescawi just catching the wave, and you can see a bit of a reserved attempt to retake vision on the bottom side. Ayoya has enough information, or at least has guessed that Bo is on the objective and feels comfortable to step up here, but wandering into enemy territory, most certainly. Darkness canceling the back there, so a bit of a tempo advantage. Bo maybe they feel confident enough to force a dive here, but Recall already coming in for Mirwin. Wants to TP back on full health just in case the dive does come through. He has the TP available as well. Oh, he's going to commit it. This could be a great opportunity for KC to set up a play. Yeah, it's one of those situations where if you stick around, you know, at 50% HP and the dive does come through, you're probably dead. So you bat you back, you TP in, you catch the wave knowing that, hey, if they do try to dive, they have to execute perfect or I will at least get one kill back. Scowing now, moving into the river. Should be able to create a collapse onto Bo. Bo not anticipating this. Thought they had an agreement. Thought topside belonged to him, but Fresh Cowie now on the chase. Charm goes in onto the fake. Ulti going in, Bo immediately just ults out in response. Well played there by Bo. Overstays his welcome, ultimately. Given that Mirwin was able to push out that top wave, he was first to collapse as well. He was in some very serious danger, but he held on to the ultimate through hesitation of Friskawi having his ultimate as well. 
Still though, gold still remaining overall largely even between the two teams. A lot of skirmishing though, people fishing to gain that first major advantage. Yeah. You can see though, Bo with a decent XP lead when you look at the jungle CS, he's 20 ahead. It's really the kill for Elio that has been the oh, difference. Here we that go. said, here comes the Poppy. Step out, doesn't come out as well. And where are you gonna go, Sankin? That's the power of the Poppy. Clean mid play from Mad Lions Boy. Yeah, they make it look super easy. Very well played there by Elioia. They had exact information as to where Bo was. They just forced him out of their jungle. They knew he went into his bottom side. And you you rightly called it. The steadfast presence makes it impossible for Ari to play. Another kill secured for MDK. Yeah. One of the reasons that we really like seeing the Poppy in this context, we've seen a lot of games where once you get Merc Treads against a, a Talia or something, Ari can even dash into the stun knowing she has enough time. That is not the case against the Poppy, you are not going to be able to gain that distance as El Yoya. Coming through in bot lane, Ignite going on, Lightning oh. Crash goes in for upset if he sidesteps here, but he does not knock back on the Keeper's Verdict is big, and the objective set in the sights of KC, and with priority access, they're going to grab the Drake as well, so when you take stock, yes, Mad Lion's Koi are getting kills, but it's both early objectives to the side of Carmine Core. That it is. The gold continues to remain even in these early stages. When we think about the draft, one of the advantages of KC should, in theory, be that mid-jungle duo. You look at the damage portfolio, like Poppy, Nico, not really the highest damage mid-jungle duo. So you think that if they were to just run into Seiken and Bo, that that would be the problem. But you put that Poppy in isolation against an Ari, then all of a sudden that Ari doesn't get to leverage her strong mobility. Yeah. And suddenly that matchup really changes. So MBK. They've been a bit scattered in terms of where they put that early prior. Obviously, early on, they were really trying to create that isolated split map to allow Super to get ahead on the bot side of the map. They couldn't create a dive, but Super still in a great position. They then converted that pressure towards mid, and they do find themselves another kill off the back of Saken trying to contest this dragon happening early on. Mad Lion's quite setting up around mid lane. Keep in mind, there's still a few seconds until Saken's flash comes back up. Dreskawi's flash and Protobelt will be up first. This is essentially an unavoidable engage if Mad Lion's quite want to go this for it. deep invade. Are they sending up a dive onto Cabo Shard here? <laughs> the question mark things are coming through from KC. They've just told Supi, you'll get your 500 CS, take your time on bottom lane. We're going somewhere else. Bo wandering in, but he I don't think he's ready for the sheer quantity of MDK members going through. Preskawi stepping forward, really wants it. But again, every time Viego Alts is available, that's going to happen. Good body block comes in from Alvaro, but he might just give his own life in the exchange. No ulti coming in for the Viego, but he will get a reset if the kill goes down. Bo needs to drop if they want to win this skirmish, and they take him out. Mad Lions Koi playing it out slow. Alvaro now trying to step out to safety. Alti comes in, but Saken grabs at least one. Cabo Shard grabbing the kill. Wants to keep it going, but credit to MDK. Still managing to get something out of the play. It's a one for one in the end. Support for jungler. It is ultimately just a trade of kills. But MDK, I mean, this game is all about this jungle support synergy. Alvaro and El Yoya are moving around the map just looking for opportunities. We see them with a creative path into the top side jungle. They end up creating a collapse on the boat, and then the fight happens. Alvaro does have level six hit. He's gonna crucially body block the charm. Great positioning from him to keep his mid laner alive. Remounts, but then he's forced to flash away very early. Good stun onto two members, and then this poppy steadfast presence mitigating the chase potential of Saken. Means that Alvaro can then re-engage, interrupts the knock up there from Targamas, who still doesn't have level six yet. Ultimately, though, even though a lot of things went well for MDK, they played the fight mechanically better than their opposition. It ends up still only being a one-for-one -one because when Renekton arrives, there's not much they have left. Absolutely. And I think that, additionally, when you're going to... You have to be careful about continuing to throw this Nico ultimate down onto a Viego has ult. Getting his ult out, taking that cooldown of the equation, is certainly a nice to have. But when Frescaui is this far ahead individually, his ult just needs to have a bigger impact if they want to come out on top of skirmishes more than just a jungler for support trade kill. Yeah, I mean, that Nico ultimate can be so game-defining. We've already seen it multiple times this weekend. Seiken not quite able to find those targets yesterday when he was in charge of the champion. Nuke, on the other hand, today, multi-man ultimates. We saw single-handedly winning fights. It can be so important to make sure that it connects. And uh, so far... Friskawi hasn't been able to find those opportunities, but still a lot left in this game. Does have the flash available. Dragon spawns in about a minute and a half. I think KC can afford to concede Ooh. this one. Nice read on that play from Super Blind. Boomerang Blade just anticipating the back from Upset. I'm not even sure if he saw Upset parkour over the wall, make it out to safety, but delaying that reset does give a small tempo advantage, at least in the bottom lane. Is everyone getting a bit more comfortable in these trades? It is full completed item for Cabo, though, against some Tabby from Mirlin, or plated steel caps, excuse me. 
showing your age there, Drake. Bruh, I can't help it. They're tab <laughs> they were tabby for so many years. It was illogical and silly, but Zupa, uh, while he kind of called the play before, this is absolutely terrible. Zupa caught out, running for his life, trying to sidestep, but upset. Ready this time to commit the flash to secure the kill, and that was just a complete unforced error. Yeah, I mean, super overextended in the bot lane, forced to use both the summoners there as well. Big blunder costs him. Casey actually starting to build a bit of a significant gold lead here, as we can now see that advantage mounting for both Cabo and Upset. Sets themselves up nicely for the Dragon as well. Upset wants to get a quick recall in alongside Saken. Saken has the TP, though, immediately going to use that into mid lane. If they can get control, gives them easy access into the bot side river. Let's see how MDK respond. Neowen does have the teleport to get himself involved in the fight alongside Cabo. Could mean a huge brawl here, but that malignance pickup. Very crucial for Saken, especially as he now ticks over to level 11. Excellent highlight, Betty. Prescali only level 10. Yes, he has an extra extra needlessly large rod, but the completed item difference is non-existent. Saken also has the boots too, which is going to make him a much harder target to pick off. Initial oh, CC nice. is good. Piling into Alyoya. Steadfast presence. Just steadfast enough, but Saken says no. Flash alts commits the charges to finish the kill, and now it's Casey's access to the Drake. What was funny there was... Alyoya seemed comfortable because he saw Saken on the mid wave, which means that he had a rough idea of where Saken was. He was not expecting the stun to come through from Bo. You can react to the knockup from Targamas, but that stun was something that you couldn't really do much about. But by him connecting it, it then set up for the knockup from Targamas and then the follow up from Saken. Now, the ultimate here from Chris Gary. Nice to finish the job, however. Saken's got back up on the way, just barely enough movement speed to come out. Targamas coming in with the shielding as well, the battle dance keep his mid laner alive, and now the flash, the stun, committing just to make sure that it doesn't connect onto a clone, but the root onto Targamus is clutch. Going through bow, hitting Targa, stopping the kill from coming through. Trader flash is there, but for Scowie not having his. Think of Nico very similarly to Kennen, not overly reliant on the flash, sure. but it is very valuable in those fights if you just have that extra mobility. First tower of the game gonna drop in favor of Super. He's still sitting in a very comfortable position. Both these hyper-scaling AD carries are going to be crucial as we get later into this game. Upset so far has had a solid split, but as we've already highlighted, both these teams find themselves at one and three. Those performances have not been enough to convert it into a carry performance, but one of them is going to get a second win on the board today. We see that the Rift Herald is now alive, and you imagine that's the next objective that both these teams have their eyes on. KC, Dryers Bloom, two members committed. Trying to fight for mid-priority. Prescow is able to grab a little bit. They've reassigned Supa into the mid lane to try to clear out those waves. Excellent oh, poke job. damage coming in from Saken. Doesn't have to full commit yet, and Bo already feels comfortable to start the objective. Doesn't want to linger for too long, however. Elioya does spot him, but doesn't really have the angle to set up the wall stun. This is smart. I like that. Contest that space right there. If they're clearing out the vision, it makes it harder for MDK to actually walk up towards the objective. Now that they've cleared that out and have control over that space. They can now move back and all five members have been brought up. Aatrox pushing in the bot side of the map, has the TP, but it looks like that MDK are going to concede this one over favorable push. I imagine that KC is going to immediately move to top side, start threatening that tower, maybe even commit towards a second Herald tower top as well, and trade the fact that Mirwin continues to put pressure on the bottom lane. Kabashard is going to lose a little bit of CS for that play, but doesn't want to commit the TP too early, knowing that Mir 1 can TP to the top side of the map, stop this potential push, and make give a man advantage to the side of Mad Lion's Koi. Gets there in time, though, to clear out most of the wave. And right now, Bo and KZ just coming out on top. Have to be careful about overcommitting here. Stun on the target miss is good. And now, Cabo just chasing down Mir 1, trying to stop the TP from coming in. Recall there as well. Dominus now used in the picture-in-picture, picture, you can see. Everyone trying to use that extra movement speed will be able to run flash for flash trade. So who does have flash? Uh, Alvaro. <laughs> Alvaro has his flash. <laughs> Everyone is down right now. Fortunately for most people, two minutes until the next dragon spawns. Betty, there's one rule on Mad Lions Koi versus Casey Nash. Is that when your flash is off cooldown, you have to make a play. It does seem you, that way. The yeah. longer you hold on to flash, the more embarrassing it is, really. It's true. So Alvaro. We've got our eyes got on time you. Time's a tick. <laughs> time is a ticking. <laughs> Now, this mid tower is something that both teams would love to unlock, naturally because it gives you so much more access into the enemy jungle. But the good news for KC is they have the Herald, so it's an easier one to siege. But Sivizeri, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, these champions have a lot of wave clear, which is inherently what makes Yay! it so difficult to siege onto these mid towers. I know what you're thinking. Uh, you wanted more Mad Lions, Koi versus KC. Well, you're going to get it in the form <laughs> of an increased game time as both teams 
in a world where control mages are gone, AD carries are now picking up the slack. Orion is getting banned, Azir is disabled, and as a result, uh, wave is coming from the AD role these days. I do love the enthusiasm from the KC fans. I do question how much harder they've made it to watch the game with their approach. Still, dedication away. has to be admired, yes. You have to show the, you have to show the jerseys to the players. You have to understand, Vinny, it's not about the game, it's about the cause. I see. It's not about being a spectator, it's about being a fan, showing up for the team. Wow, profound. Inspirational, even. Yeah, it's a little more hardcore than I Did you yeah. coach a baseball team when you grew up in America? No, no, no I would so, never have coached so. anything. Have you played video games with me? Yeah. <laughs> I shout obscenities and troll. <laughs> I would be the worst coach ever. It would be very entertaining, though. <laughs> true. True. I'm open, you know? Uh. Wonder got messages from team managers asking if he wanted to play support. I'm, I'll be offended if I don't get some for coaching it for a comment like that, Betty. I, like I will flame your players. You know, <laughs> without information or context, He's you let me know, team. We have the clip of him being the anger translator for Hans Sama. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> Do that again. Uh, Harold's going to be used mid. Will this be the mid tower unlocked? Civet, not yet here. Of Harold. Are they going to mount up and get the charge in? Okay. Happy to just have a little bit of damage. I guess felt like they wanted to get mid prio at so least for a brief moment to get access to the Drake. Thing for KC here is no one is bought, so Mirwin's been given the opportunity to push that wave in. Does give them an avenue to collapse. Bo is cautious of it, but. He still has that angle, and look at Saken's positioning here. Caught awkwardly in mid lane, but Super has a very easy angle in, so it's a numbers disadvantage for KC. KC uh, have no real reason to be here right now. They really want to catch that bot side wave. They're conceding a little bit of resources already just to show up. Saken's Mirwin's already got a good very angle. Awkward. Yeah, MDK much better positioning around the Drake. KC now respecting that bottom wave. Saken now just fishing, trying to stop the ult from coming out. Incredibly well played on the pick to finish the job. Elioya's there, but it's too little too late. With Nico out of the equation, KC just get to walk in and take yet another objective. And again, the gold has looked close for most of the game. It's now only a 2k deficit, but KC keep trading up. I mean, that was a really good choice from Saken. That he realized his positioning was awkward, and so he's trying to find an angle back in, but he realizes he's being zoned by Friskawi. And it reached a certain point where MDK was so focused on keeping KC out of that bot lane tri brush that it was now Friskawi that became isolated. And the play wouldn't have happened if it weren't for Targamus. He recognizes, hang on, my mid lane has found a pick. He's quick to follow up. The chain CC is good, and they convert it into a kill, which nets them their third dragon. And credit to KC, because if they don't make that play, MDK just get the Drake, they push them back because Casey didn't really have a good angle to play from. If Saken and Targa don't work together to make that pick happen, good heads up performance there. A bit awkward on the setup, but making it work in the end. Upset is definitely overextended now on the midway, but the follow up isn't quite there. Targum is going to whiff on the initial engage. Alvaro, they look to follow up here. Knock back there, Ooh. unstoppable from Bo, but that auto follows. Bo holds on to his flash and ultimate way too long. Nice play there from Super to guarantee that last auto in, connecting the Q as well to chunk out Bo's health bar. The problem for K MDK, I should say, is it's not really much for them to convert it into. They have the rise on that top outer tower. Casey had already secured the bot one. There's a big wave that I think Saken should go and catch right now. But instead, he wants to be near his mid lane to offer that support. Camo actually going to be here to answer. In a situation like this, you would anticipate MDK even threatening a potential dive. Something he's going to have to be cautious of, and already you can see him going back to base as MDK set the rise actually on the no. mid tier one. MDK want to dive mid tower or at least try to take it down. AD carries have too much wave. <laughs> AD carries. <laughs> this is a casual lightning crash, auto four times. And like, the scary thing is, if that fight continues, I don't know if it favors KC. Zeri really doing a lot of work already. Has built effectively no damage items. This it's is so the, much damage. Yeah, Ace is built, yeah, this, it's so good. It's the build that we just see on, on Zeri's, and I'm like, where's all their damage? And they Where press R, and, and then they like, start pew pewing, and you're like, oh, oh, there it is. Okay, cool. My <laughs> mistake, sir. <laughs> I was all familiar that, yeah, with your yeah, game. That ulti <laughs> cooldown, uh, pretty big buff, turns out. She just has it every single fight these days. But here comes the damage. BF Sword now picked up for upset, working towards that third item. He's a big fan of the IE third. We've seen Navori come out as well, but really likes to hit like a truck there. Less worried about getting the E cooldown back up a little bit faster. Now Mad Lion's Koi. Oh, Saken is at such a strong point now. This Ari is going to be doing a huge amount of damage. Looks like he might be going for the Horizon Focus third, given that he's sitting on the Fiendish Codex. We'll wait and see, though. The, the Nico build is like, makes sense, but it's a little lower on the damage front. It's Bo could be in some serious danger once again. Knock there. He has Alton Flash again for the previous play, but the knockup. 
now he knows he has to burn at least some resources to get out of safety. He will be forced to flash an alt Alvaro. Now keeping a bit of pressure on the top side. Excellent footwork. Oh, Alvaro, nicely done. Touching everything. Not one, but twice. Yeah, <laughs> just making it look easy. Uh, Mad Lions coin now know that they have priority access to the objective. The sad thing is they've overcommitted on the top side, giving upset free access to mid lane tower. He is not overextended, overcommitted. As Targamus is there to cover. So, I mid mean, lane tower down. MDK, though, still haven't unlocked this top tier one. They were convinced that they could secure the mid tier on TP flank. flank. Casey want to keep it going. Set fast presence about to fade away. It's going to give Saken so much access. Trying to lock up Press Cowie. Press Cowie getting charmed. Ulti now going to come through. Stopwatch has it for a brief moment. But upset already grabbing the kill. Everything going wrong for MDK and KC. Writing is on the wall. It's there, Baron. A very different performance from Saken today. Yesterday, he couldn't find those angles, but on his Ari, he is connecting those charms onto his opponent mid laner, and he is shutting Frascari down, but MDK still have the Civet, a potential angle to turn this around. This is a bit of desperation now. Yoyo's still alive, so they want to go for the contest. Mirwin now healing up big. David coming for the Aatrox flat four, Q3. Yoyo trying to finish the job, but the stun is there, the shutdown. He's now leaping out to safety. Look at him go! Phase Rush taking him out of the equation. Mirwin looking like a proper raid boss, baby. Wrath of the Lich King here near the pit. I mean, they stopped the Baron from happening. Credit to MDK. Seiken ran out of ult charges and his flash wasn't available. Mirwin. They're sitting this on a ward. He's just playing interference <laughs> right now. He's denying the ability of Casey to get those resets. And look at the mid wave right now. It's super pushing in. Trying to put some pressure onto that tower, but he needs to get a reset for himself. Not going to overstate. The dragon now becomes the big point of contention. Super needs to get that reset off ASAP. Well, let's look back at this flank plate. The TP coming in. I thought it was the Renekton, but it was actually Saken. And instead of going on the Poppy, he turns immediately onto Frescawi. He knows that he's the real damage threat here. And then with Upset coming over the wall with that ultimate, they find themselves a kill. Quickly convert that onto Alvaro. And obviously the Baron looks easy pickings here, but the problem is Super is still alive. And look at what he's able to do. The focus comes down onto Mew, and they don't actually have the damage to shut him down. Saken then gets traded back on in favor of MDK. A nice flash from Alyoya takes him to safety. But we got to get back into the action because the Dragon is now up, and both these teams are ready. The one's starting to look more and more powerful in the fights, though. They have to make sure they do a good job of keeping him off of the back line. Good news is the Ari as well as Zarya are both hyper mobile. Similar situation to the previous Drake. This time it's Mirwin on the flank. Could be much harder for Saken to find that angle. The bot wave is in a very awkward spot right now for KC. They're leveraging the fact that they have numbers in the river. Mirwin on the flank. Can they catch Alvaro? Oh. Not quite. Plus the opposition buff fading away. Oh, yes, yes they, they can, Alvaro. What are you doing? Decent catch. Knockback comes in from Elioia. Focus now on the Drake from MDK. They know that this is the objective that they need to get, but they want to pull the trigger on the opposite side. The Drake goes down. Upset now trying to fight for his life. First guy, not going to get on anybody, but the carries on the back line. Untouched for now. KC dominating the fight. MDK. Might have denied the soul, but KC can just turn to the Baron once again. A nice ultimate from El Yoya to keep Bo out of the pit, but Alvaro oversteps his bounds. It gives them the opportunity to force the fight. Bo is looking for more. Uh, Mirwin should be able to get away to safety, though, and this is going to be a secured Baron for KC. A worthwhile trade for them. Looking to get revenge from Winter, take down their rivals, and a much needed win to regain that confidence for KC. And I gotta give credit to Targamus. This man is playing out of his mind today. He's so confident on these engages. The follow up over the wall once he knows the pick is secured on Alvaro. Fantastic. Oh, yo, yo. Oh, knocked I somebody spoke. out. I thought it was connected onto Bo, but it actually went onto the Renekton. But look at this engage. You highlighted Targamus. He connects onto Super, doesn't have the summoners available to get out. And the follow up from the rest of the team was clean. KC, they're playing coordinated. Frustration on the faces of the Mad Lions coaching staff. And yep. elation on the side of KC. Naturally, why wouldn't you be? You're in a great position now. But it all comes back to discipline, Dracos. We've seen both these teams throw from positions like this before. KC obviously look like they continue to win out on these fights. Upset is in an incredibly powerful position. The Infinity Edge is done for him. But the wave clear on Sivir. I don't know. Some old school fans may not remember this, but we used to have a long time civet player here in Europe. His name is Reckless, and uh, he used to be famous for the 500 CS civet win condition. Oh my god, the desperation angle. But that's what that champion does, bro. It wave clears, it buys time. Yeah, I mean, you're right. We've all seen it. Navori only made it better. 
Uh, and Supa just keeping those waves pushed out. It's gone. The wave. <laughs> you see the problem. So Casey need to split the map up. They cannot play yeah. a traditional 4-1. You have to kind of divide your resources more to spread this Sivir thin because it's the only real way you're going to get into the base. Yeah, when immediately ulting to get out to safety. Good respect to Saken and Cabo. Not going to allow that pick to go through. Rascali poking his head in as well. MDK, I don't think much is going to come from this Baron. Maybe not even a single... 200 two. left, right? Costs 300 for the Civet. <laughs> I'm, I'm warning you. <laughs> I gotta set these expectations, bro. <laughs> it's like bro. the Cassin in Twitch jam. 15 out of 60. It's literally that, yeah. The Smolder meme, 200 out of 225. I can see them all. They've all got that, like, 300 out of 500 Monka S. Yeah. <laughs> Here we uh, go. It's a slower game when Saber gets played. Oh, oh. Good pick. Clunch Flash from Upset is great, though. The follow up Upset now on a rampage. Baron buff still for a minute. Maybe they can get more off this. It'll at least be a tier wow. two, but the wave is already gone. Alvaro, he tested Upset and he said, I'm sorry, I pass these tests every day of the week. <laughs> A trade of summoner spells, mid will be unlocked. Another kill now with the numbers advantage. Look Have at Super's HP. Oh, you're not quite connecting on the wall. That's big. Now needs to run. What needs is to back doing? Charm comes through. It's fantastic. He wanted to punt them out. Targamus says not today. Bo now on a killing spree. Continuing to run forward, but discipline, the name of the game. They should just take the inhibitor tower and be content. But the but cannon minion won't step up. Oh, it's Matt just need to wave clear. There's only 20 seconds left on this Baron. They had time, and instead, what? We saw Alvaro try to force summoners out from upset. Sure, I see the idea there. But then in mid, El Yoya trying to force a play. I, MDK seem to be getting desperate, when I feel like they have the tools to stall. And now they end up exposing their base. That inhibitor is now unlocked. The good news is that the Baron has now worn off, but that's so point. Still there, Dragon spawning, 1 minute 15, and they're going to have to come out and fight Casey, who's ready to tango. We're in a situation where you're always going to have to step up the plate, always be ready. Giving away Mountain Soul feels like a death sentence. Bit of an awkward reset there on the red buff. Won't, amount or, uh, won't matter too much as we look ahead. Supa sucking up farm. Only 20 since we last checked in on him, but getting closer and closer to what I assume will be a Lord Dominix. As both 80 carries resetting the red buff on accident. <laughs> Someone get the handshake meme. Here, the next setup. Wave pressure already in favor of MDK in the bottom lane. Here one pushing out as well, 43 seconds. So it won't be about this wave, it'll be about the next one. But MDK hoping to catch Bo or someone else on the side of KC misstepping. Remember, both of these teams have had similar issues in the sense that they just lose discipline in these crucial moments, that they overstep, that they make these mistakes and get caught out, but it is KC who are playing cleaner, exactly. who are punishing left and right today. I mean, KC's just being more patient, I'll be honest. They're waiting for MDK to overstep, and that's exactly what continues to happen. Seika now off on the angle once more for Skowie, looking for an angle of his own. Bo holding off on the left-hand side, the access into the river. MDK have some great angles to come from, the question is, can they actually connect onto the crucial targets? No summoners on upset. I think it's so hard if you're Brescali in this situation. Here when the poke now coming out, the charm, where's the follow-up going to go? Everyone trying desperately to get away. Will dash out to safety, forced to use the ultimate in a little bit early, but MDK can just regroup here. They've lost control of their own jungle. Just a bit of vision covering Saken, but Saken no ultimate. No spirit rush in the fight to come. Brescali still has his. Keep your eyes on that Nico. Might just be the difference between life and death in these plays. Oh, yo, if he connects on the Keeper's Verdict, but I think he's just going to let it expire. Reduced cooldown now, just generating a little bit of space, but his Cabo Shard on the flank. Charm now going in. Frescali only able to connect on the one, and that's disaster! Upset can immediately punish, but keep your eyes on Supa. Supa's still free to auto-attack. Supa raining down damage, but it is not enough! A GA there for Upset, the luxury item complete just in time. Oh, yeah, going to send him packing back to the base, but he's going to be the one sent home in a moment. It's K looking to close. Bo is on the hunt for El Yoya, but he's just keeping him busy. Casey have their eyes on the Nexus and a massive win against their rivals. MDK is going to fall today and KC will get their second win of spring. Incredible performance from KC. Saken and Targamus together, Upset bringing it home. A beautiful game most certainly. They make sure El Yoya cannot recall a bit of vengeance for the winter performance. KC, you said it, Betty. Their second win on the board. Big smiles on the faces of KC. They have to be happy with that one. Very controlled, largely punishing the mistakes of Mad Lions Koi. Saken, a huge redemption performance from him after yesterday's gameplay. Finding great angles, shutting Friskawi down. But you said it, Targamus. 0-0-16. Zero, zero, he was he involved was in every single kill. All right.
Your choice for key player of the game, Bo Saken upset at LEC on X. The carries are always going to get the votes, but the support today interrupts the Elioia charge, stops so many Frescali engages, spots people on the flanks. Him and Saken together, not the mid support duo I had my eye on, but I was wrong to feel that way. We're going to head to a quick break when we return an interview with Capo Charge. Red Bull gives you wings. the power of the poppy uh, while he kind of called the play 
before. This is absolutely terrible. Zuba caught out, running for his life, trying to sidestep, but upset. Ready this time to commit the flash to secure the kill. And kill Bobby, kill Bobby. Bobby, I flash, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm not rich. I'm waiting, okay? Kill them all, kill them all, kill them all. Good fight, good fight. Okay, good fight, kill them all, kill them all. Go Nash, go Nash, go Nash. Zuba's still free to auto attack. Zuba raining down damage, but it is not enough. It's KC are looking to close. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. CLEC MGNE joined for with Kawachar for the interview. Merci beaucoup de m'avoir rejoint pour l'interview. Sorry, I can't hear a thing you're saying. Yeah, they're of really great fans, loud. So. <laughs> they're so excited for you guys. When I'm really happy as well. Two wins already, two weeks into the split. Talk us through the changes from winter into spring because you guys finally look like a team. Um, definitely, I think on the two wins we had like to do them quite co under control, and even against G2, the early game was going like very smooth. So we have like um, really improved, I think, on playing like on vision, playing around the objective, standing on the right um, moment, and uh, yeah, it feels great. Like in in winter, we started uh, so roughly. Like right now, we can really look ahead and and see ourselves like um, going to the playoff. Is that the goal? Speaking of looking ahead, you, you want to be in the playoffs. You want to play your Urgot in playoffs? Is that it? Yeah, it's going to come back for sure. But um, it's, the goal is more than playoffs, obviously, but it's just because we did 10 that we're just looking step by step. But no, eventually we, we know we're capable of much more, like even taking the, the best team in Europe. And it just feels so nice to be able to give back to the fans coming here every week. Uh, yeah. Being just louder than everyone, like, uh, yeah, it it's just warms to the heart. Speaking about the fans, is there anything you want to say to them? In French, because, you know, they're here. Uh, merci, vous êtes les rois à chaque fois, vous venez, voilà, vous êtes tout chauds. So. <laughs> ah, vous êtes trop chauds, merci, merci. All right, they absolutely love that one. Uh, you're talking about Urgot coming back, so that's a pick that we saw yesterday. Might not have necessarily worked out the way you wanted it to, so when do you think would be a better spot to bring out Urgot? I'm always uh, seeking for information. Huh? Um, I, it's um, my job. I'm just doing my job. Yeah, I mean, maybe on. I got carried away yesterday, but um, like there are some spots. I think it's it's like if they have front line that, let's say we have the Nautilus and we have the Viego and we are trying to one shot someone. I think your guys feels really great in these spots. Yesterday it was not as good, but since like they are playing so many melee champs, you can almost always look to get a reset. Like we see Ari and Nico on mid lane a lot, and they are they are very like they're making Ergot pick better. Um, We'll see if we see it again. I feel very comfortable because, yeah, I was spamming it like uh, 2018, 2019. Like, it feels like ages ago. That, but... Yeah, that was like pre COVID. It was <laughs> a while ago. All right. Well, Please. you get to bring it out. And looking as well in terms of the team and how the performance has been, is there anything that you're particularly proud of from everyone in terms of being able to get this performance across so quickly? Um, yeah, definitely. I think what's, what's really good is that w we know right now we have certain teams that we are um, like we are really, really good on, and we can play against the best teams. And um, yeah, going into into the draft, like we can go with with much more confidence right now. Mm -hmm. Well, the team in general has been doing well, and actually, I will reveal the key player of the game. Do, do you actually want to guess who it would be? It's the the Zeri, no? The Zeri or who was it? It was Seiken. Seiken, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Player of the game. <laughs> I mean. You proud? Yeah, definitely. He's been stepping the, the hell up, so yeah, I'm really yeah, proud. Yeah, maybe, you know, next one's yours. We'll see. But thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, and we'll see you around. We're going to be heading back over to our casters because we have Dracas and Vedi ready to break down this, the next game. Not the second game, the next game. Next game's good enough. And honestly, as long as Cabo keeps picking Urgot like he did in 2018, 2019, we're old. We were around then. We um, I'll be happy. Days. I'll be happy. That's all I want. From the good old days That's when my Europe was winning things. <laughs> Didn't have to phrase it like that, <laughs> but you did. So here we are in the sad part of the day. Uh, no, I'm kidding. We're coming up on the next match, SK versus Team Heretics. This one is going to be interesting because SK, by all rights, should have won yesterday. Got in their own way, walked into a uh, Adam Olaf, which, as we all know, is a questionable decision. Yeah, uh, I see a smile on uh, Swift's face right now. But that is just a mask. <laughs> he patted Niski on the shoulder and he said, if you did what you did yesterday, I swear to God. <laughs> we'll live in review. Yeah. Do you think you get a day off if, you, if we throw this one away? No. Uh, Your day um, will be spent watching back that play. Obviously, just having a bit of fun. Heretics coming off the back of a loss against G2 yesterday. But we've been uh, enjoying what we've been seeing from them. Two and two teams meeting today. A big win on uh, available for both these teams. 
as we fight for those middle of the table spots, assuming they can keep their trajectory as they have been. SK on the red side. Oh, we're going to see Varus being the priority once again. Should have come as no surprise, given how powerful he is on the current patch. I'm hoping we get to see the on-hit Varus. I have been loving more of the on-hit Varus that we've been seeing recently. Uh, and unsurprisingly, Sen and Nautilus. So we're definitely returning to the meta that we saw in spring. With Rel being banned, that would be the conventional pick that you would see here. Vi also banned. I'm curious as to what direction we get in terms of the jungle priority. Will it instead be something like the Xin Zhao? Do they instead want to lock in something like the Orianna? or maybe even the Ari early on. We'll have to see what that priority is. Right now, you have perfect information on the enemy bot lane. Could just lock in your bot oh, lane. I'm going to go jungle. for the Nico blind instead. And I will say, for, for Spyro, this looked like his best pick that we've seen so far against Fnatic. I feel like he and Yankos were 2v8 for the vast majority of that game. They were single-handedly bringing back what seemed like a lost game. And so I like that they're prioritizing giving it to him again but it potentially puts them at a bit of a disadvantage in either the jungle pool uh, or the support pool if they don't immediately lock in a support here. And instead, they're going to prioritize their mid-jungle combo, which I would do say I will respect. Jarvan, okay. I mean, Jarvan in conjunction with Nico, I think has opportunity. The wombo combo, very real with this. In terms of early power, I would argue that it doesn't actually have that much damage. It's, uh, it's like if you hit your EQ on Jarvan, Without the flash, you just straight up hit it. You got good damage. You I know? mean, I could see like if everyone has, if you're level six, there's opportunity, but the Ari lock in, you know, <laughs> she just has so much mobility. We already saw Whoa, Seiken we've in never the previous seen game. this match before. <laughs> yeah, How does it work? <laughs> um, I think part of the reason for Zvyro prioritizing the Nico as well is because Niski has just been a fan favorite of the Nico right now. Oh, sure, absolutely. Spamming it on his stream. Uh, he had a great performance on it yesterday, even in the loss. And I think it's something that if you want to take it away from him, makes a lot of sense. The Renata ban, something I was going to comment, I think that it's still a very good matchup into the Nautilus double range. is something you always have to be cautious of. With Ash already taken off the boards, it makes sense. Now you're forcing Heretics onto something maybe even a little more defensive. Maybe a Braum if you want to play a little bit more reserved towards the bot side of the map, but if they want to leverage this bot side as their strong side, maybe they want to go for something a little more aggressive. The question is, what will they bring into the Nautilus that seems to be the staple in the support meta right now? Yeah, we've gotten used to seeing a couple of Braum picks here and there, which I don't think is a, is a perfect counter, but a lot of teams struggle to play around that unbreakable cooldown, uh, and it means a lot of very Braum favored fights. The Jax for now going to be the first ban away from Team Heretics, giving that respect over to Irrelevant. Um, obviously, the best Jax player in our league, and now Cassante gonna get taken away as well. Very aware that somebody on the side of Team Heretics has to blind pick. Laughter on the side of SK, clearly enjoying the ban phase thus far. And see, I assume you just get, you know, jungle on four here, save counter pick for Relevant, try to set him up for success. His bot lane, you know, you have a lot of room to play around a Nautilus lane always, but Nautilus Senna can also just be on the back foot and you can be okay with that. I wonder if Elise Sinban will come through here from Heretics. Viego Lee are the two that you would expect to be paired up with uh, this Ari. So far from Isma, we've just seen the Xin Zhao and the Rel, but with both being up and available. Curious what direction they decide to go. I will say I do really love the fan sign that just says Heretics please win with like a crying <laughs> bee. Like fans have tried a lot of things like I believe in you, like you can do it, but I like the emotional manipulation. Please, <laughs> or I'll be saved. Yeah. <laughs> So Wani is not what I was expecting. So are they thinking about a Renekton top, maybe? I uh, think they're threatening. Look, if you... <laughs> I mean, Renekton's already banned away, right? But they're basically saying, oh, right. we, will, we will slam a melee top laner. So brace yourself. <laughs> you know, like, your blind pick is going to have to be pretty cozy comfy. And I think Gragas is the, is the best option. It's also Wonders Gragas. Yeah. <laughs> Which, if you've missed it, uh, I, I don't want to say this is the most diveable, undiveable player champion combo in our league, but it's close. I mean, I think one, uh, Wonder, I think Gragas is pretty good into Jax. The Nar ban now makes a lot of sense. Um, it's a super safe top lane blind. Uh, it, I think it's like just really strong right now as well. Um, the question is, how will they round out the draft? What are they going to put in support? I was contemplating the Thresh, but when I think I've spoken to me in Trimby. the face and tell me this is no, a good pick. Don't. I mean, that's the thing. I've spoken to Trimby so many times. But like, why isn't Thresh coming back? And he's like, ah, not that yes, good. Yes, because he's not. This is the, <laughs> I, I, I think Thresh is the Lucian of the support position. <laughs> like, if everything goes great, Thresh looks great. If you get ahead uh, early game, Thresh looks great. You're throwing hooks from Fog of War. You're lanterning people out. You feel like a god. If you start to lose, you're a lantern bot. All of your CC is so telegraphed. <laughs> it's like the easiest skill shot to dodge in the game I next mean, to Nidalee Spear. Traditionally, Nautilus is considered pretty good into Thresh yes. as well. 
Um, but we talked about how the support pool right now feels very limited. And so Trimby wants to provide a little bit more survival for his AD carry while also having that pick potential available. And you have a bit more range. It's a bit harder for Senna to stack off of a Thresh because of that range. So there are a lot of reasons for the laning phase that Thresh makes a ton of sense. And if you do get ahead, this champion looks here's, super powerful. Here's what I will say. Chain of Corruption guarantees a hook. Uh, Nico E guarantees a hook. Uh, Java EQ guarantees a hook. And, also, and of course, all... uh, there's a minion in front of it. And then, no. <laughs> I'm just saying vice versa, all those things are also true. A okay. lot of single target CC available on the side of Heretics, but also a huge amount of disengage. You think about how much zone control they actually have with their ultimate, the Nico ultimate, the Gragas ultimate, the Thrash ultimate. They can control a lot of space with the tools that they have in their kit. And here's what I'll say. I think we might get an on-hit Varus. This I'm is great. Hoping. I think the sustained damage profile without on-hit Varus is this a little comp. bit suspect. Yeah, because yep. if Irrelevant lives through your combo, no one is killing the Aatrox. <laughs> That will be your problem. I mean, naturally, SK have a huge amount of mobility. I really like the scaling options that they have, just because I think Aatrox and Senna are really powerful late-game champions. While Gragas can offer a lot of disruption, Aatrox just murders a lot of things, as kind of is his lore. Um, so I think that uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is this SK uh, mid-jungle duo. I don't love Ari and Sejuani. I think that it can still be fine into Java and Nico, but... Uh, Definitely a little bit more of a stronger top side of the map. So I'm hoping to see them play around Irrelevant in this game. As am I. Here we go for our fourth game of the day. Team Heretics versus SK. I like both traps. This one, this one feels potentially pretty spicy. I do think... Ah, on hit Varus. Yeah. That's what we like. And it's not that Lethality Varus isn't good. It's just that if you miss your Q, you're, a, you're kind of a caster minion. So with like three really powerful auto attacks. So I, I personally, you know, I feel like the uh, on hit a little bit more reliable, even if it doesn't win lane quite as hard. Okay, I know this isn't important, but can we just talk about some of the skin selection in this game? Like October first Krygos, that makes sense. All players do it, great one. <laughs> Jarvan has like two good skins, and this is not one of them, okay? <laughs> this is a horrible skin. No, uh, uh, <laughs> who likes this skin? If you I don't mean, know, uh, Betty is the Observer's favorite. <laughs> Every time he says anything, they're just instantly locked in. I don't know like, who likes Dragon Varus players. has so many good skins. I think that like you can pick most of them. I'm a personal yeah. fan of Arctic Ops Varus. Arctic like, Ops Varus, great. Like, that's a great one, but I also think this one is perfectly fine. No issue with it. I also think this Thresh skin is totally fine. Um, but Jarvan, I mean, he has like two. I'm being honest, he has one, and this isn't it, okay? I respect it. I'm gonna have to speak to you. You're like that guy this. at the Oscars on the red carpet who's like, yo, I know you're here to win tonight, but uh, your fit's trash. <laughs> you're that guy on Instagram being like, I'm just gonna it's give a little critique yeah. of Yankos, fashion right now. love you, go jungler. You've done a lot for Europe. Yeah. That fit, trash. <laughs> terrible, I don't like it. His kicks, whack. His spear, whack. Anyway, we'll see if the early game favors him a little bit more uh, than Betty's impression, at least, of how good this skin is. Now, he did have a very impressive early game yesterday. Yesterday. I loved his pathing. He did a lot to shut down Yike and kind of limit his options in the year of the game. Unfortunately, Heretics couldn't really do much off the back of that. G2 found some great fights, which really just shut down Heretics in the transition from early to mid, and then G2 kind of snowballed out of control. Definitely a frustrating one for Yankos, given how strong his early pathing was. Right now, it looks like he's pathing towards his bot side of that, which does make sense. When we look at these lanes, I think that mid and bot are your best options in terms of where you can find those advantages. And the fact that he started top side, you can see this slow push coming through from the bot side of the map. So I wonder if they are considering a dive. The ward from Isma has been dropped onto that red, so they will garner information as to when he paths that way. As Isma um, mirrors, is that the right word? As he paths up towards the top yeah, side and looks to play around irrelevant. Opposite sides, reflections, most certainly. Excellent hook coming Ooh. in from DOS. Ball damage, pretty solid on the Flacket. This might make a gank coming in the bot line a little bit precarious. x now trying to zone Flacket away. I mean, this is prime dive territory. <laughs> yeah, your support. Oh, but your support has TP. So I stand corrected. In terms of the health trades, they should be great. Oh, you mean your support has cleanse. The carry right, only the has, carry TP. has TP. You gotta my shift apologies. your mindset. You're right, you're right. My bad, my bad. <laughs> All right, so uh, TP comes back from DOS. So that's the good news, is that he's the one that they focus. Yes, they get the TP, but he's also the one that can afford to take a back early on. Only able to buy a refillable, so it's not great, but it's definitely not the end of the world. And now we see if the setup is there. Quick date of birth check. Anytime you see a Threshen lane, what do you have to respect? Flash, Flay, Lantern Gank. People who won't know that, anyone that didn't start playing in like 2015 when it was the only support play anyone ever <laughs> did, see if they're ready. 
Jankos instead gonna set his attention into the mid lane. Nice sidestep on the root. Nice backstep from Niski into the flash. Could have just flashed away, but wanted to prove that he could dodge the EQ. I mean, I mean, he was gonna die if he didn't flash. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you could have just immediately flashed. I mean, he definitely could. He just want, again. True. He just flexed on us. He's like, I, guys, I can dodge it just to be clear, but I do also need to flash. That he does. Trimmy now hovering around mid. But we talked about how Yanks' options were very much about uh, bot or mid. Bear in mind, while all that was happening, Ooh, hook connects. Play back. Doesn't have ignite. Empowered Ooh. auto. Thresh damage. The charm. Niski first blood for Trimmy. I take it back. Thresh is the best support. <laughs> he's he's goaded. No one can stop him. I'm just saying, Nautilus would have put himself underneath the towers if he throw that hook out. <laughs> Very true. Also, good presence of mind. Spyro checks first. Trimby knows he can approach. Niski caught sleep and did not anticipate that support room. Isma very favored in the 1v1 there as the Sejuani <laughs> passive. Hard for uh, Yankos to pop. I mean, Yankos got both crabs there. Overall, he's pretty happy with how his pathing worked out. Uh, he used that mid gank knowing that Isma tried to make a play happen on the top lane. Uh, finds a window to actually secure that crab, and then immediately transitions to the bot lane, secures that one as well. Now his top camps are respawning, but what way is he heading? Keep my eyes on Yankos once more. We can see the wave state of Exekick and Doss. They've got some good vision hovering around the them. The wave state of top lane for Relevant is also fantastic. I wonder if he's going to have to recall and walk That's straight true. back into the waiting point. arms. Yeah, I mean, Wonder really needs to back. You look at his items, and he only was sitting on a Dawn's ring of a tear, and he's like, I can't. Some pots, maybe a ward would be nice. Yeah, some boots to get away from the queues, especially as Aatrox, you know, three points now in the Dark and Blade. Level seven really just starts to feel like it has essentially no cooldown for lane trades. So again, I draw my eyes back to Yankos. Decided to go out of base straight towards his Raptors, and now he has his eyes set on the bot side of the map. Flashes are available on both sides. Ignite is up too. Isma choosing to make the cross map happen, even though Yankos hasn't been spotted out yet. Feels relatively safe on the top side. Maybe he wants to cover for a potential dive as Irrelevant is slowly getting chipped away at. Important to note though, Irrelevant has yet to reset. So small item advantage favoring Wonder at point. this point. Of course, Irrelevant has the XP lead as he was able to hold this wave, but now Wonder just gonna try to crash this. I don't think they, I, Ping's maybe down on Dayanko's here, allowing Irrelevant to now step forward, knowing that there's not a jungler waiting to dive him on the top side. So good patience there from SK to make sure they had information before he does step up to try to contest the wave. Notice that, uh, I mean, they do have information as to where Yankos is, but I also just think it's valuable that if you are concerned about someone stealing the grubs, doing the back one on a champion like Sejuani, so that if a jungler shows up, you can then just smite it, queue over the wall to safety. Just cool little thing. A good presence of mind. Set yourself up for an escape path, just in case. Team Heretic's gonna grab their first Drake. He'll be traded for three grubs. Overall, relatively quiet early game. And I think um, while we might start to see more plays on the bottom side once Flacken ticks over to level six, he did go for Cole early on. So clearly very aware this is a bit more of a passive lane. Oh yeah. Excited to see how these fights play out because inherently Nico um, Jarvan plus Gragas, a bit of anti-synergy there. Um, oh, here we go. All right, everybody, how many melee minions are there? <laughs> Four, that's right, that's no, right. I played against a Nico <laughs> at, in Solica the other day, and it was one of the smartest Nikos I've ever played against. The, how they leverage Blast Codes, Scryer's Blooms, and the little healing ones was crazy. I think uh, I already fall for Nico, and when you play against a clever one, you just fall for it twice as hard. Yeah. Bro. Everybody falls for Nico. You know, Not I'm an ARAM spammer, and they literally <laughs> never count the wave. You can come down <laughs> one lane, it's always the same number of minions, and people get caught by it every single it's time. True. But I've been casting this champion for I don't know how many years, and I'll still see, oh, they've decided to put Varus in mid lane. Yep. <laughs> and I'll fall for it every time. Definitely my favorite rework in recent memory. So there have been a lot of great ones over the years, but this one is really good, really fun from a pro play perspective. Sure. Love seeing Larson running around as a little Krog earlier, just the bonus movement speed. Also yep. the interactions you can have. Was it Saken that used the, uh, or was it Caps? The Caps to turn into a tower. The tower. Yeah, but or also to, or to turn into a minion to dodge Vara Vara Salt. Salt. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's, yeah. Some of that stuff is super high tech. Yeah. Anyway, we're going off the rails a bit because not a huge amount is happening, of course. Niski has this advantage push in mid. See the pressure they have in board, so they're setting up a steal onto the red buff. Will Heretics fight for this? I think it would be a bit ambitious. Stepping forward. Burst damage now coming in. Yanko's going to immediately try and ult to get a little bit more damage. Yeah, but flying drag. He's got the confidence to now escape. No level six from Mexico. He can't follow up here, but it will be the red buff over to the side of SK. 
Inko's not really burning any major resources there. It's big for Team Heretics in the fights to come, but credit to SK for securing the, bu the buff. I'm surprised Yankos got away with his life. Uh, Niski, I talked about why it was risky for them to contest there, and it's just because Exekick and DOS were already going to get there so much faster. And I think the surprise element from SK, Niski hiding from behind the wall in fog, made it so much easier for them to create that collapse. Still, though, nothing happens. The red buff is lost. Yankos is a little sad, but he'll get over it. Uh, the gold rains largely dead even. Dragon spawning in about two and a half minutes. The grub's up in 120. But ultimately, right, these teams looking for anything too crazy this early on. No one completing a first item quite yet. Looks like an early Knight's Val rush for Isma will be nice to have in the fights, but obviously not going to offer a ton of burst. Varus ahead in gold. Obviously, the Senna is not farming, but even then, still ahead of the Nautilus, we can assume. And uh, still doesn't have that first completed item. Looks like Blade of the Rune King. Very likely to come out here. So, all is quiet. But it is. How is the Sibber Zeri game more explosive <laughs> than the Varus Senna game? That's a great question. Yeah, I don't have one an of the mis one of the mysteries of the world, really. <laughs> but uh, well, I could content with this again, just stacking up coal. He's got so much sustain. It's so hard for Exekick and Dost to really force him out of lane ever. Good bit of vision on the bottom side. Oh, oh jump. setting us up. Excellent roots. Viral flashing into force. They all trying to turn the play. The immediate turn and burn. Oh, Team Heretics, jungle and support working together beautifully to bail out Viro at the perfect time. You ask and they deliver. The combo is clean from Heretics. And I talked earlier, Dracos, about this single target CC setup. The flash in from Zviro to land the two man ultimate means that you have the guaranteed EQ combo from Yankos, the guaranteed hook connecting from Trimby. And it allows them to get the kill. And then Yankos very smoothly uses his ultimate to convert it into another as he shuts down Exa Kick. 1k gold lead now for Heretics. We're going to look back at this play, but it's really simple. Spyro, they don't expect him to flash in. Catches two of them, double flash from the support jungle. Hook, knock up, easy kill. Spyro picks up the first, Yankos picks up the second. The kill's going on to the right targets as well. Beautiful stuff from Heretics. The only little nice thing for the side of SK is they held on to Niski's flash. Ulti though, connecting, that's big on to Exa Kick. Doesn't quite have the damage follow-up. Forced the flash dark. out though, nice play there from Flackhead. Extra kick, only level 5, very squishy on the center of Forced with so few items and so few levels. Means that uh, Flackhead found an opportunity, gets a summoner spell. Gonna be easier for Yankos to uh, ulti <laughs> that center later on. In the, later on. Yeah, there's no Tom Kench. That is one very vulnerable center. And the fact that Spyro and Yankos are ahead of their respective counterparts, especially if you get first item completions now coming through for the Nico, the Proto Belt means that all the fight setups are going to be that much easier. Flackett also well ahead of the clock in terms of gold, at least for now. But Can we'll Isma do this? Uh, I mean, I mean just Niski's, stacking it. Niski's first to the, the Dragon, but the wave is going to be sacrificed by Spyro. Trimby walking up. Alti goes in onto Jarvan. Maybe not the ideal target, but the charm is there as well. Niski now dashing in. The box goes down. Trimby taken out. The Thresh, very squishy, very vulnerable. But here goes Viro. It's going to lock up one. The punish back onto Doss. A blinking health bar for Yankos, but he manages to get out thus far. The Golden Egg is not enough. Black it. Decent arrow, but the fight's going to fizzle. So crucially, Flackhead, of course, doesn't have his ultimate. He used it earlier onto Exekick when trying to find that solo kill. And Spyro was just later to the play. Niski was in a better position to collapse with SK to convert that into two kills. As Team Heretics is only able to find one. They'll get themselves their first dragon. SK answering back some of the aggression that we've been seeing from Heretics. It's really nice for SK. Niski didn't even have a fully completed item there, and they're able to come out Wait, on top overall. No Look. smite for Isma. Isma! Ooh. Yano! Okay. Ooh. All right. Trimmy now bringing Yankos in. Not, though. It's fake Yankos. Fake Yankos. Grabbing the kill. That's Viro. Okay, so at the end of the day, hard to evaluate the play overall, but SK at least get the Drake. It was a close one. <laughs> I thought that with the empowered E, Trimby might be able to auto. snipe that Just, one. Yeah, that yeah. thing uh. hits. Don't know what Trimby's soul count is. Well, yes, I do. 26. Thank you, Overlay. So it's only 26 extra damage, but, you know. It matters. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a scary moment. SK lose another member as Team Heretics extend the kill lead to five. 2K is their gold lead right now. Trimby on the thrush. Two, one, and three, Daniel Dracos. And I'm still you a... You know us okay. casters All are right. big...
KDA merchants. Okay? We are KDA merchants. <laughs> it's the easiest stat to sell That's people. That's 100% KP I roll for up, the thrash right now. Like that right guy now. in Resident Evil 4. You know, like, what are you buying? It's all KDA. <laughs> That's your only option. You want another stat? You can't have it. <laughs> Kia player of the games and KDA is the only thing I'm selling. I'm just Team saying. of the split. Those Look, are your three that. options. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that said, like Trimby has done oh, a really fishing. good job of he's making fishing. an impact here. Again, face checking on Thresh is always a bit of a difficult proposition. Is you're quite squishy even with the aftershock, but Isma overstepping for a brief moment. Trimby will get taken down from the malignants, and Nisky just barely able to make it out safety. He has one more dash. Yankos trying to take his time. Nisky now dashing out of safety. Nisky will not make it out. Yankos is just going to walk. They want to give the kill to Flackhead. Never nope. mind, though. They do not. Nope. <laughs> nope. I thought Yankos that was going to wait. He earned that one. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he did to his credit. And it's, again, it's scrappy, it's back and forth. Good play initially from Isma and Niski, but it gets turned against them. Uh, and just a little bit sloppy on both sides. Either side with an overwhelming advantage in that one. Yankos are trying to start the objective. Irrelevant stepping up despite not Isma. really having anyone else on the top side of the map with him. That's a lot so, of confidence. Ooh, Isma was originally going to his bot side, but Irrelevant said, no, no, we can fight this. So he abandons the Wolves, makes his way back over towards the Herald. They've got Doss and Exekick here. Niski has the TP. He's going to make a beeline towards bot lane. But they realize, you know what? We've got the health advantage right now. Yankos doesn't have ult. Yankos doesn't have ult. Flackett doesn't have ult, crucially. Wonder. Viro does, the though. And he's got his flash available. And there's a control ward there. When they go to clear, there's room for him to make the play. Arrow coming in, trying to isolate Exekick. But it's not a farming Senna. That's a lot of resources burned for not a lot of gold. Viro is going to make it out courtesy of the Lantern. The, the tower resets. on the bot side will drop right now. Team Heretic still ahead in the play overall. Wonder's TP actually got interrupted there. We did see it coming through, but Niski, because he was already passing bot, was able to find an interrupt. He now has his TP available to create a numbers advantage if they can find the angle. Instead, they're not going to force it. Doss going to go and catch that mid wave. Ultimately, the Herald's still alive. Neither team found an objective. A lot of time being spent an awkward positioning for a lot of players. But one that should be able to find a base. Same for the bot lane of Team Heretics. Spend some of the gold that they've been sitting on. Irrelevant, no ult. He doesn't have that additional movement speed, but luckily the control ward does alert him to Yanko's coming, as do all of the other visions. And SK have laid down. So, you know, when we talk about, like, Sen and Nautilus versus other AD carries, like, comparing the gold difference isn't really that big of a deal because it's not truly uh -huh. representative. Is this the part where you tell people to look at the bottom of their screen well, and do I was, the math? I was just going to be like, I look at the two supports, and I'm like, I mean, that Nautilus doesn't seem that much stronger than the Thresh. I'm going to be real. As, as, a, as a certified Thresh hater, I think it's important that I talk about what Trimby is doing really well. Thresh, if you're starting to win or if you're in control of the map state, you play where I want your waves and your vision, is really powerful. He is not as simple or as reliable as Nautilus, but when Thresh is good, he's really, really good. And Trimby is playing it fantastically. And now that Varus is fighting for mid prile when they start to set up for these objectives, Trimby's going to look really strong. Downside, if he ever has to face check alone, champion feels really bad. Well, fortunately, they've got Wanda, and in theory, Yankos should be going towards something like the Starax next, so we should have a little bit more survivability when face checking as well. But now, Heretics, finally, they're going to get themselves this Herald. It looks like that SK should concede this one. Trimmy's just better. He's just, I'm sorry, he's just built different. He gets the flash. He's just reading Exekick like a book. I think he spotted him on that ward that's just sitting on the edge there, about to time out. But you called it, flash gone. Herald secured. Now Heretics can use this to unlock the mid wave, and they're making a beeline straight towards it. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, you can see in the picture in picture, Niski just laying down a bit of damage onto the tower. Still corrected. The three grub buff did go to SK earlier on, so Niski is a little bit quicker when it comes to taking those objectives. Teeny weeny bit. <laughs> ah, yes. Itsy bitsy bit. The, the, the caster adjectives of choice, yes. Teeny weeny and itsy bitsy. <laughs> the professional term, the technical term actually for the three grub buff. A teeny weeny bit of extra damage. The Herald, a whole heckin' lot of extra damage. And the mid lane has been unlocked for Heretics. Look at Isma on the flank. Like spotted out the one to the rush. I'm not sure if they got that initial vision, but Isma now picked off, has to flash back to the rest of the team. The re-engage now coming through. Not all is all coming out, and here is irrelevant. Left alone on the side. Zyruga finally going to be safe, but Niski coming into chase, coming in to finish the job. A one for one overall, though. Jankos does secure the kill onto irrelevant. Niski trying to keep this going. No more stacks left. Is another hook lands from Trimby. Doss caught oh. in the choke, and Yanko's trying to turn him back. Oh, oh he ults the flag and drag hits three, and that's enough. For Team Heretics to take the fight. Trimmy's still going. Flash the hook. Ooh. Oh, he tries to hard read. Doesn't get it. But Team Heretics cracking tier one open, taking the tier two as well. And, and now gonna, 4k gold lead. They're looking at the dragon too. Isma's forced to base. 
I imagine that they wanted more, given how low the members of Team Heretics were. Spyro didn't get a chance to ult. I really thought that in the midst of that chaos, he would just throw it out as a last-ditch effort. There's no way SK is going to try and contest okay. this. Morello wants to walk Trimby up here. Doesn't this is have a flash. spectator objective. What is their hope for the follow-up play? Do they want to cancel the recalls here? Oh, he's got the Hex Flash. He's perfectly safe. The TP invested. I don't really know what they can convert this into. There's no good mid wave for them to be sieging onto the mid tower. Svira also has the TP to defend if he wants. When we look back at this fight, it starts off with Isma being forced out of the fight. The single target CC is just so lethal from Heretics. When they find that single member, they're often forced back, but the return happens onto Svira. Gets very low, and Iniski is able to finish up that kill, but Irrelevant is kind of left out to dry as SK don't really have that much damage without Niski on the other side. Then this hook connects, allowing Team Heretics to turn it into something more. And it's not actually about DOS, it's about this great ulti from Yankos into the EQ combo, setting themselves up for another kill. So many blinking health bars on the side of SK. A bit more damage from Heretics, and they could have turned that into a clean ace, but they're still going to be happy with that. Definitely. SK. Right now, XK oh, pretty far behind the clock, and Trimmy just continues to make plays on a one-man mission to change perceptions of Thresh. Two, two, eight. One hundred percent KP for this Thresh support, Dan Rakos. He's have you been wowed yet? I it's a passport diff, I guess. I just didn't know. <laughs> Usually people say that about LCK LPO. I guess maybe it was, it was Poland. That's what I needed to be respecting here. Trimby is a, a monster this game. I can take nothing away from him. Exekick and SK trying to set up a pick on the top side, but again, Wonder has excellent wave clear as the full EP Gragas. I mean, it really is the kind of, I say the support staff, but EP jungle support in. this game from Heretics. Ultimate gonna, he, he thought that he could knock them into, into the tower. The angle is a little bit off, but it's fine. Wonder not gonna be in too much danger here. A lot of members committed onto the top side. I thought this would give Heretics an opportunity to SK. push something else on the map. Trying to get tricky, Wonder thinks he's safe, but Niski already waiting in the brush. The charm connects, one, two, three, and four stacks now coming through. SK will get the pick in the end, and now they've got Pry on the top side. Spyro already burnt the TP earlier, so it's a free top lane tier one, and there's no, really no counterplay for the rest of Team Heretics. Do they force the Baron? I don't think so. Niski's used ultimate, Exekick has used ultimate. I think if they would try and force another fight now, it would end in disaster, so they're not going to take the gamble. Instead, we'll be happy with the tower, back away. And now this does give a window for Heretics to push out some of these waves. You'll see Spyro catching that top one. Flack and moving over towards mid. The bot wave not in a great position, really, for them to do much over. So it's a bit of an awkward spot. Ideally, Heretics will now just use this opportunity to drop some vision, whatever they can to clear out the wars that have been vested by SK, because you're mainly waiting now for the next dragon to spawn. Ideally, they want to play towards that top outer tower, as SK kind of have their eyes on unlocking that mid one. SK also need to get their eyes on getting more far, more money. They are very far behind at this point in the game. Their carries, Niski at least close to even, has the mobility to walk away from Yankos, but not having an ultimate for the next exchange, especially as this wave crashes on the top side, means that SK are very likely to just concede this top lane tier one. Wonder already defending mid to stop the cross map. I mean, burning that ultimate really valuable, but I thought, oh, he's trying to trade cooldowns. Yankos ulti, about a seven. Oh, hang on. Are they going to die this? Four spear, TP response. This is just a free kill pickup. Das, no business being on the top side. Trimby on his lonesome. A one man army. SK just backing away. Team Heretics priority access to the objective now. Zvira walking up. They? Has oh. Niski lost the count? No, he is not. I was wondering if they could do a Baron there, but again, a little too cautious the fact that all the damage dealers are still alive. Questionable TP there from DOS. Wonder committed his TP into mid because it's really hard to dive with Gragas. Uh, a level 11 normal is not that hard to dive. True. <laughs> so while the mid tower stays alive for Heretics, thanks to the wave clear from Wonder, unfortunately the same cannot be said for that top side. Gold extends once again for Team Heretics. 4K now is their advantage. Dragon spawns in a minute's time. And Heretics are looking to put themselves on soul point as Spyro could be into danger. Niski still fishing, trying to make the pick that could change the game. Protobel comes out, but there's the Lantern. And again, this is the beauty of oh, having the done. Thresh, but they are done. Spyro now in trouble, forced to flash out to safety. Is still just going to get taken down. SK need to turn back to the objective. They need to get a little bit more off this play if they want to keep it going. Flash in from DOS, flash out from Trippy to safety. Yankos. They want to go for the re-engage here. I don't think SK are really strong enough to start the objective. Wonder already pushing in on the bottom side. SK a point of pressure that needs need to be to answered. to reset for the dragon. They could try and force the Baron right now, but it would be risky. It's, they have such a slow Baron. Yeah, they don't have enough damage. Yeah, so uh, they want to be able to contest Heretics on the uh, the dragon respawn. Looking at the TP timer for Spyro. He's up in eight seconds or so. Well, ten rather. 
Counting down for Spyro. TP not too far away. Wonder has to be careful about stepping too far forward, but has the cast up. Can just look to disengage. Hex flash the hook. The cleanse. Ooh, nice clean, cleanse. clean cleanse from Mexican, but good hook from Trippity to start things off. Nice knockback to disrupt the fight, but keep your eyes on Irrelevant as he gets into the back line. Disruption there for Yankos. Black and now backstepping on hit bar. It's doing a bit of work as Doss just gets taken down. So many beefy health bars just going to get shredded oh. by those blight stacks. There's another hook lands. The flank now coming in from Spyro as well. This could be disaster for SK, but the fight starts off so well for them. Spyro now trying to turn it. Knock up onto two but not going to get much of anything else. And SK just too damn clean in the fight. Niski tearing through the team, Irrelevant popping off. The Aatrox finally online. Niski landed some really important charms in that fight. And I think it was a big reason as to why SK were able to swing it in their favor. They're going to deny the soul point away, or rather Yankos in the vicinity has the smite available, but Isma does not. Gets into the pit. 1800 health trying to finish it. Oh, just in time. <laughs> Charm goes down. Is Jumper that a Baron? Goes down. All Shut five down. Their Baron is still terrible. I mean, Their Baron true. is still truly that's, awful. That's it's just true. Multiple melee champions praying that Sejuani passive The number of times I've sat again. there and said, is this a Baron angle for SK? Oh, is this a Baron angle it for SK? Be. He's just one man with really good hooks. I don't think Trimby is enough. Okay, we might finally be seeing the Baron angle. SK are gonna take the They're risk. Niski has put himself into a flank position. His ultimate is back up. Look at Niski, look Nisky at Niski. Hunting for the angle. Dash for the wall, side steps on Flacket's ultimate. Flacket immediately gonna cleanse out Niski. Now trying to get out to save Jesus. Mikhail's, excuse me, Flacket. Taken down, and SK just tearing through the fight again. Finding the angle. Niski's been so good. The follow from SK Flawless. And now, finally, Betty, it is time to start the Baron. It is the Baron angle. Niski with a great flank. He was able to find some clutch charms in the previous fight. His ultimate cooldown is so short that he has it ready for the next one. And Flackhead thinks he's safe on the back line. Niski finds a way in, shuts down the AD carry. And just like that, a winning game, a huge gold lead for Heretics has been swung in the favor of SK. If we look back at this, Niski gets spotted, Flackhead gets cautious, but there's nothing that they can do. The peel isn't there. He connects both sides of the queue, pops the stopwatch to buy himself enough time, uses the ultimate to get away to safety, and SK walk away the victors of the fight. And the death ball of, of SK is just lethal. And I misspoke in the previous fight. Flacket did have plans. Trimby, 10 seconds away from having the Mikhails, might have been enough to at least get some kills back. But now it is SK's barren power play. Good job to take control of this game. And I think we, we cannot stop singing the praises of Niski. And Niski and Isma, especially when they're working together, just find so many good angles to start these fights. I mean, I will say that the front line of SK is just stronger at this point, right? Yeah. We're seeing how durable they are versus the amount of consistent damage that they have. And Flackhead is doing what he can. But we think back to that dragon fight, Heretics just shouldn't have even considered it given that Zvyro wasn't there. He was so late to the fight. He got a good ultimate at the end, but it was too late at that point. And I think the Heretics just overforced the situation they didn't need to. And then off the back of that, SK forcing the Baron then allowed them to find another great fight where again, Heretics were at a numbers disadvantage. And now I feel you're at the point where you look at this front line, it is just so tanky on the side of SK. And I don't know if Varus is enough alone to really break through that front line and then have any real risk onto this level 16 Whoa. Ari or this Senna who who now has two items. Trimby fishing, hook not going to connect, a bit of damage, but does get the ulti out from Niski. Again, cooldown at this point in the game is incredibly low, so it might not matter too much. But it's a really good point, Betty, because yes, Thresh offers you... It's 25 seconds. <laughs> okay, all doesn't matter. It's a fake <laughs> cooldown now. Unless you immediately fight, you cannot punish that. Um, you don't have a traditional frontliner. Yes, Gragas is really good. Yes, he's hard to dive. He does a lot of things, but he doesn't just eat autos for free in the same way that a lot of frontliners can. And Trimby is not a traditional, you know, defensive support. You can find hooks. You can use the lantern. I mean, Yankos has 93 armor and 79 magic resist, right? Like, his front to back is just hard for Team Harry. I, I just don't that think to it's Sejuani an option. who has 189. Yeah, she just gets to walk into towers and throw random alts with reckless abandon, frankly. But good Baron wave here. Team Harry committing a lot of members. Meanwhile, Irrelevant trying to crash in the mid lane. SK playing on two fronts. Wonder has to be careful about overstepping. Irrelevant is very strong, but Wonder has great tools to dissuade the dive. First Dark and Blaze stack gonna connect. Pullback is there, Q2, Wonder in trouble, forced to flash away. He also doesn't have a lot of armor, fun fact. I mean, we're also reaching a point where Irrelevant on this Aatrox is just fully online. 
does so much damage in both 1v1s, and, and I feel like that there's not really anyone that can stop him. All of the damage, I feel, is so reliant on Flacket. And you've got to keep him alive, but there's so much... There are so many threats looking to try and kill him. And we've seen how many times Niski's been able to find that angle. For now, Heretics are just doing their best to wave clip. The game isn't quite over just yet. Heretics just find themselves in a much worse position. And I feel like the game is only going to get harder, especially given the strength of Niski and this ever-scaling uh, center. And even more pressure on Flacket to play perfectly, which is an incredibly hard thing to do against the die threat of the SK composition, against the point and click of an ulti like Doss's. I will say it's always frustrating to lose to, to lose to a Senna in any big play to lose Baron because it just means she gets so much more time to get souls. She gets so much more space to follow her jungle around a jungle camp to get more souls to get closer to those big break points. 98 now, 96, excuse me, for Exekick. Almost 100 for Exekick, we'll say. A little low, I will say, overall this game. Yeah, I think this Baron, for example, we see a lot of um, centers around the world like really follow their jungle during a Baron. You get a little bit of pressure, but you take a lot. I think Exekick's much more focused on just being present with the team, so it didn't get as much space to, to grab souls as we maybe would have liked to see. Overall, though, impressive stuff from uh, Niski, and it was this top side of the map that we kind of had high expectations for coming into this matchup. So far, they are delivering. Great team fighting from SK. And also, they really want to win this after their frustrating loss yesterday. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've seen this a couple times for SK where it feels like they're in complete control and then they just um, they you know, bumble, they blunder, yeah. they make a, a bad call or they overestimate their own lead. They're doing a much better job this time playing from behind. And again, Make an oopsie whoopsie. An oopsie whoopsie, Betty. Yeah. A big oopsie whoopsie on the stage. The stagey wagey even. <laughs> Which just really isn't great. You know, you need to be able to perform under pressure. I, I love think how we're trying to set the stakes, and we're like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> the stakesy wakesies <laughs> are big in this game. I mean, it is, of course, both these teams are at 2-2, and they're not at the bottom of the standing or in a position where we're, we're necessarily nervous about them or for them falling out of playoffs. But you do want to clean it up, and when you're neck and neck with someone in the standings, those wins kind of count double, right? You're pushing them down. You're moving yourself up. It's so important for both sides. But for SK, I feel like... Now that they got out of that hang deficit, on, the game plan is clear. Group is five, forced to play. Wonder locked up. Chain CC nearly perfect, but the lantern is there. DOS now being brought back. Wonder still standing for a brief moment. The turn Wait is there. Minute. Black is finding the kill on the DOS. It's a start, but it's just one kill thus far. SK <laughs> overstepping a little bit. I'm amazed Wonder survived that. I thought that he was as good as dead, but the shield from the Seraphs coming in clutch, and then the lantern from Trimby. Yankos as well. I thought that he was hit back by the Gragas Barrel, but he actually ulted first and then EQ'd out to safety. They buy themselves a little more time. Baron spawns in 20 seconds. The TP available for DOS means that he should be able to join should they want to force it, but I don't think they do right now. Wonder went to catch Bot Wave, now level 17. Heretic's doing what they can to get as many items as possible, and it's crucial to remember that while we look at the composition from SK and think short, their front line is difficult to get through. There's still plenty of playmaking opportunities on the side of Heretics to win out a fight. It's just all comes down to the execution. And if they can force a cooldown like Exekick's flash or cleanse before a fight, he's still very vulnerable because as we highlighted, yes, Jarman doesn't have any resistances and it's because he's building damage. He will 1v1 a Senna pretty easily if he can get on top of her, but not the case. So this Heretics is a very slow Baron. We already talked about it earlier, but relevant on the flank. Spyro spotted as a minion. SK just backing away, giving that respect. The Banshees, or the edge of like, night, rather. It's not brought. taking any damage right yeah. now. Heretics well, can just uh, take that time. It's just your support Senna that is hitting the objective right now, guys. I don't know. Irrelevant if you know. and Niski are both trying to flank. What will be the go signal? Oh my God! It's like it's just a bronze game of Valorant. Just... <laughs> Everyone's just trying to flank. Nobody wants to hold an angle. Alt. Alti to start things off. Spyro only going to kick on one, though. Excellent start for the side of SK. Their patience might just pay off. And as Yankos in the back, and he just one shot, it's Exit Kick. And that's why you build damage on the Jarman. Spyro still alive. Niski can't get the kill. He can't get the reset. The root is there. Trippy lands another hook. They're trying to turn it. Nisman now firing back. Irrelevant. The one you need to keep your eye on. The last source of damage. The last bastion of hope in the fight. And he is shut down by Flacken as Team Heretics turn to the Baron. Is it another story of disappointment for SK? They failed to close it out yesterday, and now around the Baron, they failed to find the fight. Yankos shuts down Exekick. Flacket's positioning was fantastic, and the game has just swung once again. And we can look back at it.
I just want to keep out. So Niski can't quite find actors. I'm keeping my eyes on Flacken in the whole fight here. Look, great positioning from Trim Meter Body Block. The Nautilus Ultimate comes on top. Wonder is zoning Irrelevant away, and look at all this space. They finally get on top of Flacken, but at this point, the damage threats are gone. He flashes over to get that kill onto Niski, who's been chunked out thanks to Spyro. And then Irrelevant is the cleanup. We talked about how Flacket, it was so crucial that they kept him alive, and they did a good job. I didn't talk about it in the replay, but Yankos killing Exekick was also crucial. Sees the target, shuts the target down, and Heretics secure themselves a Baron. And it's great because there was no follow-up. DOS lands a good ult. You know, Trimby tries to dissuade any further follow-up, but Thresh doesn't really have enough to stop people from getting on top of the target, but because Yankos is already on the back line, because Niski is isolated off to the side, because the damage was so split, and the focus was so split from SK, it made that fight easy for Team Heretics. Oh, yeah. So now we're on a knife edge. The gold is dead even. SK at sole point, but you imagine Heretic should be able to get the next one. It looks like SK want to fight this. Third it's item not yet stakes. completed. Hang on, the Sejuani face checking. The good news for SK is if they can force a fight in the duration of Baron, they deny the value of the Baron, but it's must been caught out at least briefly. How many ults was that? Thresh ult, Var assault, two big ones in exchange Inky. for Ismas. Byro trying to match. And irrelevant, again, the double flank coming out from SK. Are they trying too hard to find these angles is the question. A minute 30 on Baron. If SK lose the fight here, they lose the game. Oh, Niski used his ultimate, but it doesn't find onto anyone. It's a short cooldown, but it's not that short. 10 seconds of uptime. SK, uh, again, the damage they do to objectives is not great. Niski gonna go in, he gets the charm on the Yankos. Yankos is gonna be fine. Oh, is this the, the biggest crucible. five play? Big Jarvan. Looking good to go on to Niski, just trying to lock the Ari up. He knows the ulti is gone. Yankos immediately follows up for the Ghost Golden, and now the turn potential is there. XK just needs to start auto attacking, free firing. Irrelevant trying to zone away the back line. Yankos getting the kill that they needed. On to Niski, buying the space for Team Heretics to get the objective. Isma is too low to contest as well. I love the creativity there from Spyro. TP to award in mid to create the collapse. They know that Niski doesn't have the ult, and then Yankos is there to follow up. The mid jungle coming up clutch. Yankos secures another kill. And Heretics put themselves at sole point. Three to three now on Dragon. And we talked about it. it's like a 20 second window of opportunity. You have to, the second you see that cooldown gone, go. Ari will have it back almost instantaneously. You need to be ready to find those brief windows of opportunity. And credit to Team Heretics. They got a little sloppy. You know, they threw away what felt like a pretty favored early game, but they found their angle to come back. One good fight around Baron into the Baron. Now a follow up as well as Yankos just continues to get aggressive up in the face of Isma. Trying to take away every last resource he can, make sure that they can t retain their control of the top side. I mean, I'll That's say it, like, you look at the AD carry difference, right? Exekick doesn't even have a third item. Flacket is nearing his final. Like, the difference between these AD carries, if you give Flacket the opportunity to unleash in these fights, he is going to do some terrifying damage. I just, at this point, the sheer amount of life steal, the shield bow, the Mikhail's, the locket, they can't DPS check Flacket. Like, the, every single cooldown needs to hit Flacket if they want to win a fight. And it's just, he's, there, again, cleanse Mikhail's. There just aren't enough. There's not enough in the tank, I think, for SK, unless they get more and more stacks onto the Senna, unless Exica can finally come online. But you saw him in that fight. He's just not doing enough damage. I feel like Niski feels a lot of weight on his shoulders right now because he's trying to find that charm, right? His charm can be so instrumental in just finding the well, initial pick which can then convert the winning team fight for his team. And just a reminder, if you look at the scoreboard, yes, we are KDA merchants, but in this case, I'm going to be a kill participation merchant. He's 100%. That he is. This game has been scattered. There have been plays on every single lane. There have been split plays. It hasn't been all 5v5s, but he has been a part of every single kill. And it's sometimes, you know, credit to Niski for really showing up in these games, but sometimes it feels like SK over rely on this man finding the angles, uh, finding the opportunities to bring them back. I mean, the Senna only at 127 stacks, 37 minutes in. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's a high value of stacks, but at this point in the game, you would ideally want a few more. I'm not going to underestimate the damage of the Senna at this point, of course, but Flackett getting closer to completing that final item. Heretics and SK, neck and neck in this game. We said it. I can't really give anyone the advantage. I think that both comps have their strengths and weaknesses. At this point, it all comes down to execution. And that's where I favor, you know, a, the a team GA. that has, you know, Yankos, a team that has something as clear as a Nico engage. 
where it's really clear when you follow up. It just feels simpler to play out the competition. But all summoners are up right now, right? Everything is up. Your ults, the items are being completed. Niski's desperate to get that death cap finished. He's trying to get as much gold as he can to make sure that he has it before the final fight. 55 minutes until the Baron. Three drakes to three. Just 55 minutes till the Baron? Sorry, 55 <laughs> seconds. Seconds. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> I was really excited it's for Rock Spyro. Rock Origin all over yeah. again. One more time. 80-minute <laughs> game. I saw Spyro go back, and I was like, oh, is he getting his death cap? Just picks up a control ward. That's fine. He's got a Shadow Flame. It, it, it's fake crits. He's had that for a while. <laughs> Just big old fake crits. Um, where is Niski sitting? I'm going to quickly look at his gold. Oh, he's miles away from it. He's not getting that death cap anytime soon. I mean, GA as well for Flacket again. Oh, yeah. It, it's... The nice foul finish for Trimby 2. It's such a complex fight for SK. If they can get clean front to back, we go. I don't even know if they win at this point. Hook. The bar says good hook. Doss caught out here. Shield coming in over the backside. Flacket untouched, but the front line getting deleted from the side of Team Heretics. They're maybe a little bit over eager. Flacket needs time to auto attack. He needs space. And oh. Spyro's going to give it to him. He turns. He finds Thor. The hook from Trimby connects. Flacket's allowed to do whatever the hell he wants, but it's not even about him. It's about Yanko's on the backside deleting the enemy carry. He found the angle, he found the fight. Flacken on cleanup duty. Team Heretics, a masterclass in team fighting to turn, but irrelevant. Wants to keep the fight going. Knows that he's stronger overall. Tries to buy a bit more space, but Team Heretics can just try to end the game Why here. shouldn't they? Yeah, three members dead on the side of SK. Everything was thrown into Wonder, but they didn't have the damage to kill him. And when the threat is gone, Flacken comes online. Great play from Heretics. The wombo combo from Spyro and Yankos as well. They have the Nexus in their eyes. SK doing what they can. Relvin wants to delete the creeps, but Wonder just gonna body block him, knock him back. Team Heretics focusing, grabbing some kills. As long as they get one creep alive, they should have enough for time. Irrelevant now dashing away, but that's one very fed bar. I don't know if you noticed, but he has an 8.5k goal lead. This man is rich, and he's a winner. Heretics will go to three and two. A sigh of relief from Yankos. He knows that that was a tough one, but credit to him. He was very active in the early game. As a team, they blundered around that dragon. The Baron nearly cost them everything, but all it took was a single mistake from SK, that top dive where they couldn't kill Wonder. It reached a certain point where they thought Wonder was squishy enough where they could just kill him, but then after a certain point, they just couldn't anymore. Yep. And they kept trying and they failed, and that bought enough time for Heretics to then turn the game around. It absolutely did. Of course, you can vote for your key of the player game at LEC on X, Yankos, Flacket, or Trimby. It was a messy one, but Team Heretics bringing it home in the end. For now, we're gonna toss to a quick break. When we return, Trimby, former analyst turned support, <laughs> joins us for his take on that game. Hey, Law. Yeah? I need a bit of help with styling since I'm new here, and I was wondering if I could show you a couple of outfits. Yeah, sure. Amazing, thank you so much. I'll be right back. I'm a Poro snack. Get it? I don't know, man. <laughs> Woo! Mm, no, not really. I don't know, what? Law. It's hopeless. No, it's gonna be fine. Here, let's have a break. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Back to the drawing board then, I guess.
ahead of our last game of the day, the showdown between Fnatic and G2. But before we get to this, we have Trimby with us, back to the desk with the jersey this time. Congrats yeah. on taking this exactly. one today. Exactly, now I have this microphone instead of a I know. <laughs> I have to get used to that, but yeah. outside of it, I'm really happy that I can be here as a player. And yeah, that now, you know, after the win, I can just I can enjoy a little bit my time, you know, don't need to be so stressed out about every single show that I come on as an analyst <laughs> person. And yeah, now I can just play the game. In a moment, you get to flame your own place instead of others' place. Huh? So I know. It's going to be great. <laughs> That's true. And there's some stuff that I could be blamed for, for sure. This uh, this game, I think this game was really messy, even though it was like pretty it should have been a convincing win for us, that's yeah. for sure. I want to talk about Heretics in general through this game, maybe, and your comeback, Trimby. I don't think it's easy coming back as a pro when you've been looking at things uh, from outside for a while. But what, what, what is making things a bit more complicated than they should be with Heretics? Uh, I would say it's a bit of a different team that you know I ever was in. I, you know, especially with the fact that we got like a little bit of changes, right, coming in for like spring split as well. It just made things very difficult when it came to practice. But then on the other hand, you know, we have like I think our team players are really talented. I already got to work only with Wunder, right? But I really loved working with him as well. And yeah, I've you know I'm enjoy I've been enjoying working with mm -hmm. every single each of the individuals. I feel like. I feel like Flacket is a really good player and I think Zvyro coming up right now, I think he's just like doing such a fantastic work, even though he's a rookie. Yeah, I was about to say, it's not easy coming uh, as a rookie. I will ask him, of course, later, but we have you now, so maybe we can get your perspective on things. Coming after Perks, uh, one of the most established players we have in League of Legends in Europe. How is he? How are the nerves for Zvyro? And the Polish duo? Of you guys, I, I, mean, I think it's great. Is, okay, the thing is, we don't talk that much Polish. Okay, you know, okay. Like between, even if I'm like around him alone, I still talk in English. I don't know why. Like I'm just used to it. I actually, Respectable. Even with Inspired, I used to like talk a lot in English. We we only talked in Polish if we couldn't speak out uh, speak out our minds, honestly. <laughs> but outside of it, I mean, I don't know. He's just very confident right. in what he wants to play, and he just makes sure that people understand and like play around him. And that's something that is really positive for a player that is a rookie. I feel like you know, it's so easy to play with. Him right now yeah and three two right now for you guys hopefully you can end week two on a good note but we're gonna switch to Fnatic G2 here a matchup that we know a lot we've been seeing it for years but I think um, it, it's different this time as in Fnatic I think is on top of their game right now with the lineup that they have we see we saw the potential that they had I think we get to see it on the rift G2 being G2 but I, I want to have my eyes on the jungle matchup today especially Razork Yike Who's the best jungler in the league, you would say, and why? I know, Trimby, you had some strong thoughts well, on I this. I mean, I did say something in. before coming, yeah. you know, to the to life. But uh, I, I do think, right, after working with Razork, he's for sure, like, one of the, like, greatest junglers I've worked mm -hmm. with, that's for sure. But on the other hand, I had inspired Razork now, uh, uh, before, and I, uh, Marang, uh, Marang, I think it's crazy. <laughs> and I have Yankos now, so honestly, I have quite a good pool of junglers that I had, you know, with me, like uh, when I was playing. So honestly, like these two that we see right now, and of course, Yankos, you know, out there, like they're pretty good. They're pretty good players. It's fine. You're up there, Yankos. It's okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> like I'm high kidding. up there, guys. I don't want to create drama, of course. Um, Broxa, as a jungler's perspective, actually, can you tell me what you think of this, uh, I mean, of this jungle opposition and focusing a bit more on what Razor can provide and what Yike and Caps can provide all together as well? So I think that's the interesting part that Yike has actually changed his playstyle a lot yeah. since he joined G2. In the beginning, he got all the resources, everybody was playing around him, funneling gold, gold into him. But you just mentioned both him and Caps because now they're pretty much a package deal. Like most games they play, Yike is on a ganking jungler, he camps mid, sets Caps off for success. Whereas I think Razorg is much more flexible and unpredictable in mm -hmm. a way. Like you never really know where he's going to strike and it feels like it mostly depends on that draft uh, more than anything. So from a you know preparation standpoint against Yike, I kind of know what's coming. He's going to camp mid. All right. But for Razorg, it's a bit of a question mark and you're just going to be ready for anything. I would say when it comes to Razrok as well, he's like puffings in early game. He likes to a lot tend to check what's happening on the map and then like figure out what's the best puffing for him. And I think he's like really good at it. Like at least when I played with him, it just every time there was like something bad happening and it happens, it, it did happen in Fnatic, we would always get like a good puffing out of it and he yeah. would always get ahead, even though we were like running it a bit down in, in lanes at least. That's something that both really good at actually, like finding windows to skip camps to look for a creative play 
and still not falling behind afterwards. That's what makes international junglers the best, I think, honestly. Finding creative pathings through gangs. But let's focus on the draft here, shall we? Because we have all three bands from both sides already. What kind of direction do you want to see Brox on the set of Fnatic opening here with this video? Well, now we have Trimby here, so I want to know. There you go. Like, I'm seeing yeah. Smolder is open. We've been talking a lot about Smolder, how strong the champion is, and how we as analysts are not super confident that anybody's shutting it down. Does it surprise you, as a player, that it wasn't first pick? It does, even though I still believe, you know, it's a champion that can get countered. And right, as G2, for instance, showed, you can win against this champion, I feel like. But on the other hand, right, when you're a Fnatic fan, I don't think Noah is a type of guy who, like, who would like to play Smolder. I think the champion takes too long to scale. That's why I feel like it's just right. so hard for him to pick it up, at least from my point of view. And now, as you can see, right, there was two, two midmans, which was Nico and Oriana, so Talia is being picked. On the other side, Smolder. I don't know what the Opera do. It maybe like a Rel or Jarvan, like they did last uh, One, two, yesterday. Three, not, the, not the best look, but it was pretty good for them, for sure, for sure. Not for us. Uh, I like the Ari a lot actually, because with Smolder, you are almost certain that you're gonna win in the late game. So Caps being an Ari, then you could look for like a Lee Sin or Jarvan for Yike if you want to. Strong mid jungle two v two that creates space and buys time for Smolder to scale. And yeah, just still having a strong early game. Yeah, right now, as we can see. They don't decide to go for Zeri, which is like one of the things Noah loves right now. They go for Kaisa and on top of it Nautilus, right? So they will try to pretty much dive into Smolder unless it's a full AP build, which I'm not sure if uh, Noah would like, but it's a build with like Mana Moon and full AP, which could technically outrange. And on the other side, as we can see, Mickey goes for Tamkent, which kind of like neglects the, the, dive, uh, the, potential. the dive potential. Yeah. yeah, exactly, which just, you know, it's pretty good for them because right now they have Ari who is pretty mobile and they have Smother who I think can quite comfortably scale in this matchup, even though I think Kaisen Outlaws can pressure off a little bit. Still, right, you have so much potential after three levels, level six onwards, I would say. So now we get to focus on the top side of the map, jungle top side, on both sides. Yeah, so yeah. Island. I, I think, you know, you never know for sure, but there's a high chance that G2 is just going to pick an AD jungle on 4 here, uh, leave last pick for Broken Blade, because with Ari, like, any strong AD jungler is just so powerful, and no matter what uh, they pair the Zalia up with on Fnatic side, it's so hard to contest the 2v2, and that's really what makes G2 so strong right now, being able to play around caps and being able to be aggressive mid jungle. Hello, Kev's dad, of course, <laughs> supporting his uh, his son, as usual. What is the last bans that you want to see Trimby here on both sides? I mean, there's, I think they're just banning the most comfortable, like, uh, the, the top laners that they don't want to face. I guess for G2 is Renekton, so, you know, a champion that can, like, easily be, like, blinded. On the other side, there's TF, right, extremely good counter pick. They ban Rel, so they're not looking for that one on 4, which, it's like a bit surprising, right? But like from the left side, it will be a perfect pick pretty much. And you cannot really counter it because you want to jungle on four. And they ban Jarvan. I think, I would say Jarvan, actually it's not so good for Fnatic. So I guess it makes sense, right? So now I would, I'm actually not sure what he will pick in jungle. Because I would say there's Lee Sin, right? Open, there's, uh, I would say Lee Sin, Viego, I think would have been an option. Even though it's not so great of your, okay, yeah. there's Lee Sin. And I don't, I actually don't know what Razor will play because I don't think it's the easiest. Option well, he's he's a he's a known Poppy player, right? Yeah, and, he really you know, likes it. As a Lee Sin player, whenever Poppy is locked in on the enemy team, I just want to start crying. Mm. Like it, it makes your life <laughs> really miserable. And it's you know Nautilus is also the most annoying support. I I like the angle for Yike. I would have locked it in as well, but I think it's not going to be an easy Lee game. Cassandra makes a lot of sense. Fnatic's comp is now really well rounded, and they can just leave him alone top. Play through mid, move to bot and try to make early plays with Kaiser North and have control around the track. Hmm. I mean, Gwen would have been quite nice. The only yeah. thing I'm not sure about Fnatic Teamcom is that, right, they kind of wanted to dive in, but now they're more into like stopping. I, I, I'm not sure how to say, right? So I think Noah might have quite of a tough work. Uh, in this one, because I think it's not easy for Kaisa to hit. Unless, right, of course, the G2 is not able to deal any damage with Smolder, which could happen, but looking at how broken this champion looks like, I don't think that will be the case. So. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like, is it careless on the side of Fnatic to leave Smolder open? Because they had a clear objective with the dive composition, had to pivot when they saw Tamkenj, giving a new vibe to the compositions they have. How do you make sure, Broxa, on the side of Fnatic, that you're not going to make the same mistakes that Casey had happened? I think the challenge for them is 
when you play against Smolder, you generally want to control mid, because if you can push yeah. mid, you can move bot, and you can put Smolder behind. Now, with Poppy Salia, they have a good chance of consisting, but it's never going to be easy against Ari and Lee. So they are going to need the mid jungle synergy to be on point and make sure they shut it down so they can go bot and put Smolder behind. Yeah, I feel like I feel like there will be a lot going on in early levels on bot lane because I think G2's bot lane is way weaker mm -hmm. than uh, uh, Fnatic's bot lane. I think Poppy is a pretty good diver if you if you know already, right? If you can like stun the guy on top of the wall, right, and then he cannot use any dashes, it's pretty broken. And I would say that's something that Fnatic will try to do with Talia moving. And I think if they don't manage to do that, I think it will be quite hard for them to play later on. Well, let's find out on the rift, shall we? We are gearing up for Fnatic versus G2, the last game of week. Two casters, over to you. Thank you very much, Laura. I'm Draco, standing next to me is Betty, and we are ready for Fnatic and G2. I kind of thought we were going to immediately get in there. We have a couple, <laughs> couple seconds. I'm fired up. I'm ready. Uh, mostly for mid jungle. I'm going to be honest, there's a lot of things we could talk about. All I care about, really, truly, honestly, yike caps, Razor Cuminoid, battle to the death. Let's get it going. I'm excited. When I think of Razork, I think of Goku. certain. <laughs> I think what? of certain champions. Ah, oh, okay, yes. Echo is the first one. Really? For Not those that don't, that, for those that don't know, Razork was uh, a long time Echo one trick. He's a massive enjoyer of the champion. He was the True. originator of the Nash's Tooth Echo jungle. At least I believe so. That is what my trust me sources. Don't believe, that. <laughs> yeah. believe that Betty um, is a genius. <laughs> yeah. Um, Second champion is uh, Talia. He loves AP junglers. Uh, Talia jungle, when it was in the meta, he was sure. absolutely running rampant on it. Third, Poppy. Hell Poppy yeah. is just a champion that, do you remember when Poppy Trundle was like the meta? I Yamato do. was coach of Fnatic. Like, this was the champion that he loved to get his hands on and something he has so much success with. So, playing up against Yike, in, a, in my opinion, a favorable matchup, I, I'm super excited to see it because I feel like that we've got uh, an. Uh, G2 that is performing right now. Definitely, there are some points of criticism that can be made about their play overall. Early but game. They, uh, they're, they're finding the wins, currently undefeated against their longtime rivals, Fnatic. So here we are, early invade coming out from Fnatic. They Fnatic didn't spot out Yike, who's starting on the Raptors right now. Uh, the ward was there to spot them out, so I'm curious as to how Yike will adapt his pathing. So basically, the call out here is Fnatic have now set up for the split map. Yike can come down, but there will just be less resources for him to pick up here. Might need to do so just to cover a potential dive. You talked about Razork on the Poppy. Most of his big Poppy games are games where he completely takes over in the early game. Oh, yeah. A lot about those early dives, the aggressive flash knockbacks to the wall. See if you can try to set that up once again on the bottom side. I mean, the bot lane already winning in isolation, though, it is important to know. We did hear about that from our analyst there, Sir Brock and Trimby, talking about how Fnatic and uh, Jun do have the advantage. Sorry, Fnatic and Jun. Noah and Jun, I should say, have the advantage in this bot lane 2v2. And you're seeing the trades on your screen right now. Um, this gives them opportunity to set up for the dive. I thought the Razork would actually create the full split map. Right now, he's just doing a full cure on his bot side after stealing away the blue to slow Yike down a little bit. The level 3 is going to tick through, and now here comes the dive. The question is, can they make it work? Set up to crash the stacked wave here. Really hard for Hansel and Nikki to approach. Vision now being cleared out. Yike has to come down here. It does mean that Oscar and Broken Blade are isolated on the top side. Broken Blade does crash that wave and will look to proxy the next. This is good use of the information that Broken Blade does have. He knows there's no one that could be here on the top side of the map. That said, Razor sprinting up to top side to try and punish this. Is oh, nice human. Broken Blade already getting a nice bit of pressure mid lane. Razork, though, choosing not to commit to the dive, wants to actually punish Broken Blade, Blade who's going to do the execute tech. It's a fast base. It is actually the same speed as recalling. Yeah. But faster. Uh, you're right. Maybe that was case, an eight second death an eight timer. Eight second base timer, but you, can, you just dash in, you instantly die, you're good. Now he's back on the map, and he lost nothing for it, um, apart from his KDA. I will be clear here. Baus viewers. That is an objectively good, good death. death. Yeah. Watching the boss does not mean you're just allowed to sprint in every game. That is what a good death looks like. Stop. That was indeed a good death. I agree. Um, Broken Blade going to make his way back to lane. We'll pick up the uh, Amtome. And overall, though, I'm a little surprised. I was expecting Razor to really commit to something like those dives. Humanite had great pressure on the mid wave. 
first time it feels like that I'm seeing Caps on this Ari, and he's really being punished in the matchups that he should be punished in. <laughs> uh, Caps is a player that will actively trade HP with you, and he'll always play on that very edge where you think, he should flash, right? And then he just doesn't. Yeah. Uh, but Humanoid has a lot, well, a very long history of playing against Caps. Caps has an overall winning record against him in the mid lane matchup, but that doesn't mean that Humanoid is afraid to go toe to toe with him. He's found a small lead for now. Knockback oh, there, Yike actually Yike gets that it. one. Level advantage now to Yikes, deals an objective away. So, one for one on the blue bus in the grand scheme of things, but Razork's spending a lot of time there. It's going to feel pretty bad. So, Yike had a camp lead as he moves back to his Raptors. Top side scuttle was secured by Razork. Unlikely that Yike will be able to answer on the bot side. You can actually see the supports fighting over it right now. <laughs> TP going to come in from Han Summer to get back to lane ASAP. And I will say, I don't think it gets easier to dive the Smolder Tom Kench combo, especially as we get closer to level 6. There is still a window of opportunity here, but obviously Mickey running exhaust um, makes it pretty tough. If the initial damage, if the initial combo from a Nautilus and a Poppy together, doesn't hit the proper target. Very easy to fumble on the dive, although this is an excellent start. Hans Stamen now flap, flap, flapping out safety, but lo and behold, here comes Razork. He is able to make it out, backstepping. No CC left for the Tom Kench to stop from escaping. I think that's one of the scary things that Hans Stamen is dealing with right now, is that Razork just feels omnipresent. <laughs> he's, he's just always around. Oh, you took a bad trade? Well, Poppy's here. What's up? And. Uh, Always being forced to play defensively. A very small CS deficit for the time being. But Han Sama, he's okay with the position that he's in right now. Continuing to stack up, he knows that he should be the weak side. Yike's responsibility is to mitigate that pressure. The strength of G2's composition should be their mid-jungle. The skirmishing power that they have at their disposal. Of course, running into the poppy at the wrong place in the wrong time. Like Talia Poppy, it's a Dasher's worst nightmare. That's true. <laughs> Should be undashable in the theory. Lee Sin Ari. We have, we've seen a lot of creative angles for both Yike and Caps, especially on this mid-jungle duo. Um, able to make a lot of early game plays work, especially once level six is reached. Yike getting closer to that point. Caps still has not bought boots, which is a bit awkward here. Part of the reason I think the human like winning out of a lot of these trades is so much easier to, to land your skill shots. I've forgotten the name of the rune, but the one that gives you the potions. Extra potions is the name of the rune. Is it really? Deep? No. <laughs> Forgot it too, never taken. <laughs> I love the confidence that you have. If you there, say though. it, that's one thing I've learned <laughs> from the casters of yesteryear. Sometimes you just gotta say it. Say it with confidence. Yep. Oh yeah, extra no, that's potions. the extra potions. Really. That's the yeah. extra potions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's oh, what right. it does. True. It's called bag of potions. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one gives him adaptive force for 60 seconds. Yep. Um, but the crucial one is the skill point one. Definitely. Hang on a minute. Pullback is good from Oscar. Broken Blade now trying to heal up, but Oscar just gets a quick kill. And meanwhile, Fnatic are taking something else on the bottom side too. Caps now dashing, running. One extra charge left there. Ansama leaping in. Flat, flat, flat. And Jun getting taken down. And the Smolder just getting a ton of snacks. G2 turning this fight beautifully. Humanoid, the flip back not quite going to connect on the Yike. Good well, patience. Yike finishes it. Razork getting taken out too. The stacks just keep coming. And that's three kills for G2 on the bot side. Great solo kill from Oscar in the top lane. Can Mickey make this happen? Knock up. Doesn't That's quite get the no knock one. up though. Han Summer getting a double kill is a worst case scenario for Fnatic. This Smolder is not who you want accelerated. But G2, 2k gold lead now, seven and a half minutes in. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Double six. Summer backing out, throws down the mom. Book does land onto Mickey. Maybe Noah can follow up. He does have access to the ultimate. Taking their time. Hansama needs to back away. Only level 5 for Mickey. Trying to predict where they're going to go. Noah oh. Flaps finishes the kill. Mickey should just be next. They don't want to go for the dive yet. Yike on the way in. You have to keep your eyes on this Lee Sin. G2 just going to back Wait. away. Gwen died again. Excellent punish. Gwen died again. Yeah, I noticed the kills are 3-3. Three to three, and They were like, they were 1-3 and three just a second ago. We'll likely get a replay to understand what happened. But Hans and Mickey, I think they wanted to push in that bot wave before they went for the reset. And they end up getting punished for it. We're going to look back up to the top side. Stacked wave. Broken Blade, clearly not learning his lesson from before. Oscar has the damage to set up for the play. And then here comes Razork. That's Easy peasy. And I really like this from Oscar. You know, we look back at some of the games where he's been put ahead, and it, he hasn't always been able to transition that lead to the rest of the team, but he's playing aggressive into this matchup versus the Gwen. He's looking strong in the individual 1v1, and 
going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, it's a shame we didn't get a replay of that mid fight because uh, obviously the goal there was to catch Caps. Yeah. And he got away with a tiny amount of HP. I think it was the Guardian from Mickey that ended up keeping him alive. Such a close play, but if Fnatic had gotten that initial kill, it could have turned out more favorable. But instead, Smolder picks up two, Lee Sin picks up one. They're going to unlock the first dragon for themselves. And the bot side of that, pretty positive for G2. Oh, I say that. We're actually going to get a replay right now. Okay. Nice pick here from Humanoid. Excellent. The flash in from Razzwick. The chain CC oh is good, God. but he gets the flash. And there's that Guardian keeping him just barely alive. The blue buff resets as well. At this point, Fnatic have committed so much that the re-engage from G2 is enough. Now, again, they're attacking Broken Blade. Pick off. Caps now can try to make it over the wall. Broken Blade living for an extra moment here. The Gwen healing, though, not nearly enough. The knockback from Razor doesn't connect, and that's going to be big. Caps going to at least be able to grab one. He should be able to find the reset. But Oscar Rennet, it's already too tanky. Look at all that MR. Caps doesn't do any damage. The back half of the Orbit of Deception, the only thing that really hurts. He's Yike. healing more than he's taking. Yike, though, can he clean this up? Connects the Q. Goes in. Oh. Nice knockback. Not today, buddy. That's a stop sign. Flick back as well. And that's why we're skeptical about the Ari Lee oh. duo. The interrupts are just so damn powerful. Fnatic coming ahead in the skirmishes. Fnatic, just like that. I thought it was a big blunder in the bot side. and I mean, it was, but they've just turned it on its head. They realized the point of weakness. It's top lane, it's Broken Blade. Losing out in the 1v1, they've now repeatedly ganked him, and they've said, oh, we can make our Cassante unkillable. Look at this, the Kanin Rukun already finished. You talked about that magic resistance. Caps was tickling him. He did not care. He doesn't even have an item yet. Oscar's 800 gold ahead. 0-4-0 for Broken Blade. You said it already. This is going to be tough. All right, what's the number? Oscar currently has 124 magic resistance. 55% reduced, reduced magic damage. Now, of course, Ari does have some true damage on her kit, but against a Gwen, the Gwen is uh, not happy. Also has a little bit of true damage, but yeah. A lot of it, still not true damage, very crucially. And Fnatic, gotta say, after that initial fight went wrong on the bottom side of the map, I thought they were done. Excellent capitalization in the bot lane from Noah and Jun to follow up, to find the first kill, and then consistently good plays around the top side from Oscar in isolation, as well as this with the support of Razork and Humanoid to come back. That said, you still have to respect the mid-jungle duo here. Humanoid laying down the rocks, excellent positioning. Just ensuring that Yike does not have an angle to dash in. Razork there now to cover as well, and essentially an even trade, but more resources committed from the side of G2. Nice play there. Nice patient play from Humanoid. Doesn't get afraid of the charm from Caps. Holds on to his flash and is able to get the nice sidestep. The matchup that has historically been G2 favored is looking good for Fnatic right now. Obviously, the big point of criticism from G2 well, I actually thought this whole year has been their early game. And we've seen them come back, Dracos. I mean, their mid-game, this is the balancing point, right, and why they're still considered the best team in our league, is their mid-game feels untouchable. Most teams just don't even feel like they can keep up. They're so diligent in their vision control. Oh, yeah. They're so good about setting up objectives and finding windows of opportunity to look for picks. And that's kind of why they've earned the benefit of the doubt, which is why I'm just saying right now, Fnatic in a great spot. They're doing everything right. Things are looking good but they need to maintain that performance because it's players like Caps that, <laughs> that always find ways to turn games around. And he's a player you can never afford to underestimate. Undoubtedly voted unanimously as the best mid laner from winter. The only two votes that didn't go to Caps were the votes that G2 placed yes. where they weren't allowed to vote for Caps. And even this split, I believe in all of their wins, Caps has had player of the game in every single one of them. Okay. Yike going in, kickback is good, needs a bit more space, nice knockback. Yike flashes in, but the Q is already gone! He mistimes it! And he gets punished in the meantime, Oscar's taking a tower in the top lane. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, this early game isn't just bad for G2, it's going from bad to terrible. Caps goes in for the charm flash, but Razork is there, and Humanoid is living! G2 are limit testing, and Fnatic are their limit! The mid jungle was what we had our eyes on coming into this game. And Razork and Humanoid are here to play. Incredible stuff. Razork yeets Caps out of the fight with a great ultimate. Humanoid hits him with the knockback. Underneath the tower, I really hope we get a replay of that because I want to understand. Let's look back. So, starts off with Caps, connecting the charm onto Humanoid. 
Looks good initially. Caps goes in with the war jump, tries to get the kick, but the nice interrupt from then the flash. I guess he's trying to get over so he can still connect the second half of his Q, but then the Q wears the Q off. Ah, <sighs> yeah. oh, so the CC was just long enough, and then Caps thinks that he has the damage. Really nice flash here. A single auto attack was all he needed. But he gets CC'd. Elation from the coaching staff, naturally. And a big smile on Humanoid's face. Has to feel good. And you know, Humanoid just levels up. I feel like the better the mid lane opposition, the better Humanoid plays. And Caps, the best in our league. You said it before. Humanoid looking to contest that at least a little bit, show that it is a two-horse race. And that a good setup on the objective should be fine here. The ticking time bomb that always has to be respected is Smolder. And Smolder paired with a clean mid game from G2 is a threatening prospect. So it is on Fnatic to keep the pressure up. I mean, G2's in such a deficit. They don't have a top laner right now. Broken Blade is just being removed from the game. Yep. Which means that Fnatic now no longer have to even consider that as an option. They can just funnel all of their resources into this Razork Humanoid duo. And look at what they're doing right now. Humanoid moved off to a side lane. Noah clearing out midway. Double moving knock the back. Caps now going to be in trouble. Razork going to go in. Knock back into the oh. wall is good. Immediate ball. The flip back is there. He doesn't even get to push any buttons. What's the use in having hands if you don't get to use them? But now the punish from G2. Mickey looking to follow up. Razork wants to try Who's and punish who? He already used the off the flip oh. back. It's still Humanoid, baby. It is all. That is what they call absolute cinema, and it is off the back of Humanoid. They're gonna confirm it into another kill. <laughs> are we watching? An absolute slaughter on the side of Fnatic. You talked about how Humanoid levels up against that opposition, and against G2 today, Fnatic are looking crisp. The fans are on their feet. I say that, I know. <laughs> there the is fans are fan. loud and also uh, sitting. <laughs> Fine, they stood up a lot. Uh, we look back at this play. So Razork, their priority is the tower, or even just the single dive on the caps. Great interrupt. We don't have time. We're back to a solo kill. Broken Blade. Give us the replay again, because we've seen this one Glenn. before. We've seen that. Oh, 5 oh. He's just too far behind. Right. This is this is a slaughter. It is an absolute slaughter. And we already talked about how the comp just limits all this mobility on the side of G2. The poppy, Talia, working wonders at shutting down G2's playmaking potential. And don't let the fact that Noah is building the new flavor of the month, Kaisa build, distract you from the fact <laughs> that Humanoid is absolutely Goomba stomping G2 with the support of Razork right now. Oh. But it does deserve being because it's the new thing. Is LS seen awake? It. Does he know? LS will know. Well, go to LS's Twitter. I'm not. He, 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 all of the context you need is there. TLDR, it does a lot of damage. Um, and it involves a lot more AP. Oh, we're getting the replay. Excellent. Because all we need to see is one this great play one from more, Humanoids. One, one more time. We'll this just... is good. Great stuff. Nice knockback. That initial kill is good. So, G2. Now they're looking to try and get the re engage. There's no wave. Good damage from Han Summer's ultimate. But at this point, it's a bit of an awkward... Look at this knockback. All three members. They one-shot Mickey. He does get a kill onto uh, Jun, but it doesn't matter. There's no way for Hansama to escape to. They wait for the wave. Noah picks up another one. Incredible play from Fnatic. We've talked about it. Fnatic, are they the second best team in Europe <laughs> right now? They were shut down by Mad Lions last split. They've come in on a tear, only losing a single game. They're looking to shut down Chichu's undefeated streak so far in spring. Looking to reignite a rivalry that hasn't felt at the forefront of our minds for quite some time. It is just a single game, but it's an impressive game. On time, of course, continuing to stack up, continuing to scale. 159, not bad by any means. Doing a very good job of continuing to accrue smolder stacks. Fnatic very far ahead. This is the ultimate test. You have a massive lead. This should be your game to win. G2 have been untouchable in the mid game thus far this season and frankly thus far this year. Can Fnatic be the exception? They found one win in our last playoffs. One of only two teams to do so. Charge coming in. Razork Drift King. He's already done so much good this game. He doesn't need anything else, but he wants more. Uh, but there's not really much for him to get. He just hits the wall there, and the Herald will wander in and get a single auto. <laughs> Good job, Shelly. <laughs> um, from the perspective of G2, Fnatic are dominating. They're super far ahead. Uh, the nice thing is if you're a G2 fan, it's very simple to keep track of what G2 want to do. They want time. 
to get items on every champion on their team, but most especially I mean, it's just Smolder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, stat Broken check, Blade is 050. Uh, 168. Yep. Uh, right He's now, doing good. it is all about can this champ really 1v9 a game? I know right now, Kadrill is yelling in his chat. Just don't let Han Sama play. Uh, <laughs> he is the only condition they that have can ruin Fnatic's day right now. All the tools in the world to stop Han Sama from playing the game. Yep. The hard part about it is you just literally can never let him near a minion wave ever. <laughs> but if you don't kill him, he gets stacks from hitting you. So you're kind of... He's got two items. And it's one of those things where, like... I'll tell you right now. I mean, I think you told me today, next patch, Smolder is getting good. Good. Right. I mean, based on, I haven't seen the actual full changes that came through, but I saw the, you know, kind of the tweets that they put oh, out okay, talking okay. about it. Yeah. And they were big hits to so many different areas. On but the it's game. one of those things where, like, people are going to sit there and, like, there are some side that say Smolder's not that OP. There's others that are like, Smolder is truly OP. If Han Sama wins this game from this position, I think there's no argument left. <laughs> We'll have to see how he does it. Context is still king, but... That's true. Yeah, it'll be... The, the, there will be a, a lot of strong copium oh, angles out there about be. G2 just working on their mid-game. Just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, just weren't focusing on their early game, so, you know. I mean, credit to Oscar. He completely bodied Broken Blade. Uh, yeah. I mean, as, as good as Razork and Humanoid have played, Ra or Oscar Renna generated that That's advantage 3 solo. 3.5k gold yeah, lead. He's, yeah. uh, I mean, he didn't generate all of that in isolation, but he got that ball rolling oh, by himself. Oh, yeah. Which is not impossible in Pro League did, of Legends, but it's incredibly impressive. I saw Han Sama hit Oscar with a Q, and I'm pretty sure Oscar gained health. Um, <laughs> Probably. Yes. Hit him with win. another one. Uh, yep. But every time Oscar walks up, he's giving Han Sama stacks. That's which true. He's already at 100. Wait, he's gained 30 stacks since the last time we spoke. Really good at <laughs> Han Sama's really good at doing this. Yeah. To be fair, if you're going to play a Smolder or a Senna, you have to be really diligent about just getting your stacks. Smolder, so, it's a little bit more obvious. What I will say is now I really want to see Fnatic putting the pressure on. You can see them playing through two lanes right now. The waves are a little desync, so the Smolder is just wave clearing. And the thing you've got to remember, this ultimate is just so effective at stalling. Yeah, and they nerfed it. It's 20 seconds more on the cooldown this patch, but still, Hansama's going to wander oh, over nice here. Oh, the ultimate. I love this. The wall this. comes in, but Hansama can ult. He can, can at least But I don't think it'll keep the tower alive. I think Fnatic has secured this. No, they're backing away the way. for a no, second. They're fine, they're fine. Down. You're right, you're right. Good stuff. I do think Fnatic should consider forcing Baron. Not necessarily to uh, create the flip, but to use it as an opportunity to force a fight. We look at the engage tools of Fnatic. They don't have the most reliable engages. I'm not worried about Oscar, even slightly. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, all right. Jun has his hook, has his ult, but kind of like, you, they kind of have to run at G2. Which is why you can use things like Baron or Dragon to force a fight, or even you have Poppy Ultimate to, to do this and Just do exactly what. <laughs> now imagine that red buff is a Baron. Now you're in a good position. I like what you're cooking up here, Vedius. Maybe they're just waiting for Noah to get online. According to LS and his video, it's three items. Hey, that wait, three this items comes online. Yep. You want to make sure that that. Um, more mana, mana mune. Oh, always. Fully stacked. Yeah, yeah. you want to make sure the mana mune is fully Turns stacked. Into into oh, yeah, because more mana gives you more mana. Ah, no. <laughs> that's a good way to remember it. I always forget. Yeah. Um, Just say one and trust that most people don't know the difference. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, the uh, extra potion looks uh, what like. What bag of potions do you mean? <laughs> TM. That's my name <laughs> yeah. for it. You'll see it in the next patch notes. I'm bringing it up with the team. So, Fnatic are gaining control over the top side of the jungle, limiting the vision. And if our observers would be so kind as to show what G2 see right now, you'll notice that it is very quickly dwindling. They have uh, one control ward in the pit, crucially, but that will soon get taken away. Important thing to keep track of. Now the setup going in. When are Fnatic comfortable to pull the trigger? This build from Noah does a lot of damage with the Ws. Obviously, when you connect, you reduce the cooldown. Um, effectively, just an AP Kai'Sa gets the advantages of the Empowered Agathe and Rain as well, so can really lay down a lot of poke. But just a bit of harass. Uh, yeah, our Observer's doing a great job of highlighting the pressure that G2 finds himself in right now. Obviously, Han Sama now at 240 stacks, but the Baron being started off. Jun and Oscar acting as zoning tools while the other three members secure the Baron. Information has been garnered. Now G2 need to find their way in, but how do they get past this wall that is Oscar? It's for a big wall, but Yike's still trying to set his focus on the pit. Humanoid waiting off to the side to deny any potential entry. Yike flash out to safety. Bradzork just goes in, knocks him into the wall. Here comes Mom, but it might not be enough. But Smolder hit 225 stacks, and that could be it. Caps are fighting uh -oh, in the funnel, the uh -oh. fight against Smolder in the funnel, and they haven't knocked him back. He's flap, flap, flapping his way out to safety. 
but his wings cannot take him far enough. Fnatic still winning out on the trade, but they have to be perfect. They have to be flawless. They can't give anything else to the Smolder. They've only lost Jun. Fnatic still have four members alive. This should be an uncontested Baron. They played that Baron to perfection, completely limiting Yikes options. It felt like that he did everything that he could, right? War jump, the flash, but it just wasn't enough. We look back, Oscar acting his own control. He gets CC'd. Yike now trying to sidestep the knockback, flashes away, but then Razor being the final nail in the coffin. The ultimate hit from Hansama was devastating. He melts through Jun. But look at how quickly Mickey, he's the one trying to peel for his top laner, but then it's he who drops. And the burst damage from this Kai'Sa build is just disgusting. When you move uh, to the pinch like that against the Big grin on Humanoid's face. I, this is the big. I, this is the most I have seen Humanoid smile in quite today. some time. <laughs> he is very happy to be here right now. 5-1 and 6 on the Talia. Fnatic with an impressive performance. There was only a single blunder. It was when they tried to catch Caps out around this bottom river. They dropped three kills, but then immediately they bounce back, get two of their own. A lot of their success is being driven by the top side of the map. Oscar Rinnan working with Razork to shut down Broken Blade, find successes on his own. But really, that mid 2v2 is what swung it. We talked about it on the Alice test. We talked about it coming into this game. We wanted to see Razork Humanoid versus Caps Yike. And Humanoid and Razork just got the better of them today. Certainly did. And at this point in the game, it's just nigh impossible for G2 to play. Yike now sprinting for his life, needs to make it out. Okay, how much damage can they do to Oscar here? A little bit. They do a little bit. A little I mean, bit. Problem is, Oscar does the thing that Oscar does, and many Cassantes do, to be fair, but I love it. Oh, he has a locket. Yeah, he builds. He just starts building support items. <laughs> because he knows it's not about him. He won his lane. He just wants to set up his carries, because Noah does a hell of a lot of burst damage if he's ever allowed onto an isolated target. And he's Kaisa, so he will be allowed onto an isolated target. Set up. Flick back is there. Mom showing up. But she's not very menacing. Fnatic moving in, getting the single pick, taking down the inhibitor. Fnatic do not fear the dragons today. They will unlock the bot lane inhibitor. The Baron wearing off in about a minute's time means that Fnatic can probably still get one more objective out, the, out of this. Maybe they can destroy that mid tier two. Hansama continuing to stay, scale as quickly as he can. This AP Kaisa fully online now. And it's a shame we don't have the damage breakdown of AD versus AP. I would imagine with this build, Noah's going to be doing a lot more AP damage, largely driven by the poke from your W, but yeah, I imagine saying. that it's quite mixed. Yeah, because you get the actives, obviously, of the, of the Murrow mana. Those procs are physical. The Akathian rain is always physical, even though it does scale off. But I, yeah, plus you get the passive attack from second skin. I, I think you're right. Probably like 60, maybe whoa, 70% magic. Whoa, whoa, magic. whoa. Razog losing 50% of his HP there. And this is the respect that Fnatic still have to show. Still, though, there's a two-level difference between the AD carries. Oof. But that's the damage right yep. there. And that's without the proc. If another one hits, Caps is in trouble. Oh, just get, oh uh, okay. AP Kaiser. Yes, we thought we'd abandoned this era, but we're back. <laughs> Damn, no, it was precise. I mean, doesn't okay. it also work that if you hit it, it reduces the cooldown yeah, 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 as well? It's like yep. a two-second cooldown if you hit it. It's, it's essentially zero cooldown. Smolder, smoldering. Will just delete the wave. Razor. Really smoldered. Wants a bit more time on the tower, though, and enough lockets are here to ensure that Fnatic should be able to secure the tier two, but has to be a little bit careful. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yup, 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 yup. Oh, okay. Every time it hits a minion, G2 breathe a sigh of relief and know they have six more seconds before it Ellis is again. so happy right now. He's getting so many just clips for his next video. It's just, just validated. <laughs> He's been waiting. <laughs> No, it's what? so good, it single-handedly beat you <laughs> That's, That's the, the title of the, the YouTube title, video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have no context needed. Mouth open, just this build <laughs> in the background. The yeah. YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> We've been learning that on Euphoria. <laughs> Dramatic facial expressions. Mr. Uh, B showed us the way, now we all must follow suit. <laughs> There's only one YouTube thumbnail. Now here comes the Talia wall once more to begin the siege. All right. Yeah, like not quite able to connect on the Sonic Wave there. Fnatic again really set up to just take this tower without being contested. Midwave needs to be cut out. Hook on hook. the Caps! Mickey luckily there to save the day. Good heads up from Jun to put the ulti onto him. Caps now trying to go back onto Razor. Good little bit of damage. Yike really can't do much of anything. Broken Blade finally starting to hurt, but not enough! And now Smolder, Conan, Mom. You should find a bit more space. Again, Mickey already taken out. 
Fnatic with a 14 gate gold lead, this should be easy, but again, this is credit to G2 for slowing it down as much as they have. Fnatic are playing with the utmost respect, do not want to flip anything. Know that the win is theirs if they play it out controlled and collected. I mean, absolutely, it is their game to lose. They know there's another dragon spawning in a minute and a half. Another hit inhibitor down means that they can just take their time. Fourth item completed, there's the death cap for oh. Noah. That's this. That's going to hit like a, this is Aram Kaisa now. This is going to hit like a truck. Ten stacks on the Dark Seal as well for Humanoid. Bit of a shame he didn't upgrade that into the... Uh, and again, like in eyes. a different game, we know he would have. <laughs> he definitely would have. But again, a lot of respect, <laughs> I think, being paid for Fnatic and G2, despite oh, yeah. their massive advantage. They are fully locked in right now. Fnatic want to end this game out cleanly. Now we're about halfway to level 16. We'll unlock the final point in his ultimate. But we've sung the praises of every Fnatic member, really. They've been having a great game overall. Everyone's doing good. Okay, I, I think, though, that as much as we highlighted Razzik and Humanoid, just a reminder that Oscar, in isolation against Broken Blade, built this lead for himself. And it is a big reason as to why Razork and Humanoid were able to take so much control in this game. I will say, I feel like we've gone back. I forget what season it was. Jungle is building support items again. You know that? <laughs> Lock we always it. Come full Knights circle. out. We do indeed. Oh, yike. yike. He's dead. Gonna get taken out here. Noah goes in. Big burst damage. And Kathy and Rain gonna finish the job as Noah is now unstoppable, and that means access to the Drake for Fnatic. Excellently timed. I mean the pick. Baron spawning right Baron, now. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah. He's. Uh, I mean they can get the soul too if they want. If they want to do this full tutorial style. Two members of Fnatic already moving to cover I mean, that option. This for is. G2. I mean, I, it's a. It's, again, it's a near perfect game. Zero towers lost. Zero grubs conceded. They did lose a Drake. Five kills down as well, but the undefeated G2 getting near flawlessly stomped by Fnatic. Incredible game. And uh, Smolder not enough. You know, pre hopix he would have had like 30 extra autos on that E. It might maybe 20 seconds on cooldown. I don't think matters too much at this point in the game, but 425 stacks on a level 15 Smolder with three and a half, maybe four items now that he's had a bit more time to farm. Uh, not enough to get through this Fnatic lineup. What else is there to say, really? It's a matter of time. Fnatic playing the patient side. They have everything. Soul, Baron. Now they just need the team to group and end the game. They have the super minions pushing in top. I think that bot, yeah, the bot have just respawning. You can see the time is just above our mini map. Fnatic have their eyes on mid, though. And this is the last line of defense for G2. Level 16 secured for a few members. Oh my gosh, look at the poke damage. Kaisa poke versus Smolder poke. <laughs> The wave clear is still a problem. I feel like Fnatic can't fully commit five MS here. Yeah, nice. They've sent Humanoid Bot. He has the ultimate ready. Wouldn't be surprised if he throws that down. Like, they've done a really good job of using Talia Wall to just siege. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Close. Server's teasing us. That would have probably been like 30 to 40% upon Thomas Health Bar. Here Does we go. Have... Talia Wall. Here we go. Nice. Isolating. Hansama going to have to fly, fly, fly. Does get on the right side of the wall, but they managed to catch out. Cavs, knockback is there, coming in two. They're trying to buy a bit more space. Mon comes down to the top, and it's just not going to do anything. Broken Blade laying down a couple of daggers, but already the pick getting kicked off. Mickey going to get picked off as well. The shield still keeping him alive for now, but Oscar's already into the back line. Cavs, though, trying to fire back. Jonas get taken down, and Hansama's still up. Cavs dashing forward. One more stack left. Fnatic trying to break through the base. Fnatic looking to end the game right here. They've got the Chemtech Soul. G2 need to retreat. Hansama, the only one on the front line, has to be careful. If anything hits him, he drops and G2 lose. Very tense Sama final moment. Flash still. He is sidestepping all of this damage. The inhibitor's gonna fall. G2. Overall, a very solid fight for them. Their base is in tatters, but it's making Fnatic uncomfortable. They see how low the health bars are, and they're gonna back away. G2 have managed to keep the game alive. And if you are a Fnatic fan, now's the time to be a little worried. Not so worried. Yeah, we talked about the 500 CS uh, Sivir win condition, and we talked about the 500 stack Smolder win condition, because so Hansan was at 470. Look at Yike, he tries to make a play onto Noah, doesn't quite get the kick off, ends up kicking Jun in, loses his life, but gets the flash out from Noah. A lot of damage done onto Noah, though, means that he can't quite get the damage that he wants to. Does land a big W onto Mickey. But then Caps and Hansama on the backside get very close to getting a kill onto Humanoid. He plays at the very edge of his range, though. 
Already Fnatic back out to oh, the map. going in. Fnatic wants the Thunderdome. They want the 5v5. Oscar waiting over the wall. Knock back onto Han Summit, but he doesn't hit the wall. Crucially, cast down, dashing away. Mom now coming into the top. Noah off to the backside. Keep your eyes on Yike. The flight coming in for the lease in. Han Summit knocked up. Oscar now looking to finish the job. Vicky coming through, though, with the Devourer. Caps getting lower and lower, but still living for a brief moment. Extra humanoid now legendary. Han Sama spitting hot fire, but it's not hot enough. Razor finds the angle. Noah takes him down. Finds his prey in the final moments. And Fnatic. They'll finish the job. They'll move up to 4-1. They'll bring G2 down and tie the score at the top of the table. A smiling humanoid after an impressive performance from Fnatic. 25 kills to six. A dominating performance. And the mid jungle, really the pride and strength of this G2 roster being shut down by Razorg and Humanoid. You can vote for your key player of the game at LEC, Onyx, Oscar Rinnan, Razorg, and Humanoid. All very great options. I think they all played incredibly well. And I think good job for Fnatic. You know, they punished the picks that G2 brought out. They punished the scaling option in the Smolder, and they just did not let up. They did not give G2 a single avenue back into the game. Give it up for Fnatic, everybody. And for G2, you know, back to the drawing board. A little bit more temperance, a bit more maybe respect moving forward up in their Fnatic matchups. A lot of people are already wondering, you know, now that NRG is not going to MSI, have they taken their foot off the gas? <laughs> you know, <laughs> were they resting easy? Realizing their greatest opponent had already been eliminated, forgetting about their former greatest opponent, Fnatic. I mean, I definitely think that people were concerned. Is this just going to be an easy split for G2? You know, they won winter, yeah. they're maintaining that form, but Fnatic saying, nope. We've recognized the mistakes of our winter split. We're definitely on form, and they showed it here today. 4-1, as you rightly said, tying it up with G2, both now sitting at the top of the table. Going to make that race and fight into playoffs so much more exciting. Usually, five is the cutoff for playoffs, usually. So both these teams on track to secure that spot in top eight. They certainly are. Of course, later on PGL Lore, we'll be joined by Razork, Yike, and Broxa for a jungle round time round table. But first, Ginny, the standing boy, standing boy with Humanoid. I can't speak, but Ginny, I certainly hope that you and Humanoid can. Okay, standing boy. I mean, we do have a standing boy here, Humanoid. Thank you so much for joining me for the interview. Congratulations on your win. Um, just to put it into perspective, I'm sure you guys are very proud of yourselves, but to further show it off, um, the last time Fnatic won against G2 in the regular season was in spring 2023. So that was a year ago. Oh, wow. I didn't yeah. even know that. So you must be very proud right now. Yeah, I mean, it feels good to win against them always. So, yeah. Okay, looking particularly at the team's performance and the team's morale after this, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty high. So far, spring has been really great for you guys. What has been that transition like from winter into spring? What's been the focus? Uh, I think our main focus was to play better in the mid game. Because uh, last split, we were kind of just, everyone was just doing their own thing and we didn't play as a team. So we worked a lot on our macro and I think it shows a bit in our matches. So yeah. What has it been for, like for you as the mid laner in terms of focusing on the macro, focusing on these mid games more? What, what does that bring from your gameplay side of things? Uh, I mean, I'm mainly just trying to go which side we play on. Uh, for me, that's my role basically. And other than that, I'm just trying to you know, play, play team fights well, and that's it. Well, you guys have been doing that really well as well. In terms of gelling together as a team and having a, a prolonged period of time coming from winter into split into spring, not any changes coming through. How has that been for you as a mid laner as well? Does it just make you more comfortable? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I kind of don't like when every single year there's just changes in the team and you have to kind of start from yeah. from the start. So. Uh, being able to play for a longer time, even though we play together only for one year, most of us play together for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it feels good and we are really comfortable together. On the other side of the coin though, there are teams who have made a couple of changes coming into spring. Do you think that could also be bringing something positive to that? Uh, I mean, I think the teams that finish low understandings, they for sure should uh, change stuff because it's obviously not working. So uh, I think it's positive for them, yeah. All right, that's good to know. And when you're looking at yourself, you're looking at Fnatic, you're looking at how well you guys have been doing so far over spring, what is the end goal? Uh, well, it's to win the LEC for sure, mm -hmm. for now.
Okay, that's, and in terms of looking forward to, I think, again, G2 is a team that's been highlighted a lot in terms of how they're performing locally, and there have been questions whether or not there is going to be competition for them. Obviously, now there is, you guys being that competition. When it, are you thinking about the international stage? Do you have anything in mind for that? Uh, well, for sure, we want to go to MSI, right, and do well there, but uh, I think first, we just focus on the LEC now, and uh, the MSI win will come after. Do you guys feel invincible right now? Uh, no, I don't think so. We just won one game. I don't think that means that much. Uh, but uh, we feel like we are strong, so it's fine. You guys have proven it. So well, we have Razork on the other side with Bor. He's been doing incredible as well. Anything you want to say to him before we toss it over? Uh, yeah, keep playing well, bro. That's oh, keep it. playing well, bro. Thank you so much. Lore, back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeannie. And uh, welcome to this very jungle-oriented PGL. Yike. Thank you for joining us as well. Razwag, first things first. Do you want to answer to your mid laner and what he was saying? You've been playing well. Do you agree on the fact that you've been playing well? Uh, well, I mean, I think lately I've been performing more uh, consistent. And yeah. it's something that I've been lacking uh, the past year. So, yeah, I'm proud of that, but I think I'm not playing perfect. I still need to learn and grow a lot. So I want to know what you worked on to practice consistency, but we'll touch on this later. I want to talk about the game. Yeah, <laughs> what is your read on what happened here today? Yeah, I mean, I think we used a hard game. I think we did a pretty good early game, yeah. but then they kind of snowballed and they had good picks after listening to Pop Italia, which is which are not the best. I mean, yeah, uh, I played it the first day versus BDS, mm -hmm. and it worked out better. But yeah, this game, they punished me a lot more. Roxa, when we, we did the draft at the desk, right? And we knew what the win conditions were on both sides and what both teams needed to do to pick up the win. What, what is your read on what G2 could have done better, maybe? And where was Fnatic's spot on here today? I think both drafts had like pretty clear win conditions. It felt like both sides got exactly what they wanted. Yeah. G2 was relatively predictable going for the Lee Ari, I would say, but you guys obviously had the Lee probably responding to it. And I think Fnatic just gaining control over mid lane, translating into bots. And there was one big bot dive, especially where you ulted everybody out and you guys got like four kills after that point. With the draft that G2 had, it was just really hard for them to bounce back. Last time you guys won uh, against G2 was in spring last year, in a best of one. Oh yeah, in a best of one, yeah. Yeah. Did, did you realize that it has been that long? Uh, no, like in a best of season? one I didn't realize. I mean, the last uh, match I remember against G2 is just the best of three that I, yeah. I thought it was very close series. And uh, yeah, I didn't realize that we didn't win in a best of one yeah. for so long. I mean, it's so much different, honestly, prepping for best of fives and best of one. Who do you think was the best player today on Fnatic's side? On Fnatic's side, I think, honestly, Everybody had, had their moments. I mean, top lane looked uh, pretty rough for Broken Blade today. He yeah. did another fun on Gwen. I think the Puppy had some moments. Humanoid had some insane Talia Ws. But all in all, it was actually a pretty good team effort, I think. He does love his Talia. And he got the player of the game here today. Anything about Marek's performance? I know that when we talked during the interview, he was telling me that he was self-reflecting a lot and uh, second-guessing himself as well. I know that the transition between winter and spring has not been the easiest for him. Anything on your mid laner's progress and journey to get back to the form he has now? Uh, yeah, I mean, him himself said uh, that last split he was not uh, very happy with, with his performance and he was like really looking forward to change that. And I think right now he's very motivated. He also likes spamming a lot solo queue. And when uh, Humanoid and is like motivated and <laughs> loves the game, I know he's a beast. And yeah, I'm really proud of yeah. his performance so far and I hope he keeps going. I, I love that you were pointing this out because I know that it's, for me, like a backstage discussion that I love that it's bringing up on it. He's been playing since the beginning of the year, consistently, and he's actually trying hard, which is amazing to see for us viewers. What is going to be the learnings from this week? Yike. Uh, we have tomorrow still. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we had the game yesterday, which I think was a pretty good game. I think we had a very good draft that game, and mm -hmm. it was hard for him to play. We had the Yarvan into Vars Oriana, and then today we had a bit worse... Uh, like the like a bit harder like mid jungle than probably before because they have the Talia Poppy into Lee and yeah. yeah they can just we couldn't really snowball mid as much as we like to do. All right. Well, let's leave the LEC behind for now. I gathered you guys today to talk about the jungle <laughs> in general. 
inspirations, aspirations, what we think of the state of this role in League of Legends right now. So first things first, level of jungles in the LEC. And before coming to you guys, I'm going to ask the retired player. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for framing you like this. But we have two active players and we... How would you want to be presented? It works. All right. I'll, I'll take it. That's fine. I'm basically an, retired. An OG jungle legend of uh, well, of Europe, Roxa. What do you think of the new generation now that you get to see them from a different angle? I think it's it's a pretty good time to be a jungle main watching yeah. the LEC. Um, you know, I watch the two of you a lot going into today's matchup, and what I like is you know the aggression, the proactivity. And even in a farming meta, something that you two are really good at is like skipping camps, finding creative openings. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Yankos, we have a Yoya. Uh, the jungle pool is pretty stacked generally. And I think what makes a jungle unique is just being able to find those openings regardless of, of game or champion. And we have a lot of junglers that are really yeah. good at that. I, I do agree on this. I feel like junglers in Europe are going to be more innovative, maybe, than in the past, especially with the, the examples that you brought up here. Is it something that you feel as a jungler who's been playing the league for years now? Uh, I mean, I feel like jungle is like the role that gets the less fun champs, like when <laughs> they get released. Someone agrees. Like yeah. I think the only fun champ we got was Diego, and it was so long. But the, on a good, on another side, like. When um, li uh, randomly rioters decide to put X champ on jungler, for example, they buff brand passive damage on monsters, mm -hmm. or they just make randomly Morgana and Rel <laughs> jungle. So yeah, I mean we get that, but we don't get fun champs in jungle. We have to play Maokai, Sejuani a lot. Do, do you yeah. miss like the the Lee, Elise, Nidalee, Castle? Yeah, that meta was mega fun. Whoever faces Elise who, insta fun. one shot. Relatable, relatable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, early gang tops, Elise, Renekton. It was not fun to watch as a viewer, honestly. I'm glad that we don't have this anymore. Yeah, I mean, you, you know you know a lot about not having fun, sadly. <laughs> do you agree yeah. on meta here? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think the meta is a bit it's a bit slow for younglers right now. I mean, there is still some like Lee Sin, like Poppy, I think Playmaker, like making Youngers, but uh, we see more like you know the champ like Rel, like Jarman is like kind of a bit of both. He's like a bruiser, but yeah. he's uh, also like a bit of a, like a frontline jungler. There's Rel, Seriani, like these champs. So okay. right now it's like kind of kind of slow. Uh, I remember when I joined the LEC, like the standard thing to do as a jungler was just buff. Uh, camp buff, and then you double free gank somewhere. Like I was literally running around playing mobility boots, at least running from lane to lane. Now it's like really farm heavy in comparison. Do you guys think that's a good or a bad thing? Would you like to see more of a balance between farming and ganking? What's your take? Uh, I mean, in my opinion, I personally didn't like too much the three camps both sides into both dive over and over, and you never touch your blue side camps. That was honestly for me not fun. It was the mal rank meta, I call it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I agree. I, agree. <laughs> I mean, I feel like right now you can like innovate more and be more creative uh, and be like find, finding a balance between farming and ganking. And also I think uh, with the new void crabs adding up, you can like get a lot of XP with this camp. I feel like you can take one, then leave, you know. So yeah, I think you can be much more creative since there is always something that you can do on the map, right? There is like not very much time with, with you having zero camps up or objectives. So you are always busy, let's say. You mentioned grabs. I kept on hearing since the beginning of the seasons that grabs are not actually as useful as we think they are. And actually, it's just like a dopamine shot for junglers because they get to do something else and focus on another side of the map. Would you agree on this? That grabs are a bait, actually, as an objective. Mm, as an objective, probably. I think people don't really like talk about grabs as like, oh, we need to get grabs for the objective, yeah. like a dragon or you know a herald or something, like a Nash. But you cannot take it as like, yeah, you go take one, you get some XP, you're happy. <laughs> That's like how I see it. Yeah, I think it depends on what you look at, yeah. how, how you look at it, really, because it's basically like another camp, but if you choose between a dragon or a void grub, generally dragon, dragon is usually yeah. better. Yeah, I, I would agree on this. Um, you guys were talking about pathings and everything and how to stay on top of your game and being more creative. I want to talk about inspirations that you may have. If you want to get, if you want to learn something new, if you want to, I, I don't know, if you look at someone else and how they're, gonna, they're playing and you say, I don't know, I want to implement this in my team or in the LEC. Who are going to be the biggest inspirations you have, player-wise, not just region-wise? Who do you I mean, For me, it will be Canyon. I've already looked at his field sticks clear. <laughs> Quite interesting. All Maybe right. I pull it next week. Who knows? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yikes. Um, how to say, I think I try to look at like the probably best teams. So like I like to look at the owner, I like to look at Peanut. But I think it's... 
a lot of like the standard things in like the Asian teams is also that they full clear a lot. They full clear and then yeah. they do stuff on the map. So it's hard to learn like so much. But when you do something like crazy, I think they do it like very well. I also think that, Brox, I don't know how it was for you back then, but for me, taking inspiration in other regions and other junglers is always hard because you don't have the same teammates next to you. The teams don't play the same way against you as well. So what is the, what is the amount of inspiration and practice that you can get from watching someone else and trying to implement this into your playstyle realistically? I think if you watch somebody enough, you're always going to find specific patterns or paths that they yeah. do on certain champions. It's the same if you're like a silver solo queue player, but you're watching a pro uh, streamer, right? Like you're going to have to find something that they do consistently so you can copy it, copy it, try it in your own games, and then you'll find out what works and what doesn't. I mean, for me, uh, back in my young days, it yeah. was like score, ambition that I would study and, uh, you know, I remember 2017, there was tank meta for a while. I had no clue how to play tanks. Like, I only played carries in solo queue. So I was like, score, okay, how does he play Sejuani? Oh, this is pretty smart. I'll try that as well. <laughs> Don't copy his mites. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's kind of the issue with, uh, with score. What is the jungler that gave you the worst time and the hardest time internationally? Uh, actually, I don't know. And why? Know. Same question for uh, all of you. Yeah, I'm thinking as well. Uh, I can start. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for me, 2017 Worlds, Ambition. We never got to play them on stage, but that was the year that Samsung won Worlds. Was it and when Ezreal could be Ezreal played? Jungle yeah, was okay, playable okay. back then, but I, I just it. remember it so clearly. Like It's the only time of my career where I felt like the game was unplayable. And the fun part was we played one scrim block against Ambition. We couldn't play the game. Like It was completely doomed. <laughs> then they put in Haro, and I was like, oh, yeah, now okay. I can breathe. Now I can actually participate. You, Yike? <laughs> So it's I would more say, recent, yeah, yeah, I only played like one year of international, but I would say probably like I think soon, soon was probably okay. uh, yeah. probably one of the like toughest ones because I played with him probably the most, and I thought he was actually very good. I think in MSI I had the best shot, like I think I played very like good against him, but then the Worlds I think he played he played very good, and it was hard to like keep up with him. And then other than that, I think there was there was one more I was thinking about. Oh yeah, I think Piosik was actually, like, at worst, Piosik was, like, smurfing <laughs> every game. Whenever I scrimmed with him, it was, like, 1-9. This guy is insane, Yeah, I feel, really. Like, it's hard to predict what he's going to do. Razmark, any international jungler that gives you a hard time or a reality check? Uh, probably Tarzan <laughs> for me. Yeah? I think the game I played against him when I had Talia and Sherman, I don't know, I just couldn't play that game. But I think I, I ended, like, 0-6. <laughs> yeah. It was unplayable <laughs> it was for me. was not great. Yeah. Do you get a reality check when you play internationally? The first time, at least. I, I, I do hope that you guys improve after that. I think no matter what year you come into, like, MSI at Worlds, like, your entire team is yeah. just going to get a reality check for the first week. It feels like, as a European, you know... We, we can learn things within our region, but when you play LCK and LPL, the first week of a boot camp, you're just catching up, learning as much as you can. And then you need to hope that the team as a whole doesn't fall apart yeah. mentally, but that you instead, you know, kind of rebuild and come back stronger. I want to pivot to how it is to play as a jungler for the rest of our lanes. Like when I had a similar discussion with the supports, we talked a lot about AD carries, of course. I want to ask you, what is the worst and most difficult role to look after? Which ones are going to be the most demanding? Or whether it's in solo queue or competitive, choice is yours. Probably bot lane for me. <laughs> you were going to say this. But do you mean like AD specifically or just AD and support? Probably AD <laughs> specifically. <laughs> okay. I mean, supports are pretty chill sometimes. Sometimes they're annoying, but supports are like pretty chill. But yeah, AD is probably like ask for the most, you know, because they don't want to. They don't want to get punished. They don't want to get dove or anything like that. So okay. it makes sense. For me, support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're uh, supposed to work together. <laughs> but I get very annoyed in solo queue when supports are like master tier <laughs> in my games and they're like four minutes without wards and I'm like, please recall for wards and they get the, the full map is just dark. Yeah. Yeah. I get very annoyed when they are like not moving and enemy young, enemy support is actually pressuring me a lot. Mm -hmm. It's completely unplayable and it, it frustrates me a lot. But yeah. Support AD. We stay on bot lane here mostly. <laughs> Well, I, I, I thought it would be solo laners, honestly. No, I mean, I think for me, uh, it's most often the AD carries that are acting out. I often picture them like a bit like a toddler in a sense, expecting the support and jungler to be the mom and yeah. dad, taking care of them, feeding them. If you don't, uh, you know, give them back scratches once in a while, they just go completely nuts in chat and I have to quickly, you know, block them. <laughs> <laughs> Roxa, you were telling me a few days ago that for you, nobody understands junglers and I want you to elaborate on this. Do you guys think that people don't understand your needs or the role in general? So so I think as a jungler both 
especially in pro play, but also in, um, no, especially in solo queues. Yeah. Oh, sorry, but also in pro play to an extent, it's like everybody's pulling us. Everybody wants our attention. Like yeah. maybe one game in scrims, you decide I'm gonna path the top, and then bot lane plays like complete maniacs and dies to e two, and then you have a 15 minute discussion about why going top was actually okay. Yeah, jungle um, diff in my book. Yeah, <laughs> That's it's like no matter what we do, there's yeah. always something that can go go wrong, right? Yeah. But Would you agree on this? Yeah. You have to extinguish fire all the time. I mean, it's very easy to play in the jungler, like especially <laughs> in solo queue. If you ever go to a lane, the other two lanes are not gonna be happy because if the enemy jungler is there, they will they will just flame you. That's what happens. All right, I want you guys to give me a few advice for the people, lovely people at home who are watching here and would like to get better at jungling. Remember that we're all really bad. Uh, well, I think most important thing as a jungler is be really efficient with your time. Okay. In my opinion, I feel like. Uh, Considering how fast you clear, it can impact a lot, right? Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, probably for low elo, just like gank a lot, probably you will get a lot of kills. Well, I play Zyra jungle. How do I gank? No, <laughs> th then you just farm. <laughs> yeah. If you play Zyra, you just farm. Yeah. But like in solo queue, if you are like learning jungle, you really need to be looking at lanes and try to understand a bit the waves and when you can gank, when you can't. And uh, if you play Zyra, you have to like full clear and then get strong so you can carry the game, right? Yeah. But you will have more success in solo queue in low elo if you play champions like Shin Thao, Lee Sin Biego and just gank okay. over Listen. and over. We need hands to play Lee Sin. You forget about this. Most uh, of us yeah, don't have true. them. But yeah, anyway. Um, Yike, any advice for you? Yeah, I mean, now I'll probably uh, like kind of similar, you know, I think you should focus on yourself and also not get like too distracted by like laners asking for ganks. If they like spamming to gank, if you actually know it's not good, then you shouldn't like go for it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you need to kind of know the balance of ganking and farming. The worst and best thing about your role, Roxa first. The worst thing? Yeah. Getting cyber bullied every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the destiny you chose, though. I think best thing is you have yeah. a lot of control over the early game. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever be able to like main any other role i think because like let's say i play top lane and i get camped by the jungle the entire early game i feel so powerless but now i'm the one playing like 5d chess and and you know being able to make the decisions i think that's pretty cool yeah i agree best and worst thing about your i can yeah i can agree with brox honestly i feel like the fact that you can impact every lane it's uh that feeling of power <laughs> it's good and probably the worst thing uh i mean i get really tilted when people just tell me help me or ping and gank and it's just not good you know and then i'm just wasting time it's like i try to not follow what they're telling me but sometimes you just like go and then it's really bad that frustrates me a lot because i'm like oh i knew i shouldn't go here and now i wasted 30 seconds and that time is so valuable for me so i i think one of the most um you know commonly asked questions i get from other junglers playing solo queues yeah. like how do you carry a game when all your laners, it feels like nobody wants to win. Yeah, that's the thing. Do you have any, like, uh, you know, specific, uh, you know, pieces of advice for that? Like, yeah, like, what do you do if everybody's losing? How do you carry that solo queue game? Yeah, I mean, I think it's <laughs> it's it's hard for us youngers too to win the game. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think you don't FF. I think you try to just, I think you try to play for yourself and then you try to just pick one lane and try to help, like, help them most. Like, if you know a bot lane, usually it's bot lane is easier, easier because <laughs> it's two. You make sure the support helps you and then you and the support try to carry together. I do hope that people are going to have more sympathy for you guys and be <laughs> <laughs> nicer to you guys in game. You had some questions from your chat, I believe. Brought yeah, I, I brought a couple of your, uh, of your questions. Um, we've actually been through two of them already randomly. Yeah. Uh, the final one would be, if you had to play one single jungle champion for the rest of your life, Ooh. who would it be and why? And why? I mean, for you? Easy, easy answer is Biego, no? Yeah. yeah. It's the same for me. For you as well. Yeah, I mean, you have the phone case, actually. Yeah, oh. yeah I have the Biego phone <laughs> case, actually. It's kind of funny. Awesome. But yeah, Biego, I mean, I would also like... I think Kiana, when she was OP younger, I think she was very, very fun. Yeah. But she's not OP anymore. What about Silas? Silas Jungle was also Oh, Silas Jungle fun. was actually so fun. That's yeah. kind of like awful Diego. to play against, honestly. Yeah. It was With the EQ interaction, yeah. that was also mega fun. You could combo it. Interesting yeah. choices. I think for solo queue, I would personally choose Elise, but that's mostly because I love to just, you know, you don't have to farm, you just run from lane to lane, force gangs, kill people. You yeah. can just always force something. But you could get really kind of bored, no, lately? Like if you play all the time Elise, 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 but if you play Biego, you cannot play all champs, You no? play all champs, yeah. yeah. Yes and no. I mean, I think uh, the transformation and old part of yeah. you was really cool, but I would get bored of the base kit because his uh, base maybe, abilities yeah. are not that exciting. 
True. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Debatable. Let's focus on the LEC again. And yeah, we can. We can. <laughs> no, I, I love the talks we had here, but uh, I want to hear your thoughts on the last day uh, of the week. We're getting closer to playoffs. We don't have a lot of games in the regular season, so let's take a look at what we have on our hands tomorrow for uh, the last day of... Oh, behind us, actually. That's great. Uh, BDS, Heretics, Vitality, Fnatic, G2, GX, and Rogue, Mad Lions, Koi, and we're going to wrap the week with SK. Casey, that was hard to say. Which match you, do you have your eyes on, Broxa? I'm guessing you have your think yeah, Rogue own Mant games is uh, <laughs> kind of spicy by the way, <laughs> for both teams because I, I guess like whoever loses that match is kind of in bomb. a not a good position for yeah. the next week because one five not very. What happened to my Lions though? It's I don't hard. know. Yeah, it's hard no? to say. I don't know. Roxa, where do you have your eyes? Uh, on I was there? looking at Fnatic Vitality. How do you feel going into that? I feel pretty confident. I think we scream a lot of vitality, and I think they are not the best in screens, but they are four-one somehow. So I mean, I'm not gonna underestimate them tomorrow. Yeah. I'm gonna try hard so much, and I hope t my team does the same. But I'm expecting a win, yeah. Yike, Monday not so fun day tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, due to Monday, but I mean, we lost today, so maybe that makes us win tomorrow. You want to make mean, it better? Yeah, sure. yeah we play with Giants, so and they're one four. They're one and four. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. I think the most important for us is to not underestimate them, not get uh, too cocky or anything like that, and then I think we should have it. Bottom of the bottom of the standings is really stacked right now, Frogsa. So. Um, how I do you? Where? Uh, same question I asked you at the beginning of the day. Actually, in the bottom of the standings, where do you see the most hope now that we saw these teams play with the expectations we had? I honestly think there's hope for all teams in the league right now, all ten, because I feel like. A lot of teams have shown a lot of proactivity and aggressive plays, but it seems like something just clicks in most people's brain, making them forget that side lanes exist, forgetting to play macro, just yeah. over eagerly forcing Baron or forcing fights. And I think if you can get past that point and just, you know, slow things down, play macro and, and play slow and controlled, you're going to have a pretty big advantage. And it's easier said than done because when yeah, you game, it's, it's stressful and Getting all. Getting caught in the moment. But, yeah. but I, I think that would be a big step. We'll see about this tomorrow, of course. Razork, thank you for dropping by. And thank Yike, you. thank you for coming. I know thank it's you. not a, always easy after a loss. And Roxa, yeah. amazing to have you as always. And thank you guys for watching at home. We will be back tomorrow. Same place, not same place, actually. Not in this studio, downstairs. But same time, though. Uh, 4.45 for Ready Check and 5 p.m. for the beginning of games. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. 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 Hey you, why aren't you watching the LCS right now? You should be. No excuses. You're tired? Doesn't matter. No excuses. Oh, I'm severely injured and the ambulance has to take me to the hospital. No excuses. Oh, it's my wedding today and my family will be pissed if I don't show up. No excuses. Oh, I need to get a job to pay my bills. No excuses. If the LCS is on, you're watching it. You hear me, you don't forget to breathe, and you shouldn't forget to watch the LCS. No excuses! Even if you're playing Arians with the squad and the LCS commissioner keeps throwing your games, but you have to end the night on a W. No excuses! Even if it's your special hour of the day that you have reserved to watch back Energy versus G2 at Worlds, you watch the LCS. Actually, that one's understandable. True. I haven't missed a day since that happened. But besides that, no, no excuses. excuses. Uh, uh. Hello? Uh. Hello? Hello, team. Who's saying, ah, uh, ah, uh, Peach? Peach. No. The Koreans are always I'm saying, not. hey, can you hear me? Ah, 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 ah. Can I get top down to yeah, 5%? Yeah, I get top down oh, 5%. I was screaming. Oh, this yeah, this yeah, yeah. Can I fight this? Oh, go, go. Oh, look, 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 look. Holy <laughs> sh**, mambo combo. Holy sh**. OK, kill Notis. Oh, we're not dead, we're not dead. Oh, wow. Let's go. Nice. Lane has comp. Ghost. Remember, no cleanse. And there's good damage coming out as well for Kazi. This could just be a kill. Comp flash is why he's healed up, but he's dead. Kazi with burst blood and the cooking from Vitality is searing up a beauty. I don't have it anymore. I don't have it anymore. Go, 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 go. You have no flash. You have, you have, you have, you have, you have. Okay, get the Drake. Now for oh, Vitality, no. everybody's taking it. Oh no! He's taking the Dara. Ah! He got his gold and Jamada. It's a oh, lost his mind. My, my, my bad, guys. My bad. This is absolutely terrible. Zuba caught out, running for his life, trying to sidestep, but upset. Ready this time to commit the flash. Kill Bobby, kill Bobby. Bobby has flash, okay? Yeah, okay. Dico, 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 Dico. Yeah, yeah. I'm not rich, I'm waiting, okay? Kill them all, kill them all, kill them all. Good fight, good fight. Good fight, good fight, good fight. Kill them all, kill them all, kill them all. Go Nash, go Nash, go Nash. Super still free to auto attack. Super raining down damage, but it is not enough.
It's KC are looking to close. Now, uh, bottle mid. Bear in mind while all that was happening, but connects. Play best and having nice power auto. Thrash damage, the charm, Nisky, first blood for Trippy. I take it back, Thrash is the best support. <laughs> No one can stop him. Left is another hook lands for Trippy. Doss caught oh. in the choke, and Yanko trying to turn him Oh, oh he ults. The flag and drag hits three, and that's enough. Oh, he's bad, he's bad, he's bad, he's bad. He's bad. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Dead dead dragons dead dragons. Back now, going to connect to the Yike. Good patience. Dragons. Yike finishes it. Taking their time. On top, needs to back away. Only level five for Mickey. Trying to predict where they're going to go. No, oh. five finishes the kill. Mickey should just be next. Terrible. Caps goes in for the charm flash, but Razork is there, and Hammeroid is living. G2, Mickey looking to follow up. Razor wants to try to use the off the flesh. Oh! Back. Still humanoid, baby! It is Amaric Brazda today! That